Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. My name is Rafael Diaz and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth day of the Matt Waters Chess Champions Chess Tour 2022, the last event, the third major of the season. Uh, well, we have had everything. I mean, including this yesterday's shocker that we have witnessed between Anish Giri and Magnus Carlsen. We also have heard uh, Anish's interview. I mean, everybody was shocked, including himself. He was saying that no way I ever would take this detail, this famous DTX E5. Of course, instantly I even wanted to primo Rook takes E5. But as it happens, and that's why we got so worried with, with Rustam, yeah, that one minute, two minutes passed, it was already in the air that maybe DTX E5 will happen because we know how the chess people's brains work, yeah? That you eliminate the good option and then you suddenly convince yourself that, aha, maybe I should play the abstract move and and things like this. <clears throat> but before we get into all these details, let me introduce my co-commentator, the mastermind behind so many World Championship matches, the one and only Rustam Kasinjanov. Hi, Rustam. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, I think this is what happened yesterday is actually just not that shocking. Yeah, I mean, he made a bad move. I don't think it's that big a deal. But it's a strategically bad decision. That's why, you know, I was praising Ganesh that, okay, he's my boy, he's my man, he's going to go, you know, he always knows how to play everything very precisely. And then DTXC5, that's why I'm shocked. Yeah. 
No, but I think this is, uh, as you said, yeah, when somebody doesn't make the obvious move within seconds, then sometimes it means that something is broken, right? Then you can expect all sorts of weird things. Like sometimes there is a simple tactic. You don't immediately see the experiences. You will never see it anymore. Yeah, there's something is is weird yeah, in the way our brains work. Exactly, especially in a rapid time control. Yeah, because in, in classical, maybe with uh, after spending some half an hour, suddenly, because you, you are exhaust all the other options, suddenly you might discover something. But basically in, in a rapid time format, it's always like this. Whether you go immediately with your intuition or mm -hmm. if you overthink something, then usually it, it never ends well. Yeah, sometimes you lose this connection to your intuition. It's a painful thing, actually. Yes, it can happen. Yeah, so it's the fifth day already. We have seen Magnus Carlsen, but maybe let's let's take up our standings to, to discuss because we see Magnus not only winning all his matches, but he has beaten Shakhtar Mamedyal of 3-0 and he has beaten Anish Giri yesterday 3-0. That's, that's the real shocking issue of, of everything that Magnus had done so far, leading with 12 points. And after Duda still in clear second, despite losing yesterday to Liam in a big, big fight. And uh, then, okay, Liam in third position, Wesley so winning two matches in a row and he's already back in the mix. What do you expect in, in today's game? So should we first bring up the matchups? Um, so yes. we have Wesley against Shahriar. I mean, normally Wesley should be a bit of a favorite there, right? Yeah, especially since Mamad Yalov is also playing from home, which means quite late at night and he has lost three matches, he, he should be quite vulnerable. Yeah, yeah no, I feel that in general, the time difference is not working well for, for both of them. Yeah? So Shahriar and Arjun, they are suffering from the time difference, I think, obviously. And uh, who else is playing from home? Well, uh, from home, Jan Shishtov Duda, but he said that he actually lives according to the US time zone. Yeah, So he seems to be able, but he's from Europe. Yeah? So starting from nine, I think this still helps a lot. I think starting from nine is still halfway reasonable. Yeah, even for me, you know, you have dinner, you sit down to play. Yeah, it's not like starting at one thirty at night. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's completely different. Mm -hmm. Basically, chess players anyway used to working at evening yeah, after dinner. Yeah, usually, if you wake up, basically, if you move your day and you wake up a little bit late, then it's automatic that you have to work in the evening. I think he's doing very well, and uh, Liam is the other player who plays from home, but we. Basically, he's in the dream situation, playing from home, and his game starts at 2 p.m. Yeah, it's uh, it's the optimal. Scenario. Yeah, the timing is optimal for him. So I think it's really the uh, the two of them, yeah, Shahriar and Arjun, who are suffering unduly from the time difference. But tell me, yeah, I mean, there was this one thing I was thinking about yesterday. What is like Duda's rating now? His classical rating? Well, I mean, he didn't play so much and the candidates and the Olympia didn't go so well. Yeah, I think his, his rating is like 2740 or, or 20... 31, yeah? Yeah, 30, even 31. 31. But I mean, he's clearly stronger than that. He's much stronger. I well, this, is, this was my question. Like from what I'm seeing, from his speed, from his preparation, from his confidence, from his resilience calculation, he should be, I mean, he might have been closer to 2800 than to to 2730 yeah whatever he has yeah it's very strange maybe it's just a matter of time right yeah this uh, i mean one could see in the candidates that he was trying very hard yeah he also involved into his team gaevsky yeah, the guy who is very famous for working in openings already for vishy before uh, before with uh, radek Wojtaszek, of course uh, very experienced uh, theoretician so i think it was a very good addition but sometimes when you add something valuable immediately and then you get too much knowledge, it might distract you a bit because you are out of your usual routine, but it will be very fruitful for, for the future. And maybe this is what we are seeing. Yeah, no, I mean, I have no doubts about him. Somehow he impresses me even a bit more than Ali Reza. He seems a more all-round player, but okay, he had a couple of bad tournaments. This probably will, will change very soon. I mean, he really uh, is impressing me with his chess. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm also feeling. That is, of course, Liam Le versus uh, Magnus Carson. The big match, Magnus leading. And usually one would say that, okay, it looks like Magnus is winning this event. He has already won the tour. But I would actually caution everyone with this kind of uh, statements because, uh, well, you just lose one match and you can immediately 
get a bit shaky. Of course, it's Magnus Carlsen. I don't think that he's someone who gets uh, shaken up uh, too easily. But Liam playing from 2 p.m. in his uh, prime and he has just beaten Duda yesterday. Ah, Liam is a very tough player. I would never underestimate Liam. Um, he, of course, also has his uh, his days and days. But basically, yeah, Liam is a very dangerous opponent. And also, we saw this yesterday. He's capable of being very, very fast. He had this game against against Duda where he had 11 minutes at some point against one or one and a half. So he's really capable of also uh, just keeping up with Magnus' speed. Um, so yeah, and, and what I have noticed that usually when, when for example, Liam, you can see he has beaten Wesley So and he has beaten Duda. Yeah, the, the two so-called strongest players uh, or very experienced players apart from Magnus, yeah, he has beaten. Yeah, and I feel like it helped him that he's not under any pressure. He also stated in his yesterday's interview that he knows that his opponent is very strong, so he just wants to show his best chess. And usually this is when you play your best. No, obviously. Also, he seems to have um, had something of a, of a revival the last couple of years, right? Because during the years of his studies, he uh, he was not really professional, right? And uh, and one could feel this, but now he seems to be fully back in, right? Absolutely. And then, okay, we also have uh, Duda versus Prague. Yeah, I think a very interesting uh, matchup because uh, Prague did lose yesterday against Wesley, but it was due to that one game where he overpressed. Uh, I mean, okay, basically then the fourth game was shaky, but he was already in a must-win situation with Black, which ended in a draw because Wesley didn't want to, to do too much from that game. But I feel like Prague is also had settled into the tournament. I'm expecting a very tough fight there. Yeah, that match, that match looks tough. Yeah, so Prague, uh, he seems to have uh, recovered. I mean, after his uh, kind of shocking loss against Anish from 2-0, he basically seems to be fully back in this tournament. And yeah, this one will be very tough. Yeah, and then we have Arjun Aligashi against Anish Giri. I mean, uh, Arjun coming after this uh, very big victory yesterday against Shakhtar Mamadyalov, winning 3-1 and finishing with this beautiful Bishop E5 uh, sacrifice, a, a stunning uh, uh, Bishop sacrifice, which also got a tweet then by Maurice Ashley, yeah, who pointed out mm -hmm. that he just made an incredible course on uh, chessable about chess and geometry and all these beautiful motifs. And this bishop f4 e5 is, is one of those uh, moves that he really loves and appreciates. So he gets the big confidence. But I want to say that Anish Giri, after what happened yesterday, I think there is only one therapy to bounce back, show your best chess and make everyone, including yourself, forget about what happened yesterday. Yeah, I think Anish is is, is good at, at recovering, but of course yesterday, I mean, this is this is a thing, yeah. This is um, okay uh, when you lose. Uh, it also depends how you lose. Uh, like he could have lost two and a half, one and a half yesterday, and he wouldn't really feel a thing because it's normal to lose against Carlson, right? But the way he lost um, will leave some some scars. Yeah, but on the other hand, also should motivate him and shake him up. Yeah, because if you, like you said, if he loses two and a half, then it's like everyday business. Everything mm -hmm. is fine. I did well, but Magnus was stronger. But after 3-0 and also in the third game, getting this chance and then making and losing that position from five, six moves. I believe that in order to forgive yourself, and I think for chess players, this is very important. You have to start making good moves and then only then the confidence can come back. Uh, especially to make you forgive him. Yeah, I think this might be tough. <laughs> In any case, I'm very much looking for Anish to, to show his best, whatever it will be uh, worth it today because Arjun has fine to his game. By the way, we also have a lift of their D4 Knight F6 between Arjun and uh, Anish, but Magnus has also started his game against Liam and we see for E5 uh, Rui Lopez, Bishop B5. All right, nice. This might be some... Classical Spanish uh, march. No, opens. Ah, of course, Liam goes for the open Spanish. Ah, this was uh, all the rage in the first round, right? When Anish was playing against Liam. Yes, the big theoretical duel. And now Ma look at this. Magnus slowed down after knight takes c4. Isn't it funny? Yeah, he shouldn't be surprised, really. Yeah? Ah, but we shouldn't be falling into this uh, chipo, yeah? That uh, Magnus is probably now selecting his playlist. Yeah, it's not like... 
uh, he's deciding what to do after an ITXC4 here. Shouldn't he be selecting his playlist before the game and not during? Well, surprisingly, I even wanted to mention that to, to my taste, Magnus is for the first time in time. And uh, still, it seems like he didn't manage yeah, or, or he's not sure what he wants to listen to. I cannot beat Amber. Well, if it works, yeah, you, you have to stick with, with your winning music in any case. Uh, but okay, yeah, Knight takes e4. Wow, Magnus goes rook e1. Rook e1 Berlin <laughs> in, in these circumstances. What is this? Takes Knight c5, Bishop takes c6, d takes c6. Knight takes e5. Hmm. Bishop e7, right? I have a vague feeling that I have seen this and analyzed this. Yeah, you like usually to check all kinds of... Uh, Tricky stuff, yeah? I like to check all, all the legal moves. <laughs> yes, yes. Because I'm a little bit conservative. Yeah, whatever doesn't suit me so much or I don't trust it so much. And computer is not screaming that is so great. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do see that the evaluation bar actually says that there is some intrigue in this position. Yeah, I would just say don't give up your two bishops so prematurely. Well, I think what we learned from the computers is that there are various ways to play chess. Not only the ones that we thought were normal and natural. Uh, and in a way, of course, you can expand your horizons like this. Yes. Although, of course, your initial feeling still guides you, right, towards what you like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the thing is also that uh, usually you play strongest when you get your type of positions. But this is the trick in uh, modern chess that Usually you, you don't get your positions anymore, yeah, because your opponent knows exactly that, okay, no, this, this guy is very strong in certain position. I don't gonna let him get there. Mm -hmm. But if also the computers show so many different directions, but uh, often the case that you might get a good position and with computer help, you would be able to put pressure and then you make just one move on your own and uh, suddenly your opponent gets the upper hand. Yeah, that's the danger of, playing uh, following computer directions often. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Now, as Vichy once told me, you have to limit your moves to to an absolute minimum. Yeah, cl clever advice, yeah. <laughs> if you can do it, yeah, it's, uh, it works for Vichy, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if, if for others it also works so easily. But yeah, Vichy, Vichy was always great in finding this right balance yeah between computer preparation his own feelings and uh, he, he was very good in, at this yeah uh, of course it also helps to be to be this good yeah? and you have all the prep and if your prep doesn't work out then you're also vichy anand yeah this is really helpful <laughs> yeah that, that can navigate you yeah, and, and help mm -hmm. you through diff difficult times wow and we see that uh, black has finally committed with f6 because the knight on e5 was uh, disturbing. Liam tries to go rook e8. I don't know. Bishop f8 or even knight, knight, f8. knight f8. Exactly. And then bishop e6, bishop f7. Yeah, it's some re regrouping like this could be possible or maybe the bishop even gets to g4, f5 depending. But tell me why f6 and not let's say bishop f6? Yeah, I was while we were talking, I was trying to understand that bishop f6, knight c6, c5 how white is reacting. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting that white would probably do something else, but I wasn't so sure. Maybe maybe something like f4. Yeah, probably f4 and, mm -hmm. and just summon this knight. Mm -hmm. And if c5, d5, so this might work, yes. Yes, probably this is the reason. Mm -hmm. And we see that we actually guessed it right. After f6, knight c3, Liam blitzes out the move knight f8. Yeah, he opened up the way for his knight. Slightly mysterious looking move at first, but for both Lustam and for me, it came naturally because... We need to open up the bishop. Yeah. And white, I don't know, would you go d5 with white? Because if black goes bishop e6, bishop f7, it might just become too easy for black, right? Yeah. The big question is that do we make a routine move like hc stopping bishop g4? Do we go d5? Or do we go queen b3 trying to stop the development of the bishop? I think those three moves are the most natural, yeah? And Magnus goes for queen b3. <laughs> Yeah, all these are very good questions, yeah. Yeah. I was slightly con concerned that can you jump bishop g4? Uh, it's, that's also a thing, yeah? And then a queen b7, you just 
take on f3, right? And then queen d7. Yeah, but then you play d5 immediately, I'm guessing, yeah? No, bishop d6. Ah, bishop d6. Thank you very much. Great support. Ah, bishop, bishop d6, c5, yeah? I'm not so sure, but queen h3. I mean, anyway, it's not, not easy, right? Yeah, it's complex. And uh, Tadeas informing us that, all right, guys, you guys are great theoreticians, but <laughs> this is a main position. And uh, there are a bunch of games, and including Bishop G4 being uh, being one of the main moves. Tom Chuck Collars, Bundesliga this year, the most recent example. Wow. That is theory is developing, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I mean, people like uh, like Dimitri Collars, they they sit at home developing theory all the time. Yeah, but uh, it's not only him. It was Tomchak from the white side, yeah? But he also knew probably from the black side that this is the way. Yeah, Dimitri, a very hardworking player. My teammate in uh, the German Bundesliga team, Dezau. German national team member. He's working on chess. Yeah, all, all of these young German players, they are very hardworking. And also Bluebaum and uh, others, yeah, they just work so much on chess. Yeah, but basically I think this is also German chess school, yeah, that you, you keep on working. Uh, usually you have good opening preparation, you are up to all the, the latest fashions mm -hmm. and uh, all the theoretical developments. The the same applies to, to the Dutch, Dutch chess school, yeah, also they are very well prepared. Wow. But Liam went B6. I think it's difficult to play bishop g4 when uh, when you're not in the book. Yeah, exactly. And you don't want to commit, your, you also don't want to burn the clock for 5-10 minutes to find out if bishop g4 is maybe possible anyway you won't be sure about. But after b6 we do see the evaluation bar and the, not only the evaluation bar but basically white got a big tempo and let's just imagine white gets hc, rook a d1 and eventually d5. I don't know in which move order. What what is your take? Do you have some preference? I mean, normally h3 looks very natural because rook d1, bishop g4 will be unpleasant, right? Yes. And we so don't want play, that. Let's say h3, bishop e6. Um, I don't know. Would you go d5 here? Yeah, that's the big question. Yeah, maybe I maybe we go d5. Yeah, takes takes knight takes. Or you wanted to take with pawn and then knight d4 knight is also possible. I, to tell you the truth, I'm not worried for black either way. Mm -hmm. Well, my knight. idea was knight takes d5, bishop d5, rook a d1. Does it care, scare you or not? Um, well, I didn't see it, but now that you tell me, um, uh, let's have a look. I mean, that's why I wanted to mm -hmm. try at least knight d5 once in analyze. Mm -hmm. So bishop d5 and then rook d1. And then rook a d1, yeah. That was my hope. So I guess that uh, the queen sacrifice with bishop f3 is not enough, yeah? Yeah, shouldn't be. I mean, Nowadays we learned about queen, sac queen sacrifices, they're usually not enough. Yes. And um, otherwise, if I play, say, bishop d6. Yeah, then I capture with the rook. Take with the rook. And, um, and then I'm hoping for some c4, c5 break. The king h8. Yeah, king h8. Maybe rook ed1. I mean, I have some pressure, no? You have pressure, yeah. Queen e7. Yes. Yeah, then I don't know if already bishop takes b6, rook b8, c5. Is that an option or that's too crazy? Probably too crazy. Just to highlight, yeah, that bishop takes b6, runs into rook a, b8. Yeah, c5, I just move the bishop, like to bishop e5 or something. Yeah. And the knight covers the d7 mm -hmm. square, so that's uh, that's important. Okay, in any case, white has some pressure, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's a tough position still to break. Magnus did go H D Bishop E six, so we might be seeing one of those breaks. Yeah, that you okay. Let let me ask you why you weren't scared of, for example, something like C D C D. Well, then I thought I got Bishop F seven, Knight D four. Let's say and a Queen D seven. I'm just not afraid of the C six square. Exactly. It's an empty square, yeah. You will put mm -hmm. the bishop on d6, and it will mm -hmm. be very much like some Petrov, yeah, when you ignore this knight and you have your own play. Yeah, you know, I think your your initial idea is completely right to recapture on d5 with a piece and a piece. 
so that your pawn never appears on d5. Maybe you can even go rook a d1. Yes, d2. Magnus did that. So that after bishop f7, you can try to go d5. But then, but might then maybe c5, c5, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Then maybe you don't get this, right? Exactly. I That that was the reason I hurried with this d5, knight d5, mm -hmm. rook a d1. Because yeah, d5, c5, and then again, we are stuck. Bishop d6 mm -hmm. is coming. Who knows? Maybe bishop h5 says hello, which would be kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. And we didn't manage to open up the position. Bishop f7 played. Now that's true. Yeah, rook ad1 is maybe a, a bit inaccurate. Yeah. yeah, and now it's very interesting because White has placed all his pieces to so-called optimal squares, but he, he can't really break Black's construction. And yeah, Black has moves like queen d7, Bishop h5 is something uh, White really needs to pay attention. This this spin is annoying. The queen is doing nothing on b3. I mean, White has to justify it with very energetic play. Well, I mean, his whole position is geared towards d5, right? What else could he possibly do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he has to go d5 and then maybe d5, c5, knight e4 and start activating that knight immediately. But maybe also the position has slowed down, stabilized. Let's make a quick tour, yeah? Because mm -hmm. we are missing on all the other action. <clears throat> Arjun against Anish. I'm, I'm seeing some fast developments here. It looks like a dragon, but it came from London, yeah? Yeah, unbelievable. But look at the clock situation. Arjun with 16 minutes, 40 seconds, clearly out preparing Anish. Mm -hmm. And he has opted for the line which Prak played against Anish in... Uh, in their blitz playoff game. But clearly Narjun came already move pen move prepared. Yeah, the same h4, h5. He rushed with the queen to d2 first and then with knight e5, knight c6 and f3. Yeah, he did not castle. He did I think Prak castled. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and after castles, then Anish got the chance to play c, d, d, bishop f5. And then we started liking black's position very much. But uh, here f3 was the prepared deviation. And now we see that takes, takes, bishop f5, bishop b5, forcing black to decide immediately what to do. Anish captured, d takes e5, and new dynamics appear. Knight d7, long castle, knight takes e5. Ah, it's all clear to me. Didn't Anish just finish his dragon chess course in, in chessable? I think he did. So not, he's, he's, he's probably dragon. into this. That, that's why he wanted to liquidate immediately to dragonish positions. It looks like a dragon, yeah. Exactly, this this construction. However, the pawn usually is on c6, yeah, in these kind of structures. And then white is really happy in the dragon. Now look, c8 is a threat. How do you react now with white? I mean, my, my first gut feeling is trying to exchange queens. Mm -hmm. Queen c5, queen e3. But it's probably not what Arjun wants. Well, also the big question that we... No, queen he d4. wants. Queen, d, queen d4 played. Queen, queen c5, to be honest, would probably blunder something like rook c8. Exactly. And rook yeah. c2. So probably yeah. queen d4... It's better, at least tactically. Yeah, just just to highlight that, yeah, queen c5 runs into rook c8. Queen b6, rook takes c2. Check. Check. King I don't know, rook... because we have rook takes f5, but... Yeah, rook d2 check first. Yes, rook d2 rook check. Rook f5, and I will, I will just take more, yeah, yeah. Yeah. L little bit more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's enough, yeah. It's enough, and, yeah. And by the way, also after queen d4, that is this sketch, yeah? That after queen d4, rook d4, e6, maybe somewhere g4 might be a big threat. Yeah, it's uh, not clear. Yeah, but Anish, of course, does not take. Yeah, he goes rook a c8. Uses the same motive to hit the c2 pawn. And then what next? For white. C3 looks normal. C3 looks normal, but there will be a question. Is there a chance that I could ever move the queen to a5? Because you weakened the bit your construction or it's it's nothing. 
Well, I would have to calculate, right? First of all, I have bishop d7, but I don't quite trust it. Yes. But I can also just play bishop c4, right? And... Uh, bishop c4 is a nice stabilizer, yeah. Okay, but I go then queen c7, hit the bishop, and I get ready for rook fd8. Yeah, no, it just it looks like a normal position. You know? Yeah, it's, it's a normal position. Yeah, basically, I don't think that with black we want to go for some inferior endgame or... I mean, we don't know if the endgame is inferior. Yeah, Anish can, for example, take on d4. Yeah, even after c and go rook c7. That's a solid way of defending the pawn and making sure that your bishop has retreating squares after g4. Wow, c3 takes takes and rook c7. Yeah, I mean, for any dragon player, this should be normal, right? Yeah, should be absolutely normal. Maybe I can go g4 yeah. and start some activity. Yeah, g4 takes, takes, and then I have to decide where to put this bishop. Mm -hmm. Maybe all the way back to c8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And h5? h5. You want to checkmate me even without queens, yeah? I want to checkmate you because as I keep telling my students, the aim of the game. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, this is your style. I mean, even in an end game, yeah, I'm looking for finesses, what I rook c7, bishop c8, and you go for direct assault. What is this? But you probably find here after f6. f6, yeah. I also feel that I should play f6, and then I might even have e5 at some point if I need. F6 and and I have maybe G5 here to follow to to consolidate, but we might we might actually see all this. Yeah, Arjun is your boy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, this is very interesting. We, also, it means that Anish might get chances, yeah, because it's a double H stuff. What uh, Arjun is doing. That that dash, yeah, that's so lovely. Oh, oh, that's cruel. Yeah, Bishop Bishop C8 H5 F6 Rook C4. Uh, oh so my nice. God! Yeah. H5, F6, Rook, C4, offering the trade of Rooks. I mean, Fe5, Rook, C7, thank you very much. And Rook, C4 would be a big mistake because it's check. And then the pawn on E7 mm -hmm. is vulnerable. Wow. Yeah. Anish goes Bishop, E6. He has noticed the trick. Well, he's, he's feeling somehow suggested this square. Anish is, is sharp today. H5, I thought, would, would be hard to, to, to meet. I mean, can we just go king g7? Or that's running exactly into your mating net? Well, I don't know. It takes king g6, bishop d3. I would at least be worried. Uh, king f6, tempo. Rook h5. Rook h5. Okay, rook g8. And he, I mean, I know you. Yeah, you might I mean, be not terrified to admit this. <laughs> exactly. You, you, g, rook h7, kick, rook d8, checkmate. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, this is already, yeah, just to show because this is pretty. Yeah, that uh, Arjun went for a4, mm -hmm. but it's so beautiful. I, I have to show you guys. g5 check. Now, if black takes look g5, then maybe no, I f4. can take because look f5, I still have king e5. King but... e5 and rook e4. This is a funny draw, actually. Yes, but let's show this beautiful mm -hmm. checkmate. Everybody loves checkmates. It looks like it's an endgame, innocent position, but look h7, king f8, forced look d8, checkmate is possible. Yeah, so. But of course, yeah, as, as we said, this is all not forced. Arjun opted for a4 and now king g7, but these moves clearly help black. Yeah, now black stabilizes. Yeah, I think a4 is uh, is from a different book altogether. Somehow, if he wants to play a4, he maybe shouldn't have played g4. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's my take as well. The, these moves don't, don't go so well together, yeah, because mm -hmm. now also white created some Weakness in Rustam's play, yeah, with h4, h5, it, it made so much sense that you are trying to attack Black's king immediately, but like this, it doesn't seem to be frightening at all. All right, so this is now an endgame. Things have stabilized. Uh, vastly so against Shakri Amamed Yarov. Well, we see that uh, Shakri is up on the cloak, but on the other end, I like White's position. What happened? Ah, this was the same same line that Shakya played against uh, Prague and he surprised, shocked him with this castle's knight b6. Mm -hmm. And now we see that if you play a slightly offbeat dubious line, don't repeat it on the highest level because player, the opponents will be ready for it. 
takes, 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 rookie one. Queen e7, king h1. Wesley is showing some very deep prep. f4 is coming. Castles, f4. f6. Takes, takes. Okay, it already looks beautiful for white. But okay, yeah, Shakira is trying to jump around. Ah, and this is how we got to this position. Takes, takes, knight c3, hitting the rook, rook d7, knight takes e4. The knight can't be taken because of rook f1 checkmate. Simple little tactics, but Wesley has opted for bishop e7, apparently approved by the engines. Yeah, if rook f7, he will just take rook takes c7, right? Simply collecting, yeah, and if rook, rook e8... e8 I don't know. If, I mean, I just said it, but uh, it's not clear because now black doesn't have a threat. But you can play king g1, for Maybe example. Maybe king g1, yeah? yeah. Just king g1. Because I guess the rook end games um, are not great. Yeah, the rook end games are terrible with, with all these weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, Wesley goes for it. Wesley has settled into the tournament. I mean... I, I even feel that maybe it was unlucky that he had to face Magnus immediately in the first round. Otherwise, we might have been seeing both these players winning their matches. Because, um, I mean, ever since Wesley started winning, he is very impressive. Rook takes his seven, yeah. So, Rook e8, very natural, tempting. The, the, the bishop is... I mean, the, the, the Rook bishop are kind of pinned, but... White simply ignores that, plays king g1, stopping the rook f1 checkmate. And just to highlight that, for example, mm -hmm. this endgame, what we mentioned with Rustam is basically almost unplayable for black. The, the spawn savvy king is coming, will be very annoying. Mm -hmm. Ah, Tadeas even plays the spoiler, says that after rook e8, you can play the stunning rook takes c6. I mean, if Wesley even spots rook takes c6, then, then I say I, I will start uploading that, okay, this is. These are sharpness from, from all these end games. Well, the lines are probably not difficult, yeah, once you notice. Yeah, but I mean, you had to force it all this uh, much in advance. Yeah, you just can't rely mm -hmm. your. I mean, when he opted for Rook D7, when he went for Rook D7, he had to force all this. And Shakti mm -hmm. is kind of blitzing. Yeah, you always uh, might be thinking that, ah, this is maybe still some kind of a super prep or whatever, yeah. And he is willing to and ready to go for all this and calculate till the end. That's why he impresses me so much. Okay, but let's let's move on. What else do we have? Okay, a quick update on the Magnus game. That what happened here and clock situation more or less under control. This bishop f7 d5, c5 bishop f4 bishop d6. Takes takes takes. B5, yeah, the typical B5. The question always, where does this lead us? Takes, takes. Knight B5, rook B8. A4 takes, takes, queen A5. That's how we reach this position. Got a bit boring, no? A bit, but I would argue that if White doesn't get anything immediately, then he will have nothing, so he should try to... I mean, he needs to find some good ideas. I mean, can you go for attack? Can you find some initiative? This is usually your territory. Well, I mean, the problem is that the rook on e1 is hanging. Yeah, otherwise it would uh, be very mobile. But let's try rook e7, I don't know. Yes, rook e7, queen b5, and queen e3. Yeah, if we want to try something. Yeah, we don't need to, but... Queen uh, e3. I don't know if, uh, if like, queen a3 and queen a7 has a, has a chance... But uh, if I want to be super so that I can just play rook b7, yeah? Yeah, but also it doesn't seem to work anyway, eh? because for yes. instance, queen takes... Um, can we show this line? Queen takes b2, uh, queen a7, queen, let's say, c1 check. I mean, this, this, this guy is protected on h7. So rook g7 is actually an empty threat a bit. So queen f4, and if g3, queen takes f3, there is no, um, no, mate, no checkmate. Yeah. Yeah? There is just no checkmate. Yes, yes. Yeah, in any case, Magnus uh, opted for, but he is sacrificing the pawn. But yeah, with the right idea, queen e3 was played. 
Queen takes b5 and knight d2. Yeah, the knight is heading to the c4 square. So if black takes on b2, ah, there is also rook b1, but also knight c4. So it's something to really to pay attention with black. Ah, he's playing it very safe with white, right? Knight c4 and uh, queen No, d4. not yet. I think knight d2 is the, the position. Or do you have developments? No, no, no. I was just wondering if queen mm -hmm. b2, knight... A queen b2, you have also rook b1, yeah? Yes, you have rook b1, exactly. It's, it's some headache for black. Queen b1, take, take, and then rook d1, queen f4. The queen will always be stronger, yeah? I guess with the d6 weakness, mm -hmm. knight on f8 is passive. Okay, let's just show to, to our audience that what we are talking about. So takes, 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 king h2, and I'm worried of some queen e7 move. Yeah, I thought rook d1, but mm -hmm. then uh, why does queen f4? Trying to target the d5 pawn, but queen f4 is beautiful. Yeah, hitting the d6 pawn, inviting for please take the pawn. You might be very happy, but not for long. That's it. Yeah, no, this the, the, the queen, with, if the pawn would be on f7, it would be a mm -hmm. different story. But yeah, this pawn on f6 really weakens black's king. So, okay, then with black, we don't take. What else do we do? Yeah, we can play c4 to prevent b3 and to threaten queen d5. Mm -hmm. Interesting move, c4, yeah. Hm. Targeting this guy. Not so easy. Yeah, it looks like a joke. Yeah, that okay. I have so many options, but in fact, which one is the good one? Nice reaction. Or you refuse to fight your own move. Yeah, you suggested C4, so it's not my task. Yeah, to. No, I was just wondering because you can try to take the pawn, right? Queen D4, for instance. Yes. And then go for takes, takes, and knight c4, rook b5, rook d1, yeah? Yes. I thought yes. that it would be easy to, to win that pawn on d5, but maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight takes c4. Looks like it's a double attack, but it seemed like rook b5 is good enough. Mm -hmm. However, white simply protects the pawn and the pawn on d6 falls. So, yeah, this, uh, this is actually a very important detail. This rook d1 mm -hmm. is the key move of this line. Yeah, the suddenly will get dangerous. And... Yeah, yeah. If we lose a pawn, we are not happy. Yeah, Pretty all right. Much so... general rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Liam is now for the first time behind on the clock. Yeah, after mm -hmm. after the first phase of the game, he feels some pressure, and there is there is of course a great game and a big battle between Janšištov Duda and and Prague. It was a Catalan. Yeah, it was a razor sharp Catalan getting this uh, crazy messy position yeah the knight entering on c6 will be so unpleasant it's like it's a, it's a monster yeah Prague down to three minutes and it will be tough yeah what what happened here but okay we don't have time i just look at the first moves so it was a catalan with this ultra sharp line it's some fancy stuff yeah sacrificing the pawn and and even ready to give the exchange. But yeah, Duda ref refused. And we got some strategic opposition. We don't have time. So we get back to the uh, position just to see the last couple of moves. So Bishop A6, Bishop F3 forced basically this Knight G4 move. White captured and captured on A5. This is the position. All right, so let let Pluck fight it out. It looks like Duda is in control because I do see that, in fact, Black opted for this uh, queen sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah, King f7 is, is an interesting point. Queen f4, he'll go just rook b6. Yeah, he just wants to play this position. Wow, but let's just show how we reached here. So after knight d2, yeah, Liam was probably slightly worried that yeah, if his if the C4 line does not work and we look that it, it might not work so nicely, then maybe he doesn't want to keep this structure, he wants to change it. And he sacrifices the queen, king h2, king f7. 
Magnus goes queen h3, rook b7 back, and black will sit on d7 with the rook, queen a6, rook d7. Yeah, you know so what? What comes to my mind? Yeah, f4. That basically this uh, this is a typical position where Magnus might say that I I don't believe in fortresses. Yeah, that it's it's fortress ish, but it's not a fortress yet. That's for sure. Yeah. Just give me one second. Yeah, I'll be right back with you. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So, I mean, there is always this debate. Yeah, Magnus said I'm not a believer. I don't believe in fortresses. Well, if it's a clear fortress, definitely he believes what what he meant is that he doesn't believe in the mysterious fortresses, yeah, that which might be fortresses, and if you are lazy, then you might tend to think that it's uh, it's a fortress. But if you dig deep into it, you might be able to find ways how you might try to crack it. F4, knight, g6. Knight is heading to e7. If it lands on e7, it's kind of nice because hits the pawn on d5. And uh, if white's queen will have to be tied to the d5 pawn, on the other hand, black will never be threatening to take on d5 because of the pin as well. But Magnus enters with the queen to c8 before the knight lands on e7. Rook e7. So we might be seeing some very sharp stuff. Queen d8, the d6 pawn falls. And then how does Liam wants to generate counterplay? I mean, is he going for three versus two? Queen and I. Maybe he he goes for it. Hang on. Can can we just look at this? Queen d8. Is he really planning to take knight takes f4? Queen takes d6. And eventually knight takes d5. Queen d5, king f8. And then tries to say that I'm going to put my pawn on h6 and look on e5. And this is a fortress. I Hang on. I'm not 100% sure that what to think of this. I mean, usually it's, it's said that if the rook has two squares, yeah, for example, e5 and g5 would be both uh, available, then, then it's usually a draw. But with an h pawn covering the g5 square, I'm not sure. Magnus goes queen c6. We might get more clever. Knight f4, queen d6 on the board. Let's get to know. Ah, but that is also, but knight d3 and then knight e5 is dead. The... Tough call. Very tough call now for Liam. In any case, it will be tough. I mean, one could argue that, yeah, knight d3 and then knight e5 and then rook to d7, this is kind of a... But you can lose it. Yeah, white will, for example, just to highlight something. Okay, I'm trying to make some moves just to show this that what we are talking about. I mean, if white's king comes closer, yeah, and eventually reaches e4 and we go d6, then we might be able to give queen d5 check. And then the king is forced, then white goes with queen e6, then the king marches to d5, and who knows, we might be able to set, and the king goes to e6. So there are ways to lose this position. It's not easy how to get this fortress done. Liam down to three minutes. He has to make a very tough decision, and he goes g5, protects the knight on g5. Also hinting at rook e2. I mean, do you really have time to go rook e2 and, and the deep on won't hurt you? Interesting. Very interesting stuff. Why did he lose this pawn? Yeah, well, he gave up this pawn, and I was speculating that does he want to sacrifice on d5 and try to hope for that kind of fortress with the c5 square, but I wasn't sure it's a fortress. It's or is he trying fortress. to get some knight this knight this knight e5 rook d7 fortress against the d pawn? But also then white can eventually march with his king to e6. I wasn't sure, and he opted for g5. Okay, let's just analyze yeah? queen c5. Yeah, queen c5. So I'm guessing he wants to go rook e2. Or maybe but he wants to go he? rook d7. Ah, you mean that he immediately rook d7, d6, king e6. Yeah, he wants to that's take this pawn. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, that this pawn is hanging and d6, king e6. And he'll probably take this pawn happily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, this uh, this we shouldn't give. But then what do we do, yeah? I mean, we can. we can go g3, yeah? We can also try queen c6. We can also try queen c6. But queen c6, look, it, 
Ah, because uh, yeah, Lucky too, you are not worried anyway. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to to let's say give a check. Ah, give a check. Where? B C seven. D six. King H one. Queen E seven. Also, I don't know if it's easy for you to stop this pawn. Yeah, I I'm worried that it won't be easy. Mm -hmm. Ah, Magnus goes H four. Wow. H4. It H4, which which potentially exchanges more pawns. But he wants to get rid of this f6 pawn, yeah, maybe. But rook e2, what's, what's uh, the follow-up? Yeah, rook e2 played. Wow, will Magnus play h5 or what? He'll play h5 at some point. It's some queen d7 followed by h5 check or queen c7. There's some h5 in the air. Yeah, or h5 and then queen d7 check. So black king won't be able to get to g6. Okay, if he plays h4, rook e2, h5, this is some pretty, pretty sick stuff. Yeah. Some... But uh, in, in this position, actually, it looks very tempting. It does look tempting, yes. Yeah, it looks very tempting to go h5. As it somehow boxes the king in, yeah? We have something of a theme in this tournament to box the king in. Yeah. It looks like a very effective way. To... Ah, by the way, Vesti has already won against Shakri Amamedyadov. So yeah, Shakriya continues to struggle. And Wesley continues his convincing victorious path. Yeah, h5, very tempting, but Magnus is still taking his time. On the board, h5, that's it. Yeah, this is a very impressive move. I mean, what h4, yeah. Knight h5, he will just queen this pawn by force, right? Queen c7, yeah, and all d6, these checks, yeah. yeah. Just queen c7 check, yeah. yeah. And d6, d7. Knight e6. And um, I guess that it will not be possible to hold this. Yeah, queen c8 or queen b6, king f7. But I mean, we might be able to sacrifice the knight now, yeah? For the no, I mean, I was I was hoping that I would be able to prevent this with white somehow. Like queen c8, queen e8. But there you have uh, rook d2 and then queen e8, king f5. Well, I can also just maybe try to put my rook on e5, yeah? A rook e5 will also work, yeah. Yes, no, that's, yes. I... I lost too many pawns. I can probably do better than this. Yeah, probably. But yeah, also for black, so difficult to design. Knight takes h5 is so shaky. On the other hand, you get the g6 square for your king. And you eliminate the pawn, yeah? This is the most important thing. Exactly, yeah. I mean, otherwise white... Might give some check, and after you have to go back to the eighth length, then already h6 wins the game on the spot. So yeah. now you probably need to take that pawn. Yeah, big question. Can but you never have time to take on g2, yeah, because that, that's a very huge tempo just to highlight. Yeah, check king h1, then none of the pieces are moving. And and what? He played king g7. King g7, yeah. So he's trying to be super smart, but doesn't feel right. I mean, for example, some queen c7 and then queen f7. Well, then he has knight h5. And then d, d6, d6, because you can never really move or you can maybe. No, you can't really move. Yeah, you probably win like this. Yeah, yeah very shaky. I mean, this, mm -hmm. this king g7 doesn't give any stability for black. Yeah, I have all. a feeling that even uh, like queen c7 and d6 would win maybe even like this, yeah, because... Now, how do you stop this pawn? Yeah, Magnus just collected the c5 pawn. He wants to give check and then start pushing this pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the other drawback. Yeah, that the king was somehow holding on to the e6 square, but on, on f7. The, this, this was key. But now that the king moved, I mean, king g7 felt like giving up on, on the chance of, of saving this. Rook g2, king h1 on the board. And yeah, Liam is thinking, thinking down to a minute, but he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, he, he needs to give his knight for this pawn, but it's just not possible. Yeah, it's not possible, exactly. I mean, rook d2 seemingly has to, but even queen e7 check is the first move, yeah? But also, I actually, can we just... Uh... Oh, we can do this maybe later, yeah? Why, why did he give all the pawns? I didn't understand this. 
like in ah, the end. Ah, you mean that why he gave the d6 pawn at the yes. start, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that uh, in the break we can check it out. Yeah, how do you, I mean, that, that's the problem. Now the, the queen e7 check targets the f6 pawn gets that. Yeah, that's my rookie too. Rookie two and then trying to get knight to e6, rookie mm -hmm. five and, and the same. But this h5 pawn is super important. Yeah, well, I will probably have some, some mating ideas too. Exactly. Yeah. Queen a7 check, king h6, queen f7. Just very annoying. Or even queen e7, no? Yeah. I mean, any of these that, that attacks the f6 pawn and also keeps an eye on the knight. Mm -hmm. After the queen e7 also pins the knight in a way. I was afraid of some discover check, but of course it's not possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. Queen E7 played. Just after, let's say, some knight move, I can even take Queen D takes E2 and play D7. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Knight F4, you can just sacrifice the queen and queen the pawn. Yeah, down to 30 seconds. Yeah, Liam goes King takes H5. And now d7 should really do it. No? Okay, d7, d7 rook e5. Yeah. I keep forgetting rook e5. Yeah, but then you have queen takes f6. Yeah, you eliminate this f6 pawn and then the rook can't stay on e5 any longer. But you can still play rook e1. Yeah, yeah. white hasn't won yet. I mean, white will be winning, but I wanted to somehow win cleanly. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, d7. Okay, it does not run away. Because DA check is a big threat, so rook e5 played. Only move. Mm -hmm. Queen f6. Rook e1 check has to be played. And the next move is somehow something like king g4, yeah? and a king g2. King but g2 we go, yeah, or king h2? I thought king g2 was better because king h2 allows king g4. Okay, Magnus opted for king h2, king g4. Was the king on g2? I could mate queen f3. Because I think I need my king to attack the rook on e1 so that this rook runs out of squares. Well, yours, yeah, I mean, queen f2 doesn't do the job, yeah? Then, uh, then rook e4. Then rook e4, yeah, or rook e5. Uh, suddenly we have a certain intrigue in this position. Yeah, queen e7. Now rook e2 check and king f3. Yeah, because yeah, this, this pin is the problem. Yeah, so black's king needs to get mm -hmm. closer to the rook to protect. I think this line makes it obvious why king g2 was better, yeah, because the king would already be attacking the black rook. Probably, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's true. But on the other hand, can we just go king f1, rook f2, king e1, rook e2, king d1, walk like this? But after king f1, black has rook e4 and nothing changed. Ah, yes, nothing. Yeah, Magnus gives queen f7 mm -hmm. check. I mean, please make up your mind. Where do you go? And then king f1 comes. Now I can maybe go knight f4. A knight f4, queen b3 check. Yeah, mm -hmm. cannot do this. Yes, I thought that, the eight and perpetual, perpetual check. Perpetual, you know? yeah. Slattering perpetual, but after knight f4, white can include queen b3 check and wins the game. Yeah, so queen f7, king g4 had to retreat. I wasn't sure if there is a difference between king g3 and king g4. But I am gone. Yeah, Magnus just plays the prosaic. Yeah, queen takes h7, and this and this queen and game against the rook winning. Well, the pawn on g5, I think it is winning, yes. It is winning. I mean, it's a very long procedure, but uh, actually quite pleasant, yeah? If if, uh, But maybe he can even win it on the spot, rook d2. It's really an elegant way to describe anything, yeah? It's quite a long procedure, but quite pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite well, okay, because you can always just play instantly and you know mm -hmm. the ideas what to do and you just, there is never a clock, clock issue. Yeah, Hare Krishna recently won this ending against um, MVL in the European Club Cup, I think. Ah, yes. 
Yes, exactly. Wow, actually Arjun has beaten uh, Anish. So Anish has lost four games in a row. That's quite something. Arjun is dangerous. Arjun is dangerous, yeah, definitely. And okay, here Magnus now going for... Well, if there is no perpetual, then uh, he just queens. Yeah, because also King G3, he has D8 queen, yeah? So also he has queen E3 check. I mean, he has D8 queen after anything, basically. Yeah. Yeah, there is no intrigue because King FC, D8, Queen, protects back on D1. Mm -hmm. Knight to check played. Okay, now just King walks away. I just King F1, yeah, the easiest. Yeah, yeah. and then King to E1. I mean, Magnus is so strong with his Queen. I mean, just we have seen him in Queen and games being unstoppable, but uh, here he was having queen versus look and knight and that's it liam resigns what a start think, for magnus i think it was just the wrong strategy to abandon the pawn on d6 yeah we will we will come back to it but we have to jump to do dragon sprague however there is no intrigue here knight on c4 blocking the c pawn the b6 pawn is also still alive and the h pawn will decide the game that's it so both duda Magnus and Vesti, the, the so-called three favorites of uh, the, the matches, are winning with their wide games. Yeah, winning by quite a margin. Yeah, it just... Yes. And in fact, if all four games will feature White's victory if, if this ends with a 1-0. They can't even play H5, H6. Yeah, it's, just... yeah, it's, it's over. Yeah. yeah. There is no way to, to spoil this somehow. I mean, there is a monster pawn on B7 mm -hmm. and another monster is mm -hmm. getting ready. But why to give the knight if you yeah, can do exactly keeps the, the knight, yeah, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, king B6 and then H5. Yeah, Duda keeps on impressing. Absolutely. And also Arjun, I mean, beating Ganesh keeping the momentum going, yeah? So he hasn't won a single game, I mean, Arjun, up till yesterday, and he has won his match against Mamadiel of 3-1 and continues with a win, yeah? Yeah, but that's how it happens, yeah? Once you start feeling better about your chess, everything starts working a bit better. Huh? Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, this, this psychological factor is so important, but I don't think that talking to a psychologist really would help, yeah? But... It's simply good moves, yeah. That gives you back this confidence and this feeling that yes, that's it. And you stop worrying about result, you stop worrying about making good or bad moves. You just play your best and everything comes flawlessly. Yeah, that's it. Plug designs. Mm -hmm. Four zero for white in this very first round. I mean, this I don't really I'm not sure if it ever happened, honestly, because usually black is holding his ground, but this is a massacre. It's a complete massacre in the very first round of of today. Yeah, wow. so this was very, very convincing. Yeah. I mean, you are the one who is so good with predictions. Do you see a match where you believe that somebody can come back? Um, difficult. I think maybe only Anish was an outside chance. No, Prague, you, you don't trust uh, the youngster to bounce back against Duda or Duda is so impressive? I think just Duda is too strong. I think Duda is just too strong. Yeah, it's uh, also now started to play the Catalan. Yeah, very interesting that he's also widening his repertoire. He's on the right path. Yeah, I, I perfectly agree with you. I mean, in my mind, I would put him 27-70 at the moment for sure. At least, yeah, at least. Yes. Uh, no, I mean, okay, at least I, I want to always be careful because mm -hmm. when you look at the ratings and suddenly you see that the level also drops so much, yeah, it's down to 27, 30 or something. I mean, the world is upside down, yeah? Some some crazy things are happening. Fabi was below 27, 60. Wesley mm -hmm. also had lost some points at some point. I mean, uh, things are completely out of control. Yeah, but I think very importantly, do this clearly still getting stronger. I mean, he's getting better prepared. He's taking his chest seriously. He's getting stronger. He yeah, also gets a lot of support, I think, from, from Poland. This Psychologically, it means so much Yeah, when you, you feel that your country believes in you. Yeah, Because the support is 
great for, of course, financing the trainers, the, the team and so on. But at the same time, also gives you this feeling that the country cares for you. And it gives you then so much extra energy to, to give everything that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Be interesting to see how much, uh, how much he can still improve. Yes, absolutely. Now, okay, we know that the situation is very tricky. We might not get a chance to have a break. Should we use it and uh, be back in like the three minutes? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we should also run some commercials. Make yeah. sponsors happy. Then, then let's do that. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India. to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. My name is Rafael Diaz and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. 
Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies, and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group, founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I went Bishop C5, D4 and Queen 4 Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to topic. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Yeah, welcome back, everyone. We are here to look at the second round of today. I mean, second game of, uh, of today. And in the meantime, in the break, I just asked Tadeas, is it right that Magnus has now eight out of eight from his last eight games. Unbelievable. I, I mean, this performance I have never seen at all during the chess tour. Yeah, I think he does have eight out of eight because yesterday was speaking of seven out of seven. He won the first game. It's eight out of eight. Yeah, so basically it's not about who beats Magnus in the match, who stops him at all, yeah, winning, uh, winning game after game. Okay, I do believe that Liam will not have trouble stopping him, but uh, just stopping him is basically agreeing to lose the match. Yeah, that's the problem. So you need to try to bounce back, which will give Magnus more and more chances. Clearly, he probably wants to be... But on the other hand, no, I wanted to say that he probably wants to be solid. But we see that even if he is leading, he's still experimenting with some openings. I think that he somehow he wins games so easily, right? It's like also Kasparov in his, uh, in his best day. This is what... Uh... Um, what struck me most that for most people, including both of us, yeah, winning games took effort. Exactly. And these guys, they just seem sometimes, you know, just things they they go their way, yeah, and then they win so easily. Like, like Magnus in that Grunfeld game against Anish, uh, he didn't deserve to win that, yeah, and yet he won this so effortlessly. Just... Yes, exactly. We we see Liam is already there, ready. I mean, uh, Liam usually with white pieces always has some ideas how to try to put his opponent under pressure. Let's see if he succeeds against Magnus. And the the the, the problem of Magnus, I think, however, that he keeps on winning because we, we didn't win so much, but then we were very happy. However, <laughs> for him, it's like everyday uh, task yeah, already that he, he just keeps on winning. So da do you think he feels this euphoria just already an ordinary feeling? I could have become an ordinary feeling. It's a very good point. Yeah, maybe this is also the reason why he is no longer playing World Championship matches. Because it's so much work and doesn't feel like much for him, possibly. And there we go. Magnus has also arrived. We have seen that he came with very determined uh, walk. And, and there you have it. I told you, Liam is always ready and he probably has noticed that Magnus likes this uh, D5, E6, C6, uh, triangle, Slav, or whatever. Yeah, different move orders. And if you play the move GC, it means that you definitely did not come up with over the board because it's uh, tricky and risky to sacrifice the pawn just like this. It's the Catalan spirit, but by black not have committed the knight to F6 yet, might have some extra options. Yeah, I, I think it's also... 
it's been very popular in this tournament, the slab gambit, right? We've seen it in various formations, also from Magnus, who is white. Against yeah, but, but that was, uh, wasn't it against Mohamed Yarov when it came from the Riti and then Symmetry Grunfeld and yeah, the Pawn Sacrifice? I mean, it still was this slab yeah. structure and this Pawn Sacrifice. Exactly. I think in general, it's it's very topical these days. And it's one of the toughest things to to understand or to feel, yeah, when it is uh, compensation, when it is advantage, when black is perfectly fine, yeah, it's uh, all these positions look so similar. I think one of the points being that white hasn't committed his knight yet to c3, which might give him good options uh, trying to to undermine this pawn structure with a4. Yeah, a4, b3, also sometimes connected with another sacrifice of on d4. There are all sorts of ideas. Yes. Yeah, finally Magnus is thinking. This is good news for us. I mean, let's see how he will work things out at the board. What would be your, your guess? Yeah, is, is something like Queen C8 getting ready to play Knight D7 and Idea, or it's uh, losing too much time? I think then you maybe play Knight E7, not trying to go Knight D7 with the same. Mm -hmm. so this yeah, time, but I... I was worried that, for example, after some A4, I still have to lose a tempo defending the bishop. Yeah, you still have to do this. Yeah, maybe Queen C8 is a possibility. Queen C8, D3, and... Uh... Okay, Magnus just goes knight f6. No panic, guys. Let mm -hmm. me just develop the knight. And here we go. Yeah, Liam is trying to play this beast idea, which probably means that after CB... Ah, he still takes with the queen. I thought maybe he wants to take with the pawn, but no, he takes with the queen. And now we reach this position that you mentioned, yeah, that there is this double pawn sacrifice idea giving up the d4 mm -hmm. pawn as well. I think this, this theory exists, yeah? Some queen d4, bishop b2, queen b6 or something, yeah? But I don't want to lie. Uh, hang on, I think that in some US champions, championship or where was it that we have seen something like this between uh, Shankland and Aronian and uh, it was some repetition. It's possible. I, I didn't follow the US championship very much. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure because every position looks so similar that it was exactly this, mm -hmm. but it was this motif, yeah, that the bishop on B2 was hanging and then Shankland, I mean, we know that Sam is an incredible fighter. And he did not sacrifice the two pawns to end up in some repetition mm -hmm. or in, in a quick draw. And he was putting his hands like, what can I do? Yeah, it's, I just can't get out of it. Interesting. Maybe somebody can tell us in the chat, help us out or tell us that uh, am I mixing things up or is this really something very similar? Um, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, let's let's hear if Tadeas is. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar, but uh, doesn't know yet. Tadeas also mm -hmm. doesn't know yet if. I mean, before this game gets really hot, can we like switch to 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 Giri uh, against Arjun? Yes, because That's... this is some vintage stuff, no? Yeah, because I think that this. I I think I know this position. I think White can take BC here. What mm -hmm. is Black's reaction? And if queen c6, I thought white has bishop a3. And then queen a2. And then after knight c, if knight c5, white has, I think, bishop takes f7. Yeah, no, I wanted Possibly. to show I know, that after rook f8, even... that is queen a2, yes? Yeah, queen a2 is difficult to, yes. to defend, yeah? But maybe, maybe in fact, knight c5 is possible. Mm-hmm. So knight c5 here. Because after bishop f7, you have queen c4, you have knight e6, right? So this was based on a, on a mirage. Mm -hmm. And then black has knight e6. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, uh, just also we should use the chance to go back quickly. Because, okay, the, the game is heating up. Mm -hmm. That how did we reach here? Yeah, this is a very old classical Slav with fourth move d takes c4. Yeah. A for Bishop F5. I, I do remember this from, from the prep I made for the World Championship match for Brissago. Yeah, we, I had to have D4 kind of ready as a backup. I, I can't say that I was brilliantly prepared in D4. I was counting mm -hmm. on E4, but as a backup, uh, Tkacho was helping me a lot. And I do think that it was this direction. 
E for E5, D5, somehow it, uh, it, it reminds me of something, but it was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, this I also it. had a game against Grandmaster Peralta, the Dresden Olympiad, which went somewhere along these lines, but I just don't recall. Just so difficult. Yeah, to remember everything. Yeah, to actually, Anish opted for CD7. Mm -hmm. And after Bishop D4, Bishop G5. Okay, Rook takes D7. This should be very, very solid, no? Although maybe Rook C1, Black still has to find some... some... Yeah, these are the, the tricky situations. Yeah, that this Bishop on C4 will be a monster. The Bishop on D4 is a monster itself. However, who will be able to pose more trouble to the weakness? F7 mm -hmm. and F2. Yeah, that, that, that will be the, the, the moral winner of the story. Black no, Ops for Queen takes queen D7. D7. I think this is better because... Uh... I think white's plan includes g3, king g2 to, to get out of the tough spot with the king. And now he gets ready for queen h3, so maybe this is just better. Uh -huh. Such a finesse, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't like g3 if you have queen h3. Otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. it, it would be my kind of typical move. Yeah, g3, king g2. This is also Kramnik Chesku. Yeah, if you don't know what to do, go G3, King G2, improve your position. Yeah, slowly. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the reasons why this structure with the pawn on G6, G7 is so dangerous for black because the same maneuver just doesn't work for black, doesn't exist. Yeah, very good point. And look at Arjun actually blitzing out everything. So he's very much in, in theory in his book. So, okay, yeah, Anish goes H3. In this case, I, I feel like, okay, this is just too soft. This this isn't the direction. By the way, also after H3, just ever if White wanted to try to mm -hmm. get give some checkmate on the H file, it does not exist anymore with the pawn on H3. Yeah. Okay, this, this would anyway not be relevant, but just highlighting also one of the drawbacks of these pawns that White has some uh, crazy attack on the H file as well. All right, so what else do we have? We have a very sharp game between Shakri Amamadyalov and Wesley So. I think this game deserves special attention because we were thinking that who could potentially bounce back and uh, we know that Shakri is incredibly dangerous, but he, he, he lost control of the tournament, but it would be lovely to see him bounce back then he would get the energy that it's, it's needed. This is this is your home turf, yeah. This this position and this. Usually, line. but look at the evolution bar claiming that White got something, so it isn't mine, yeah. It's uh, I'm not not supposed to give any chance for my opponent, but it was my line, yeah. So what happened? Four knight English. G six, yeah. My setup. D three. Well, actually, I would always say that okay, this is quite timid. It's it's nothing dangerous. Bishop G seven. Bishop D two. Ah, but the move e6, e6 is now absolutely not necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a big loss of a tempo. No, this is not not right. Yeah, so Wesley played e6. Maybe it's not a bad move, but yeah, White immediately uses the chance with h4, and Wesley even allowed h5. I mean, very strange. Mm -hmm. Bishop b7, queen a4, and we are getting some bizarre position. Queen d7, h6. Okay, black has a very solid structure. Yeah, this, this is a very solid construction, but white has some dangerous jumps. Yeah, I, I, I thought he had this uh, had this trick. I'm not sure if it worked to go AG, AG. Instead of H6? Yeah, mm -hmm. to go AG, AG, rook H8, bishop H8, knight takes D5, probably take with the pawn, and now queen H4. Mm -hmm. and um, okay you can take bishop b2 but your king is now stuck yeah and maybe I can go okay, rook b1 or maybe I have d4 or am I being like manic yeah you like your mating attack yeah well, I'm just not sure I'm just not sure I have the mate yeah bishop a1 I also have queen e7 here or not Queen e7, bishop g5. No, queen e7 is very, very dangerous. Yeah, bishop g5. Yeah, no, no. So what was your line? Bishop a1, queen okay. h8, king e7, 
Bishop g5 check, king d6, yeah? I'm not sure I have a mate. I think I have perpetual check. Yeah, but... you already have perpetual, which is enough reason that black is frightened to, to, to go for all this. Yeah, it was a very interesting spot, mm -hmm. yeah, because this takes, takes queen h4. Yeah, because black will never castle again, yeah? And also bishop b2, rook b1, I'm sure I have at least uh, a nasty playable compensation. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, also very typical Shakliar stuff, yeah, that, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, he was probably tempted to go h6, but yeah, this h6 is tricky because h6, bishop f6, knight e4, bishop e7, it can lead to some very solid structure for black. White did castle short. I think it depends on what black does now, because for instance, knight d4 looks tempting, but I also thought maybe he could castle long a bit atypically. Wow, just castle long, yeah. Castle long, put the king on b8, you know, and, and maybe even to a8, yeah, if you can get there. And my question is, who is this pawn on h6 controlling anymore, yeah, if there is no king on, on g8? Okay, why get some g5 square, yeah, if you are talking in abstract sense, but doesn't look like a decisive square. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay, Wesley, yeah, true to himself, he likes to release the tension. On the other hand, okay, he's leading the match. It's logical to trade queens against Shakriar. Might not be a bad idea at all. So it takes, takes, 95 check. Looks yeah, we have to natural. take, yeah. I don't think we can do without taking. Mm -hmm. 95 check, you'll probably go king e8 back. Yes. Maybe e3, push you around a bit. Mm-hmm. But this gives me a chance to go knight f5 and this pawn on h6 might be vulnerable. Yeah, I was just basically hoping that something will work out. I could also play knight g4, suddenly we have like both of us, we have stupid knights. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can, you can hang on to the pawn, but it wasn't exactly <laughs> what you wanted, yeah? Well, but now your, your king is not castling, right? Which means... I can't castle, yeah. But hang on, I can do... No, I can't play f6 yet because my bishop is hanging. Can't play f6? So maybe it's not so easy for black. Yeah, not so easy, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Tricky, tricky stuff. Very tricky stuff. So knight d4, Shakya needs to make up his mind. But I feel like if he's not trading, then he's losing the momentum. Yeah, you, you can't play queen d1. I don't believe in queen d1. Yeah. Wow, breaking news. Yeah, this is on the... No, king only king takes d7. Shakti opted for knight takes d4, cd4. So now things stabilized. I just wanted to shout out breaking news is that Anish Giri is actually pawned down against Arjun in the second game. Yeah, actually, I saw this position in calculation. Not this particular, but I saw that after h3, rook c8, the bishop e3, knight takes e4 would be possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a difficult... Line to calculate. I mean, on this level, it's a it's a slightly bizarre blunder. Yeah, suddenly, I mean, I remember we were praising Anish so much at the start of the event that he's very focused. He it seems like he came super motivated, and then he during the tournament he lost this momentum. Yeah, it, he is now, I mean, unrecognizable. Well, he had this match where uh, somehow he managed to keep everything under control, including opening choices by his opponent. So everything was predictable to him. They were moving within their territory. And now maybe he gets surprised in the opening. Things are not less controllable, right? I mean, he, he will probably not lose this position. Um, but yeah, it's not, a, it's not a great thing to lose the first game, to have this position in the second game. Not amazing. Yeah, not at all. I mean, it uh, also gives the your opponent so much confidence. Yeah, that okay, things are moving. And with Arjun, we talked about this. I I remember the preliminaries that there was this preliminary in the Julius Bear uh, Generation Cup that Arjun got crushed by Magnus in the first game in like twenty moves in this uh, peer with G six, and then Arjun was very aggressive with FC long castles and and got checkmated. And then I thought like, wow, now it's gonna be tough on uh, Arjun and then he won like six or seven games in a row. I mean, just showing that once he gets uh, going, 
he, he is very dangerous. I mean, he believes that because I know for myself that sometimes when I started winning, I I kind of, uh, I wanted to stabilize. Yeah, that okay, I now won the games, now I have to, you know, uh, cement the position. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, these guys are not cementing anything. Yeah, they keep on winning. Uh, these guys are generally just naturally more optimistic. Yeah, very optimistic, yeah. Now, for me, I think my, my favorite uh, uh, do the story uh, is from Waikanze. Uh, when I saw his interview um, after his game against uh, against Fabiano. So basically, he was completely lost from the opening, but it was tricky. And he defended, defended, defended and didn't lose. And then a journalist asked him after the game, it's like, uh, when did you start having hopes again or something like this, yeah? And Duda looked at him like he was completely crazy. Yeah, this journalist, he said, I never lost hope. Yeah, what is his question? <laughs> <laughs> I never lost hope. Yeah, I can understand that it made a big impression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. But actually, look at this. Liam is queen up. I mean, before it was Magnus, who, I mean, Magnus, who was queen up in the previous game, there Liam sacrificed his queen. And now, Magnus, what happened here? And by the way, we also got the news that. Yes, it, it's correct. I was not uh, completely out of my mind. With a4, a6 moves included, uh, queen takes d4, bishop b2, queen b4, queen c2, queen c5 was the situation when uh, the Sam Shankland and Alonyan game ended in a draw. So very similar, but without the included a4, a6. And now uh, what did we see here? Okay, all this is typical. Knight b7, rook c1. Yeah, it's very dangerous, This this kind of Special on the c6 pawn with knight e5, bishop g2, bishop g5, because there is too much pressure on c6. And eventually, when you take on e5, then d takes e5, white trades the dark square bishops, and then knight e4, knight d6, so knight c5 is coming. Mm -hmm. Super dangerous stuff. What did Magnus do? Castles, knight e4. Yeah, basically, it, it was not a planned sacrifice, I believe. It, it came out of necessity. Rook e8, knight takes e6. Wow. All right, while we were talking, discussing here some finesses, um, Liam meant business. Bishop e4, and yeah, now Magnus had to kind of give up his queen, otherwise it's a terrible position. Takes, takes. Double attack on the bishop, and bishop c2 is threatened. But Liam had foreseen that he has the move queen a3, and knight b6 on the board. Yeah, what surprises me a bit is that he just abandoned the pawn on a6 without without fight, like bishop c5. Yeah, then he can go knight a4. Ah, that is the, the point, yeah. And if I go queen takes a6 now? That's a big question. I don't know if black has a chance to somehow catch the queen, maybe knight d5 he has, yeah? Yeah, knight d5 looks like a tempting option, yeah. And then also, rook a8, yeah. And also then... heading to c3, mm -hmm. combining with rook a8, it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit tricky, yeah. I believe if you are queen up, you don't want to get into these messy things. Maybe bishop c5, knight a, a4, f3, and then king f2 and just play this position. Yeah, get get control of the light squares, make sure that the king mm -hmm. will have a wonderful square on, on f2. You can always activate your queen with queen b4, queen a5 as well. It's not logged out of the game. Wow, there is the chance. And Magnus Carlsen after 8 out of 8, facing a tough, tough task to defend this. I don't think he'll lose this. You don't think or you think? No, I don't think he will lose this. You don't think? You are, you are a big believer in Magnus Carlsen as I hear. I know it, looks, it still looks very tough to make progress to me. Yeah, bishop c5. I know that computer yes. will probably show like plus three and a half, plus four, from my experience with Stockfish. But no, it just it's, doesn't look uh, it's some plus plus two ish stuff. Plus two is is not even so much for this position. Yeah, it's just the beginning of this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, look c1. Okay, now he wants to go e4 and he wants to take on c4 after. I'm breaking the construction e4 bishop c4 rook c4 would win the knight after bc yes so i don't know if black is obliged to play f5 maybe he is 
But then, okay, you give up the e5 square, yeah, then we can go bishop d6, bishop e5. That is true. Yeah, that's also... That is unfortunately yeah. true. Terrible. No, my, my feeling, you know, and my attitude is that I know how strong Magnus is, but if he shows some sign of weakness during a game, I want him to be punished, yeah, because I want the other guys also feel this, that, yes, you know what? Magnus can't get away with everything. And uh, you you should, uh, I mean, th that I should signal as a player against Magnus that I know that if you do something wrong, I will, I'm able to punish you. Yeah, this is what I'm I'm hoping so far in this tournament, nobody managed it. Mm -hmm. Basically, so what, you, what you want is justice, yeah? Yeah, I want justice, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> want justice. Over the board, objective justice. Yeah, if, uh, if Magnus plays great, fantastic, okay. But if he does something, then he should get punished. Uh, he plays a5, it's probably necessary. I think the idea is e4, bishop c6, yeah, and then b4, knight c3. Yes. Now, the knight is protected by the bishop, and white was not able to reach this queen before, which I very much wanted. At the same time, fc was, of course, necessary. That's that's why Rustam is claiming that it's so difficult to, to beat Magnus, yeah, right? We, we all know that this seemingly small little move but it would be so easy that you know that our ah, e4 is coming and it's bad position and then you kind of collapse and you make some uh, suboptimal move and don't don't really put up much resistance. Magnus never misses this chance to pose problems, practical problems to his opponent. There is something to think about for white. Yeah, I mean, bishop c6, b4, knight c3, then you will have these questions. Maybe I want to give my rook back and keep control, or maybe I... It's not, it's not easy, yeah? Why do we have to solve some questions? Yes. Okay, Liam is uh, up on the clock as well. Yeah, it's uh, three minutes time advantage. Still, he even had more. And he opts for king f2. Tranquilo play. Just not to rush. Yeah, basically, of course, if you plan to sacrifice on c3, yeah, eventually your rook, then it makes a lot of sense not to weaken the, the, the structure. Yeah, he might want to, to push. Yeah, Magnus also goes h6. Yeah, also if black's plan is bishop c6, b4, then why why should white help this bishop getting there? No? Exactly. Maybe yeah. now just g4, h4. Uh, and then... Yeah, this is the this is the thematic stuff, and then try to advance, maybe even prepare some g5 break at some yeah. point. Because if ever black's king will be attacked, it will be very tough to defend. Yeah, I think the, the the king side attack is basically what decides the game when you have a queen and your opponent doesn't. Yeah. That's that's perfectly true. So okay, Magnus in some kind of a trouble. He needs to dig deep into to hold this. We haven't had a chance to look at Prague versus Duda just to very quickly before the Magnus game really heats up. Wow, this is this Italian line that the, the bishop on b6 can be stuck and white might be able to maneuver this position. Well, the, I think the case basically happened here. Yeah? The bishop yes. is stuck. White is completely free. The question is whether he will be able to break this, right? Yeah, yeah. In any case, also, all right, good news for, for, for us as commentators and all the Nauta fans. I mean, Prague is fighting. Yeah, we don't know if it will be enough or not, but he's he's really fighting. Liam is fighting against Magnus. Yeah, g4, bishop c6 on the board. We might be seeing this kingside break. Yeah, g5 will come. Maybe even queen e3 and then get, get g5 ready. What about queen e3? Basically, what you want is g5, and then h5, you'll go g6. So. Yeah, and then we're going to break. Yeah, queen is on the board. Magnus in a lot of trouble. I don't see the fortress anymore. Especially if you don't believe in fortresses. Yeah. And there was no fortress at all yet <laughs> to start with, yeah? Yes. yeah. And I should go bishop d5 back, just to hint that the pawn a2 will... But okay, I with. can even just play a3. But then, yeah, I can just play a3, yeah? But will you? I don't know, because I'm also <laughs> tempted to give mate with g5, yeah? Well, I, th I think you are tempted, yes. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, we want to break with g5. With g5, ag, queen g5, f6, 
Well, that that is lost. Then h4, h5, h6 comes. Yeah, that's. I thought I would take on c5, play bishop a2, and get counterplay. You don't believe in counterplay? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't believe. Well, I mean, the, the queen is too strong. Yeah, we we. Yeah, it, it should be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Magnus in a lot of trouble. Body language. Well, we see that Liam is very pleased. He rightly so. I mean. Uh, putting Magnus under a lot of pressure and uh, not only pressure, it might be a decisive attack. Queen e3, g5 is coming. If black plays the move f6, it does stop g5, but h4 is coming and g5 might be even more painful. Once, once I sacrificed uh, a queen against Liam, didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel that he has such good nerves, yeah, that he is not getting affected or like this. He just plays like a computer, one move at a time, focuses very much on the position, no emotions at all. Yeah, he doesn't look like the right person to sacrifice the, your queen against. Yeah, ba basically, with a queen, you also have to have a certain amount of faith that the queen is a really strong piece, and one day it will tell. I think the most stunning example to the strengths of the queen was the famous game rapport Nipomnishi from the candidates. That it was just so strong, I think, came as a surprise to many. It certainly came as a surprise to me. Yeah, it was queen against the two rooks, yeah, but it was uh, white... Queen against two rooks, white's king was a bit shaky, and this was exactly. all it took, yeah, this was all it took, basically. Yeah. Also, Jan, of course, played incredibly, I mean, very powerfully. He, he, did, he did not hesitate at all. Yeah, but uh, that, that was that, that was a very special moment. That was really, really impressive, yeah. Yeah, G5 on the board, yeah. So Liam wants to use the momentum, not to waste time on A3, because maybe after A3, Black would have chances to take the bishop on C5 and we get into some race, mm -hmm. and usually you don't want to get into any race with with rook bishop against against queen so much better to create some threats against this king on g8 g5 makes sense of course yeah yeah knight takes c5 and somehow d takes c5 yeah we, or yeah, you, you keep the need to take rook, dc course, yeah? yeah you keep the attacking rook 100 percent exactly we need this rook to join the party on the g file targeting g7 and then uh Okay, I don't know how Liam is stay safe. Yeah, Liam is still thinking, but okay, we're gonna see D takes C5. Ah, maybe he's thinking of G takes H6. Wow, yes, I mean, I'm just definitely. trying to understand why he could be thinking. Uh, definitely, he's not thinking about rook takes C5. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, out of question, but G H6 is a good, good question. But no, I'm uh, in DC5. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Yeah. Simple chess. Not that suddenly maybe some knight DC check and then we there is this potential of eventually positional compensation. Yeah, he doesn't need this. Yeah. Why? Yeah. But actually, even I, I'm trying to highlight what I mean, but you have Queen G5. I'm not sure if I can if, if I can illustrate mm -hmm. what no, I, I want. Maybe, maybe knight d7 was an objective uh, problem with this. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yeah, nah, yeah. But okay, the the game game is in progress. D takes c5, a g queen g5 on the board. F6. The line we discussed. Yeah, and I said mm -hmm. I'm not a believer because the, these these things are coming. Besides, even the rook on e8 and everything is yeah. So queen g6. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how to how to defend this. On the board? Yeah, queen g6 on the board. Maybe maybe rook e7, f7. Okay, this is definitely not it because now I can go rook g1 and queen takes f6. Yes, but okay, black has to go for it. Yeah, rook g1, rook e7, queen f6 and then hold on, on to the seventh rank. Or even maybe I can play rook f7 and the bishop is protected. Okay, Magnus is trying to create some practical chances. But I think your plan of advancing the the h pawn will decide. Yeah, this is what we are witnessing. Queen yeah. b four and then h four, h five, h six. And the queen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the queen is too strong. The queen is a queen. Yeah, that's true. It really takes black like b four, a four, b three, a three, b two, five moves to become dangerous, and white will mate in that time. <laughs> 
And also, oh, but like, even even Queen A one, it's like a professional move. Yeah, Liam just, just eliminates this pawn so yeah. that Black won't be able to create any real counterplay. Like he stops the discussion about the danger of past pawns by taking these past pawns. <laughs> yes, yes. On the other hand, he did lose some time. Yeah, so his H pawn is not deciding the game anymore because Magnus has stabilized his pieces. So it. Uh, yeah, Queen D8 checks. So the question is, can he directly benefit from this? Completely gone, yeah. Like Nipomnishi style. How do you do it? Nipomnishi style? Yes. What is it? How well, I mean, it? just 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 play fast and well, you know. <laughs> yes, that too. If if well, it works, it's Queen it's H wonderful. Yeah, what Queen uh... H4 check, King G8, play rook a1. Ah, like this from this angle, yeah. Play rook a1 and then he'll go rook c8 and then you go queen d4 and then you go h4 h5 and uh aha uh -huh. so you forced you managed to force the rook back to to the eighth rank yeah so that you but okay there is some b4 it's not not over yet yeah if the pawn gets to b3 it might get a bit complicated well maybe i should have prevented that yeah but uh okay anish is also completely losing yeah we're here yeah, just a quick update. Yeah, this is hopelessly lost. He is losing the fifth game in a row. I, I don't think it ever happened to him. Oh, it and it will never happened. happen. It must have happened. No, five games in a row. I mean, these people have played so many rapid and blitz tournaments, including those, you know, uh, the, the Grand Chess 2 tournaments where Anish sometimes would lose like eight in a row in blitz sections and so on. Yeah, it has happened to him. Really, yeah? Yeah, and it has happened to most. It has happened to Kramnik. It has happened to Fabi. I mean, sometimes you have a bad day, and then you know your opponents. You know, you get Carlson, then you get MVL, then you get Wesley. It just yeah, never it's... gets any easier. Yeah, yeah. Especially in blitz, it's very difficult to recover. Yeah, you carry the emotions with you. But I mean, wow. in a rapid format, and after we know that four games, we have a new match the next day. Yeah, it's still very uncharac uncharacteristic that this this could happen to a player like Anish. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, there is nothing to talk about. Uh, White's king is too far away. Also, king e6 doesn't lead to any checkmate. So, black spawns will decide the game. All right, Magnus is still having the same position. Liam is thinking about his next move. We do see the evolution bar increased ever since. While just doing nothing, just calculating the lines. And what about, yeah, what about Mamed Yadov? Does he have a chance? Apparently not. Computers do not believe that he has a chance. Oh, he has a serious losing chance, yeah. Yeah, this pawn on d4 blocks this bishop on d2, yeah. Without this pawn, then White could eventually reach the d4 square for his bishop. It would be wonderful, but... Why, why does it like take rook b2? I don't get this. Yeah, g5 because... is trying to be too clever, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, but okay, so we are making a tour. Uh, Shakriar is not really bouncing back. What about Prague? Okay, Black has sacrificed some pawn. He is ready to... But he's nothing down, right? Nothing down, yeah, because he, the, the bishop on f2 is hanging. But, but I thought like dc5, do you take on f2 or do you move the bishop? It's the question. I thought dc, queen f2, cb, queen takes b6 and queen e7. Yeah, some such. Yeah, but I think that Duda knowing Duda's time, maybe he might move the bishop. Yeah. That is possible. Because the bishop is hanging and also the a4 pawn is vulnerable. Yeah, okay. White gets this lovely d4 square. Yeah, dc5 on the board. But we have to go back to the Magnus's game because Liam is... Going for queen h4 check, king g8, rook g3, direct approach, trying to invade on the h file with rook h3. We see that the computer does believe that it's it might be good, but uh, was actually claiming something else. Oh, this is ne not Nepo style, yeah. This is, yeah, it's a little bit too direct, yeah. This, uh... maybe rook d7 now. Rook d7, okay. Rook, rook h3, I'm guessing white follows the... I was hoping rook d2, to be honest. 
Proglito. But I did not calculate. Yeah. I mean, also from white side, I don't want to calculate. I just don't like any of these messy things. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't think you should allow this because yeah. I think Queen H8 is just one check. Yeah. You don't have any other checks. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. This I'm, I'm not liking. So what does Liam have in mind after Rook D7? Okay. Four and a half minutes for Liam, only two minutes for Magnus. Rook d7, very clever move, because anyway, you need to create this f7 square. Rook c5 to f5, no. This is an empty shot. I mean, this pawn is so well protected, yeah? I mean, this this is completely playing? empty spot. Why did this happen? Rook h3? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the rook d7, rook d2 was the only, only chance. Mm -hmm. Basically, I understood the ideal combination. It's basically your general understanding, my vision for tactics, and confirmation by Tadeusz in a, in a tight spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really, really, really the, 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 this triangle could help. You have to prove to be quite efficient. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, then maybe I would consider you know getting back into professional chess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now the problem is that uh, Queen H8 check followed by some Rook H7 or Rook G3. Yeah, Magnus goes Rook F8. So now White will give Queen H7 check, of course. And then Rook G3. Yeah, he's actually just sort of collapsing. Yeah. Yeah, he will have to play Rook G8, but that's horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rook G3. Hitting the G7 pawn and then Black plays the move Rook G8. Maybe hopes for some B4. Maybe White can just activate Rook G4 and then get ready for pushing. I, I just don't see any mm -hmm. pieces, anything that moves from Black side. Yeah, Rook G4 is, is probably nice. But also, even if you play H4 and then B4, Rook G4, you're probably winning tactically anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I also wanted to make sure with Rook G4 that this Rook will never move to E5 or ever because Rook F4 check. Yeah, Rook G3, Rook G8 on the board. Eric Aishi has won his game against Giri, so yeah, it's 2-0. That's uh, looking really scary for Anish. But all lies on Liam. Can he stop Magnus? And not only stopping, but he might be bouncing back. Ah, but it seems in this position there is just, yeah. There should be no force that prevents White from winning this. Yeah, White opted for H4 immediately. Okay, in the meantime, Wesley is completely winning, yeah. Yeah, wow. I mean, we yeah, we really have to get here for yeah, that's it. Shakira that is... resigns, his look on a5 gets trapped by the bishop on b5. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine black even plays a6, mm -hmm. uh, but but this king march also. How did this king reach uh this square? Kind of impressive. Ah uh, wow, Shakria probably completely missed this king king walk. All right, but back to Magnus. All eyes on Magnus. Will he be able to pull up? He's down to 40, 40 seconds. No, I, I don't think against yeah. Liam this could. Nah, if we needed some proof of mortality, this is it, yeah? This is it. This is how you have to punish. I mean, okay, Magnus is human after all. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I mean, in brutally strong and everything, but uh, I mean, okay, you, you have to punish him. Yeah. If he makes a mistake. Yeah, Rook F6 is the best defense. You're trying to stop at least H6. But, uh, I mean, Black's pieces are just too uh, too overloaded. Oh, they're just also passive. Yeah, they're just not, not doing much. Yeah, yeah the, the queen might just shift to the other side of the board. For example, queen for bishop d5. Then queen moves to d4 easily and then invades from, from I mean, from too many angles, the, the troubles are coming. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean, okay, Li Liam, very confident. Magnus down to six seconds. Three, two. Yeah, he plays Luke H6. Um, I mean, it shows, yeah, that if Magnus goes down to two seconds, he's not a believer in his position. Otherwise, he would never, he would play much faster. Yeah. 
Oh no, even even rook takes g7 and queen h6 is probably simple enough. Yeah, it's yeah, looks 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 good enough. I mean, th there are no no scenarios possible that this could ever be savable. Mm -hmm. But also, if he keeps uh, the rook and just plays for the attack, this will be quite as good. Yeah, just plays queen e4, queen e5. Now it's really a matter of uh... yeah, queen e4 exactly. He he this... just wants to yeah, queen e5 will be. Yeah, g5. That's the desperate idea of Magnus, but no, 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 no. I mean, Duda tried something similar against uh, Liam yesterday. It yeah, almost I mean, worked. Almost, it almost yeah. worked yesterday. Yeah. yeah, I actually wondered because yesterday he obviously missed it, and today he obviously missed this move too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might be regretting now not have capturing on g7. Yeah, but his position is so winning. Um, yeah. Oh, rook takes g5 is still possible. Ah, oh, oh, oh. yeah. If you are not shocked, then you can realize that there is this simple little tactic. Yeah, one of the rooks are falling. Yeah, I'm expecting with three and a half minutes now, two forty. Liam will find it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Rook G five on the board. King h7. And methodically, yeah, e4, king e3, f4, and... Yeah, this look is trapped. I mean, black might... I mean, e4 might put black almost into Tsukzwang, yeah? I mean... On the board. Yeah, I actually always like this bit, yeah, when in a closed opening, which starts with d4 or c4, at some point, white decisively plays e2, e4... I always like the music of it. Yeah. On move 46 or move 55, you know, 108. Exactly. Yeah. And then look at this. Yeah. Magnus goes e5. He gives up the e pawn, which is, which, which shows that he knows that that's it. But his body language also indicates here should I resign or should I try something? He he, he knows that it's, it's lost and it's hopeless. It's not just lost, but it's hopeless. Yeah. I actually hope that Magnus designs quickly and then we can join in to, to Prague against Duda because it seems like there might be some very interesting, dramatic time trouble happening there. Well, we can also do this because nothing is going to happen in this. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, basically we, we, we think that Liam is winning and we just have to, yeah, Queen E7 check, King G8, come on, force Magnus to design. King H7, okay, I'm moving. Yeah, yeah, just move. Yeah, we can't take I'm this. I'm moving because this. look at this: 35 seconds for Prague against 22 for Duda. Double-edged, razor-sharp position. Black has the two bishops, but White has this very powerful pass pawn. There is this d4 square, but yeah, Bishop g6 hinting at Bishop e4. Bishop d4 targets but the g6. Bishop d4 might allow Queen b1 check. Do you want to go queen b1 check? Well, I thought I mean, I then might. takes takes bishop e5. Um, bishop, um, difficult, yeah. Bishop well, e5 uh, is a really good move, yeah. And then knight d4, and you, yes, yes, but okay, do we don't have time? Do that goes queen f8, then bishop e5 happened, and bishop takes e5, queen e5, queen takes e5. Yeah, queen c5 and e7. e7. I mean, uh, it's risky for black. Yeah, by the way, Magnus has designed. So yeah, Liam has one congratulation. Very big congratulation to Liam stopping the monster Magnus. The match is tied 1-1 and we will be getting hell of a match. e7. Will be Prague also able to bounce back? Queen c1. Yeah, king h2 and black just runs for it. Yes, c5, for instance. You you think you but can I go knight h4? I'm not taking this bishop. I go for mate. Your territory. Mm -hmm. Queen c2 apparently a blunder according to computer, but Duda think, is maybe hinting at queen e4 or if the knight I think the same, yeah. Knight h4. Just knight h4, yeah. It's knight uh, h4 is finito. De la Comedia, yeah? mm -hmm. Bishop e8, knight f5. Yeah, that, that was the yeah. idea. Knight h4 on the board. Plug is bouncing back. 
Uh, there is like yesterday we had no such action. Today everybody is bouncing back except for Anish. Yeah, and also Shakria does not bounce back. Mm -hmm. No, I mean two two guys, but yeah, that's it. Bishop e8, knight f5. I mean this queen knight combo. If this is not checkmate, if it's not finished, then then nothing. Even queen e6 check, followed by knight d6. But okay, knight d6 is simply as well. Ah, uh, hang on. Also, we we can maybe try to yeah do the just. I mean, plug just goes knight g7, and I think yeah, Duda just... knows. That's Sometimes it. you just keep it simple, yeah? Yeah. Knight g7, e8, knight takes e8 will be good enough. And the black king is still in checkmate mm -hmm. zone. So, wow, I mean, the, the, the two leaders, yeah, Duda and Magnus, both losing their second game. And this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see dramas. Yeah. Basically, it's designable. Yeah, very much so, yeah. King f7, knight d6 check. And yeah, Duda leaning back, enough is enough. King g6. Leaning back, but still making moves. Yeah, but he's contemplating, uh, yeah, that he's just very upset, very angry that he knows it's finished. He knows it's already pointless. There is, it's not a fight anymore. Yeah, that's it. Do the designs. Prague wins and bounces back. We have two incredible matches. I mean, 1-1 uh, one -one between Prague and Jan Shishtov Duda. Uh, Liam Lab bounced back against Magnus Carlsen. Also the match tied after 8 out of 8. Finally, Liam stops uh, Magnus's run. And uh, we are in for, for a thriller of matches in, in both. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm worried for Anish because... Anish has completely lost it. He he's now two points done against Arjun, who is on fire. And the same applies to Shakri Amavadi. Although I just don't see the scenarios uh, them really bouncing back from this. The opening, but I don't think I played really well. I, I think I had a lot of counterplay, um, but somehow in time trouble I managed to uh, uh, win the game. Got a big one coming up. All the best. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I don't worry much for Anish. I think Anish, he'll he'll be fine. I mean, he will be fine from tomorrow, but not not today. Yeah, ah, today, today he will lose. Yeah, but but yes. so, but on the whole, I don't worry much for him. I think he got he got his life under control. That's for sure. I mean, okay, there is no reason, but I mean, simply, I mean, losing five games in a row, it's uh, for such a solid player. I think that he's just absolutely not used to this. Yeah, it's uh, who is used to it? No one. And and for him it should be very painful, but who knows? Yeah, we already saw like Prague will take the match with 2-0, yeah, against him, and then he bounced back. So never write Anish off. No, no, we'll, we'll we'll try not to because he did teach us a lesson, yeah. He he, he showed us what we considered impossible, right? To come back from 2-0. He, he actually did this, yeah. And this was spectacular. Yeah, that was spectacular. At the same time, uh, it came after the, the first day, which was so impressive, yes, against mm -hmm. the Liam. In in this regard, I feel that he was still um, in much better shape and he believed much more in himself. Yeah, that also this interview from yesterday, if mm -hmm. if you guys have missed out. Please go and check it out. It was not on our stream, but you will find it, I think, in the official stream. And probably it's also, uh, I mean, the, the other official stream of uh, of the show. But it's also probably a single uh, video because it just felt like that he is already also overthinking. Yeah, all this car dealer business and, and whatever stuff. Uh, maybe you should, during the tournament, you shouldn't be thinking about this. Yeah, because... I know from myself, I don't know if you ever had this, that if you get into some, some bad tournament period and then already you start to think about the future, that if the tournament finishes, I will try to change this. I have to, you, you know, I have to do more tactics, so I have to make a better preparation. And when you start to think about what you have to repair in the future, you lose the momentum, you, you lose the now nah and... The, the the moment right now yeah this is the this is the scary thing what i got from his interview yeah this is this is i think a very important point i always tell my students when they start complaining during the tournament i say okay first you play the tournament till the end and then we will do you know we'll hold strategic talks after that 
it's not the right time yeah during the tournament to start thinking about your broken engine you know and the need for all change and whatnot yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because okay, you are <laughs> one of the best players in the world. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you really need to replace everything, then then okay, then, then why why you have been the best player? So things are you are very strong. Yeah, for some reason something is not working right at the moment. Yeah, but it's just some temporary thing. It's uh, you you can never lose your class. Yeah, and Anish has incredible class. So I think if he thinks less, uh, then then he should be fine automatically. All right. What should we do? We have little time. Should we use again for a little break? Or yeah, I think I think a, a three four minute break will be appreciated by all. Yes. All right. Then let's do it. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Marinus Carlson. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India. to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. My name is Rafael Diaz and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama.
Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I went Bishop C5, D4 and Queen 4 Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to Tommy. You can download it for free just by going to Chess24. Welcome back everyone. Wow, we are in for some incredible matches. Liam Le did the impossible stopping Magnus Carlsen after Magnus being 8 out of 8, winning 8 consecutive games. Uh, I mean, he has beaten Mamed Yadov and Danish Giri 3-0. Stunning stuff, but Liam is back 1-1 one, one against Magnus Carlsen. We have also seen Prague bouncing back against Duda in a very complex uh, game in uh, the big mutual time trouble. Prague was very impressive. Uh, however, Wesley saw did not give any chances for Mamed Yadov to bounce back. So Wesley is leading 2-0. And Arjun Adigaishi is also dominating so far Anish Giri. Anish Giri needs a miracle just like he had he done. He has pulled off against Prague before. But I'm already also sure that Arjun is very much aware of the dangers. That uh, what can happen after being 2-0 and if you get a bit careless. So... I think it will be very difficult for Anish. Lustan, what is your take on the matches so far? Well, and first of all, of course, um, there is justice. You want the justice, there is justice. Yeah. And Magnus was maybe a bit careless in the opening with his opening choice. Sacrifice his queen, didn't work out. So it's good to see that he's also human. I mean, it's not that I root against him, but it's just good to see that he can also fail sometimes, you know? Well, I mean, basically, when we root against him, means that we are rooting for, for us and for the audience and everything. Because, I mean, if Magnus keeps on winning 3-0, then where is the intrigue? Yeah, this is this is great news for us. We want to see Magnus Carsten in action as much as possible. So if, for example, the match ends in 2-2 tie and we're going to play, we're going to be in for an incredible blitz playoff, all the better. And, yeah, yeah, it's uh, just more exciting like this. And plus, somebody no noted in the chat that there haven't been draws today. Wow, really? Yes. So yeah. eight, eight, eight decisive, eight decisive games, so games. Yeah, it's remarkable, no? Ah, but okay. At least, yeah, this is the way. The black is already okay. Yeah, in the second uh, uh, round, the the match finished two two between uh, the white and the black side. So yeah, first one was four zero. Now black is black is back in Adorian territory. Exactly. I mean, okay. I'm I'm completely shocked because I'm a big believer in blacks. Uh, I mean, playing with the black pieces, I always feel like okay, I have a super repeater. Okay, come come attack me, and then I will counter it. I'm even much more happy to to do that than from the white side trying to to squeeze something. And look at this psychological battle, Magnus. Offers the pawn sacrifice with c4 and the rate that after dc4 he would be into very similar territories. D takes c4 mm -hmm. accepted. And now e6 the... would be the same position, right? No, the pawn is on d2. Ah, that is that is a different position yes. indeed. Yeah. That's that's the trick that the pawn is on d2. But anyway, this is a very sharp stuff. Yeah, castles. What do they do? Knight bd7 is the main move here. 
I think something like knight b7, then knight a3. I don't want to do stupid things. Yeah, no, knight a3, not... knight b6. I think I've had a game like this against like Ivanchuk. And then queen c2, bishop e6, knight g5, bishop d5, e4, h6. There is some stuff like this. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is something, but maybe you start with queen c2, probably, yeah. I, I mean, there just... are some finesses. Yeah, there is also a4, there's some finesses. Yeah, knight b7 on the board. I mean, we might be seeing this. Yeah, knight a3 played, all right. So I wasn't talking total nonsense. Yeah, knight b6, and then now uh, this queen c2, bishop e6, business. Exists. Yeah, I mean, like me and Ivanchuk, we found some repetition quickly. I don't understand how we could find repetition. I mean, ah, there is also knight e5, queen d4, knight takes c6. There was this was theory some time back. Yeah, well, it was, it was, I think, Adonian against Andreykin. From, yeah, yeah from... something like this. And then knight c6, bc6, bishop takes, bishop a8, knight a8, and then some, some monkey business. Yes, yes, queen c2. And after bishop e6, knight e5, yeah, bishop e6 played, queen d4, knight takes c6, because I happened to know this idea. It was the product of the Armenian national team's kitchen. Yeah, they prepared it. Arshak mm -hmm. was also there. And he told me in advance that, yeah, you know, we, we have some great idea, uh, but I, I didn't know exactly where and how. And then when the game happened, then Arshak told me, yes, that's that's the Armenian kitchen there. Bishop e6. Because this was always our golden rule. Yeah, my father, maybe people, not everyone is uh, used know my situation. Yeah, but my father in law, Arshak Petrosyan, uh, Grandmaster, the, the national team's captain of Armenia, uh, was always uh, in training camp with the Armenian national team. At the same time, we have been working together. But we always made this special rule that what Arshak looks with the national team, he will not share with me and I will not ask. He might inform me that, okay, we look some rating and, okay, we discover some ideas with emotions. But uh, I, I was never involved in these specifics. But when the game then happened, then... Ashak showed, ah, okay, so this this was our idea with the team. It was always nice to see. And there we go, bishop e6. Yeah, Magnus has to make up his mind. Yeah, knight e5 direction or, or knight g5 direction. Do you think Magnus is an expert here or he is improvising? What is your belief? I, I think he's improvising. He sometimes likes this. I noticed this. this is a, because you would think this is not his style uh, to sacrifice a pawn early and just play. But I've seen him do this uh, notably in a classical game against Yu Yangi. He just went for some very dubious uh, line in, in the Slav Gambit. And just it worked out for him so beautifully. And then I sometimes wonder. Yeah. Yeah, it's very difficult to to understand. Yeah, that uh, how much was it prep? How much was feeling? Yeah, because yeah, Magnus has incredible feeling, of course, for all these all these things. But also, this is a very complex line. Yeah, I remember that now some new theories, ninety five, and then they play h five or something like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. h five also exists. Yeah, yeah. Dubov was doing this, I believe. We, we we must have seen some some blitz games here on the stream also yeah with Dubov takes takes h4 we definitely have seen this yeah yes exactly I think even against Dingli then there was some Dingli then Dubov in the maybe the very first Magnus tour in, yeah. in 2020 yeah it it featured this yeah I mean your 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 memory is absolutely astonishing yeah, yeah. no okay I'm uh, you know I feel like uh, the, this tour is you know. <sighs> I have been covering it right from the beginning, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. very personal. We have, I have a very close connection with the tour, so all these games are. Sometimes I'm mixing up in which tournament did mm -hmm. it happen, but I I basically keep track of things. But you know, I covered most of those tournaments, but in German. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I heard with with Jan, yeah, but with, you guys with Jan are and talking also with... so much uh, outside of chess. Yeah, you might not be, you know, into all the motifs of the games. Yeah. No, we, we, we were all over the place also with Sonia Bloom. I mean, of course, we covered the games, but we also talked about a million other things. We even had this really funny case when I was doing commentary with Sonia Bloom and we got uh, we got uh, uh, an angry customer. We got an angry customer. He was like demanding that we strictly stick to, to chess in the <laughs> commentary. And then we just sent him to you. 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but but <laughs> I think that's the point of having different uh, streams. Yeah, that everybody has his own, uh, you know, feelings or, or his own emotions. Yeah, how how thing, how he does things. Mm-hmm. And then it's beautiful, yeah, because if everybody would try to do in the same spirit, it would not be interesting. Well, no, nobody's quite like you, yeah, so that's quite unique. Yeah, I like finesses, yeah, you, you like checkmate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and rookie one played by Magnus. I mean, okay, I have never seen this. Okay, I'm not an expert in this line. I have never played this with any color, but I, I don't recall this ever happened. So Tadeas is our reference. Wow, no, Atarias is highlighting that Anish might be in for a sixth loss in a row. Okay, he has a terrible position, but he can yeah. make a draw at any moment, no? No, 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 is no. Is he no, allowed no. to offer a draw? I don't know, but basically I have noticed in this tour that there aren't this kind of, you know, forgiving draws or whatever. Uh, the, the players, whoever gets the upper hand, tries to use do the maximum and probably because it's not counting for rating yeah so there is no pressure on the players but ah, yeah, by the way no draws before move 30 or 40 uh, it's, it's some some probably, rule. It's probably 40 yeah but it's also it doesn't look like a position which is an automatic loss to me yeah but i mean all these weaknesses i mean it's a horrible king's indian of course it's a bad position but the horrible yeah. king's indian is still a king's indian no but now the bishop is traded already yeah, maybe knight, knight d5, the knight. Ah, oh, knight d5, king h8, I know. Yeah, okay. And then we double rookie two, rook f1. Okay, I will not tell you, you know exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, and we get the confirmation it's uh, move 40. There is a draw rule that you can't, of course, there are sometimes repetitions. You you can't do anything, but you can't offer draw till move 40. So, okay, this, this looks horrible, and I don't see. Anish bouncing back also. He's not putting any pressure on the clock. So it's just uh, a very sad situation. What about Magnus? The rookie one, Liam opted for g6 and knight g5, queen d7, just simply protecting the pawn now. Well, Magnus can always take and play b3, right? To make it a gambit and to make it a positional sacrifice. Yeah, but he lost some time with rookie one. Yeah, just to highlight. Yeah, for example, knight e6, queen e6, b3. For example, we take c, b, a, b, bishop g7. And I was thinking maybe knight c4. Yeah, it, it happens because there, there is nothing. But I'm not sure after losing the previous game and then getting this position, I'm not sure Magnus is so happy now. Also, three minutes behind on the clock. He's also like the only one, I think, of the, the modern top players who habitually sacrifices pawns for not very much. Yeah. Yeah. Now, black has very easy development. Uh, white is counting on his two bishops. We do see the evolution bar seemingly, if, if it's working correctly, says that it's 0-0, zero, zero, nothing is happening. But, I mean, I can't really imagine white being better. But normally e4, d4, right? And then push... If he didn't play nice e4, so probably e4, d4 is his idea. Yeah, e4, d4, because also black might be aiming towards the b4 square with the knight. So e4 makes perfect sense. I, I'm only not sure in which move order, because e4 might allow c5, yeah? And then yeah. Who knows, I might regret. Exactly, the Grunfeld spirit, yeah? Suddenly e4, c5. Mm-hmm. But okay, it's also just the beginning of the knight b5. I mean, we don't have the a2 pawn, yeah? So the rook is in... Now suddenly, suddenly you are attacking my pawns in a very awkward way. Yeah, yeah not not in the usual way. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's nice. Yeah, maybe maybe then e4, d4, yeah. And then somehow white gets compensation. This is what I understood when I heard about this, that uh, some people started playing these handicap matches against computers, yeah? That uh, you get two pawns advantage or whatever. But the trick is that you are so unfamiliar with the situation. Yeah, the, the, the chess game changes completely. Yeah, because new rules uh, come to life, mm-hmm. and uh, the computers are always making sense that aha, I don't have the F pawn. Okay, great. I'm gonna make you on the F file or something. Yeah, it it get, creates a completely different atmosphere. Well, I mean, I once seen a, a blitz match between two top players. So White was giving the odds of the A2 pawn, and I realized, yeah, this A2. Pawn is is not a bad pawn to to not have. 
just kind of a good reasons basically but you say two top players i don't want to ask their names but uh, was it during this grand chess too yeah or it was how... during grand chess too. i also don't think it's it's, a, it's a, such a huge secret i think uh grishuk was white mm -hmm. and nvl was black it was a very interesting match um because this is what i heard yeah i never been to a grand chess tour event but usually the players won the tournament finishes they have very familiar atmosphere they are spending good time together so it fitted very well to to this occasion yeah no i i, I remember enjoying the the setting yeah but okay there are tournaments and tournaments some places they had the setting some players some places didn't yeah. mm -hmm. it didn't happen all the time no it's not like one big endless party yes yeah, and okay, we reached the position that we, we talked about. Yeah, this e4, d4 pawns. Yeah, if it needs to compensate for the loss of a pawn. Also, what Liam is doing makes a lot of sense. Yeah, rook fd8, knight e8, opening up the, the bishop diagonal, putting some pressure on d4. And so but yeah, knight... now it's uh, kind of the, the situation more or less clarifies. Yeah. But he, is he going knight d6? What do you think? Or does he want to go rook d7, rook d8? Yeah, somehow I was thinking that rook d7, but the queen on e6 is a bit strange, yeah? Um, I mean, yeah. I thought rook d7, rook e8 would be very natural to put pressure on d4 pawn. Complex stuff. I don't know. It's actually an, an interesting thing. Uh, like somebody uh, started this topic in the chat. Do you think we will have a player in in our in the next, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 years who will be obviously more dominant than Magnus is now and will be stronger than Magnus is now? No, not really. I... I mean, we, we but, always... but if you would have asked me before Magnus, I would have also told you that no, it's it's just impossible in modern chess. Yeah, and we see that uh, what Magnus is doing. I yeah, mean, I could just... I could ask you in '95 if anybody would ever be stronger than Kasparov, and you would say no, and you'd probably say the same in '72 for Fisher, right? And every yeah, time it would be wrong. Exactly. I mean, it's just so unimaginable. Yeah, because okay, Magnus sets the the standards so incredibly high. It's uh, not just his results. I mean, uh, his the, this overall picture, yeah, that how he approaches the game, how he controls the game, how he converts, uh, how much opening knowledge he has, yeah, not only move pen, move knowledge, yeah, it's uh, he understands all the positions, yeah, he knows everywhere what to do. At the same time, he knows also how the computers are treating this position. He's, he's just in in an insane level, yeah. It's very hard to. To understand this and that's why i was you know shocked that he's ready to give up on his title like this because honestly it's so difficult to imagine anyone beating him in a match yeah he's just so well prepared he, and so came, used to he, all this tension he came close to losing his character he came close to losing his fabi yeah but after that he got stronger yeah that, that's uh, that's what i mean exactly yeah. after the fabi's match I felt like, you know, from 2019 that his preparation level uh, got extremely high. I, I wasn't that impressed with uh, Magnus' mm. preparation before uh, before the Fabis match. But after the Fabis match, because probably so much work has been in, done and, and so on, I felt like, yeah, he reached some incredible high level. But it's an interesting statement. Yeah, yeah. If you're right, that would mean that the chess is at its highest right now. You're basically saying chess players will not get any stronger in the next decades, yeah, which is interesting because chess players have until now always progressed, right? Um, yeah, always. Yeah, I mean, simply computers are getting stronger and stronger. The, the young generation is, of course, working with these supercomputers already from very young age, yeah. So he's, uh, I mean, they are getting used to the way how compute the supercomputers are thinking, yeah, because. I believe that for our generation, the trick was that we were still working with engines and computers, which were just way too weak. Yeah, so we didn't get all the benefit from the computers. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also very happy that we had this period when we were reading the informator, yeah, the informant with all these highlighted novelties and everything. It was like the Bible. Then we knew exactly 
those are the informations that you have to know and analyze. Now in, in modern chess, there is just way too much information. Also. Yeah. No, but they have also other advantages. Uh, they have uh, tools that we didn't have, not just the engines, but also other tools. I mean, uh, you have online, you have every day, if you want, you can solve 500 tactical puzzles online, uh, something that you did not have when you were 12. Yeah, and also this option, yeah, as you said, yeah, online play against very strong opponents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this did not happen before. Yeah, I mean that that too you didn't have. Yeah, so they have not not just having engines to analyze with you. They have other um, options that we just didn't have uh, to to work on uh, on the chess. And uh, I I just wonder. Yeah, I mean I wonder. It sounds to me like you're right. It sounds to me you cannot get much stronger than Magnus. But then again, uh, we we would think the same about Capablanca. Yeah, yeah that's that's absolutely true. I mean, uh, I think we are in a very, I mean, in front of a very interesting uh, period. Yeah, that all these incredible youngsters are coming. They are so young, but already so good. Yeah, this is also. I think the coaching is not different. I mean, it haven't really been that. Uh, so many incredibly strong players are already into coaching and mm -hmm. supporting all these young players. There is also more and more sponsorship supporting these young players. I mean, this is all unimaginable like 20 years ago. Yeah, it's it's a completely different situation. Speaking of a different situation, we should come back to, to this game. Yeah, because... Yeah. also the situation is changing. Yeah, Black is going A5, A4, fighting against the beastly pawn, fighting for the C4 square. Now White is going H4, H5. Okay, H4, H5 looks like an absolutely empty shot to me in this position. And uh, can I go like AB and Knight C4 and start cleaning up? Yeah, well, the big question is after ABC. Okay, probably Rook BC is thematic. Mm -hmm. Knight BC4. Yeah, and then the, the where does this lead us? I mean, it seems like you are perfectly fine, and uh, the only question is if White is able to equalize or not. I think this is a big question, yeah. I think why it yeah. will suffer. Exactly. Yeah, Liam is taking his time. He's up on the clock. This is what we noticed, yeah, that Liam is very efficient with his time management. Yeah, he's in general also very... I, I know him well from Asian tournaments. We used to play all sorts of things, uh, Asian team championships, Asian games, and uh, he's a very, very practical player. Uh, if he sees a good move, he'll make a good move. Yeah, he will not. Um, he will not hesitate. Yeah, and usually he plays things that he knows and feels very well. Yeah, this is also uh, super important. As I think, especially in, in rapid time control. Yeah, that. And in general, his end game technique is is very good. So yeah, concentration very, very good. level. Every, yeah, mm -hmm. is. Uh, I talked to him in uh, Hangzhou in two thousand nineteen. We had a bus drive to the opening ceremony or something, and I I told to him that I have been following you and and so on, and I feel like you are very close of being absolutely on equal terms to fight against the the top ten guys. And uh, ever since I'm keeping an eye on him, and I'm very happy to see that uh, the, this feeling actually did not betray me. It's it's really true. Ah, he's. I mean, we 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 and like on my continent, we knew this always. In fact, I remember like 2010, 2000, that, that, that time when he was uh, growing into a top player, basically people around me, they thought he was more or less an ideal player, like there was nothing that he couldn't do. Uh, but then, okay, he went to study and, and, and whatnot and um, slowed down a bit. Yeah. Now we'll see if he will again you know, pick up his rise to the top. Yeah, I think he won two consecutive head of lot opens, yeah? Yes, yes, that was uh, also yes. sort of unimaginable. Exactly, also twice qualifying to the Dortmund uh, mm -hmm. Super Tournament, gaining experience, yeah, it's and th that's it. Now it's on the board, yeah, ABC, Rook BC, Knight BC, 4. I wasn't exactly sure, that's why I stopped. That how do we equalize with White? I think it's not, I think White will need to take on C4 and then... Uh... I, I was not sure about e5, but this looks risky. And d5 doesn't work, yeah, I think. Yes, d5 somehow never works, yeah? Then mm -hmm. you, you simply take on d5. 
Yeah, and you can even just take on A3, yeah, and there is really nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah plus you also in emergency cases have this queen f5 yeah. motive, but also taking on a is possible. Yeah. I mean, Magnus, B5, yeah. Yeah, okay. He he knows that he needs to draw the game somehow. I mean, get rid of it and get ready for the fourth game, but uh, he needs to hold it. It it won't yeah. be so simple. Well, takes, takes knight a3, bishop a3, queen g4. I mean, he will suffer. He will suffer, yeah. And also this h5 might backfire. Yeah, opening up the h file. No, I, I didn't think... I didn't I did say that, you know, I don't I don't see what this pawn is doing on h5. Yeah, yeah. I think this was a complete waste of time and effort. Yeah, takes takes and okay, for example, this knight a3 and I mean uh, Liam has chances. Yeah, yeah, I think bishop a3 once uh, queen g4, bishop d6 e d once um Magnus lost some such structure against Grishuk. Um uh, maybe with slightly different piece uh placement, but the structure was very similar. Yeah, well, I mean after d5 Liam opts for knight takes a3 immediately, might still lead to the same position. I mean his plan is to take on d5 with a rook. Yeah, probably. I like mean just to keep the construction, yeah. Mm -hmm. Magnus taking his time. So is rook takes AC also a move? I mean, bishop AC looks more natural. I think rook A3 is also a move, yeah, because after say C D I can exchange on A8, take on G7, and take rook D5. Maybe just the sheer uh, mass of exchanges will just make it a draw somehow. Because I think here White has a very nice position. I mean, with queen b2 check coming, yeah, e4, e5 eventually yeah. at some point. No, I don't think white could lose this one. Mm -hmm. And also, suddenly the h5 pawn makes some sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think maybe Liam should have taken on d5 first. Because that would make it impossible to recapture with a piece. Yeah, it's a bit puzzling, yeah, that uh, why he did not take cd5 first. It is possible that he wants to keep the c pawn, yeah. Let's say uh, bishop a3 and some move like you know queen c8 or some such thing. Yeah, but for the moment it's difficult to decide. Yeah, what what to take. So we are waiting for Magnus mm -hmm. to make up his mind. He has six minutes versus eight minutes, two minutes advantage. Just a quick update on Arjun Erigashi against Anish Giri. There is no comeback in sight. I mean, this knight on f4 is. Wonderful in this endgame, and Anish needs to win, but White is the one who is pressing. And Wesley is controlling and dominating, in fact, winning now. Bishop h7 check will be a big. Ah, in fact, Bishop h7 check is unavoidable, right? Somehow. Yeah, King h2 is coming. And uh, if Queen takes d4, Bishop h7 check wins the exchange, for example. Yeah, King h2 on the board. Only with g6, but okay, g6 is, uh, yeah, g6 on the board. Yeah, I thought queen c3 and then rook f3 basically clinches it. Also maybe catches the queen in the process. Exactly. Yeah, just queen c3, double attack, hitting the bishop. Bishop b5 would be so-called only move, but it's not enough. Rook f3 traps the queen. Game over, and it might be another 3-0 massacre. Is is that true? Yeah, that it, is it true. will be a, yeah, Shakriya is suffering from this, this night session. Yeah, Queen C3 on the board. Look at, look at Shakriya's face. Yeah, very disappointed. I mean, he knows that this is not his standard. And the game between Arjun Arigaishi and Anish Giri finished. There was just no hope for Anish to, to bounce back. And then he agreed to repetition. Mm -hmm. And Arjun, knowing that it's enough to win the match, he also agreed in a better position, which leads us to to two matches which are very interesting and Magnus still taking after Knight AC just to highlight how complex and difficult it is to, to decide here what to do. And Duda, can we just quickly look at Duda because isn't this pawn on A5 hanging? Yeah, he's again enjoying this position. This pawn is hanging, why is he not taking it? Good question. Maybe he thinks it's not running away or 
No, the the point is the night just came. I mean, he makes sure that he has seven minutes forty seconds on his clock. I mean, why is he thinking now? Yeah, I would grab this ball and before it runs away on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hard to say. Yeah, where is the? I mean, ninety five, night D three or what? Yeah, but I thought ninety five, night D three, ninety three, rook C two is a cemento, no? Yeah, this is cemento. Yeah, this is. I mean, <laughs> this construction is the cemento. Yeah. Wow, I don't know why he's thinking. 95 played on the board. Computer agrees. Yeah, 95 played and night busy. Just. Still, okay, black has this knight d3, then bishop moves back to e7 and to f6. Yeah. Maybe this is some hope. Yeah, targeting the b2 pawn, but maybe the a pawn just marches. I don't know. You never know these things. Besides, yeah, because, you have rook d2 here, yeah? Yeah, rook d2 you also have, but maybe he wants more, yeah? Yeah, is... he might want more, yeah. Wow, Magnus, let's get back to Magnus, because Magnus actually did play your move, rook takes a3, and after cd5, rook takes a8, rook takes a8, he goes for this stunning e4, e5 move. What is this? Um... What a move, spending all his time, he's done to 3 minutes 20. Bit dangerous now he's playing a dangerous game Night yeah but at the same time also it's a super ambitious move i feel yeah that he basically wants to get the maximum maybe out of this opens up the bishop, bishop e5 yeah rook e1 rook e2 rook e2 hang on because okay bishop takes e5 queen f6 looks like everything is under control mm -hmm. Come on, okay, Magnus will want to play rook e1, I guess, and rook a2, yeah? No fear. No respect and no fear. Oh, is this some... Cannot be, yeah? The queen c7, rook b2, queen d8, king g7, h6. Doesn't work, no? King takes h6, I don't see how it could work, no? Yeah, no, this doesn't work. No, rook a2 is just very strong. Yeah, so after bishop takes e5. Ah, oh, bishop e5, bishop d5, and then uh, and then use the pin, right? Bishop e5, queen e5, a g. Oh, wow, yes. It's so easy to just stop here that, okay, no, this is not the way. There is a monster knight on d6, yeah? Protecting everything. But yeah, bishop e5, queen e5, a g, a g, queen g6. Yeah, queen g7. Queen g7, and okay, with the bishop on d5 and with this loose structure, you might Just compensate. Just one and claim permanent compensation for the pawn, right? Yeah, then this pawn on b7 won't be able to. Aha, okay, but then it's all the more stunning. Yeah, what did what did Magnus discover? Yeah, e4, e5. Hmm. Okay, maybe Ah, but hang on, our line then with rook takes d5 might run in, might have run into rook a2. No, yeah, but I was going bishop g7 first. Ah, yes, you were taking on g7, and yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah, I'm already losing my mind. But, yeah, I think this e5 comes as a big surprise for Liam. If he wants to be super solid, he can, of course, opt for knight e4, but it's like a bailout. I mean, but he also has some moves, yeah. Queen F, knight e4. Okay, yeah. knight e5 on the board. Of course, it's the somehow, and you know, I intuitively felt like I'm not gonna touch this e5 pawn if Magnus pushed it, but then it wasn't clear what was the point. Uh, luckily, we discovered it. But yeah, knight e4, queen b3, even not, not taking. So putting the pressure like this. Bishop e5, he'll go bishop e4, right? Bishop e4, bishop b2, bishop d5, bishop queen d5. f6, bishop f7, yeah, or something. Yes. Bishop f7, queen f7, queen takes b2, who is enough. Counterplay for a drone. No? Just to highlight this, yeah, that we have this combo. If you take, then I can take. And okay, otherwise it's it was a very important pawn, this f7 pawn. Okay, so queen b3, Liam down to five minutes. I think he is kind of uh, unbalanced by this uh, sequence of moves. Yeah, rook takes a3 and then 
takes and then e5, queen b3. Bishop e5 played, okay. I think it's logical that black goes for it. Yeah, this, this should normally be liquidated into draw very quickly. Which means then we will have a very interesting decisive game four. Yeah, it's uh, we'll this match is heating four. up. We'll have a uh, a game four with an equal score and uh, do and the... Liam having the white pieces. Liam with white pieces and uh, with in do this match we'll also have game four, but uh, as yet unclear with what score. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's still yeah. Bishop takes e four now on the board so. We are expecting bishop b2, bishop takes d5. Queen f6. And now the question that do you include a g6 or, or not? Yeah. I think probably, yes. I mean, it, it wasn't exactly clear. Not that suddenly at some point black will have g takes h5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you have to take on g6. Yeah, I think. But I mean, yeah, bishop takes on f7. I mean, you can still take a g6 uh, after king g7. Because I felt that black will definitely keep mm -hmm. the bishops on the board. Trying to get bishop d4 and hit this f2 pawn. Do we have some rook dc, rook f3? Typical stuff or not? I mean, we can't have rook d3. I mean, black, black can always take on f7, yeah? But rook d3 makes sense. Yes, just to signal that I know what you want. Yeah, you want bishop d4. I know what he did last summer. <laughs> exactly. And I still know what you did last <laughs> summer. Yeah, That's, exactly. Uh, I know. I know the classics. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. King G seven. And all these final destinations, and I mean all all kinds of things. Yeah. Those, those were those were the days. Yeah. A G A G on the board. I and mean, this was this final destination movies they were so incredible yeah they were so stupid but also so watchable at the same exactly. time exactly <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that's how i felt you know yeah bishop d5 bishop d4 some incredible bishops but at the moment black's bishop is the one who is eyeing the f2 pawn yeah that's I mean, that's the weakness to be objective white is under under pressure, right? Because he has no time. He's pawned down. He still has to prove this, right? Yeah, queen f3, of course. Yeah, he has to trade the queens because if black could trade and push the pawn to b4 and get bishop to c3, it would be playable. But right now, if black trades the queens, then the bishop on d4 and the pawn on b7 hangs. And if he takes bishop f3, rook d8, then white has rook e1, yeah, to keep control. Ah, that's actually... Kind of a very nice resource, this rook d8. Because now bishop b7 is impossible due to bishop takes f2, the pin. And rook e1, rook d7, yeah. And rook e1, well, rook d7. And you you keep all right, okay. The, this isn't over yet. No, this isn't over. I mean, with two minutes, it's still what white could get into some sort of stormy waters. Yes, by the way, also just very quickly to jump to Prague because there is some very interesting intrigue. Yeah, after Rook AC1, we, he lost the pawn, he was counting on Bishop CC, and then Duda strikes with Knight D6. Very nice little tactic in uh, tactics in this end game. And Rook. after Rook D8, he'll take Knight F7. Yeah, he. Yeah, and that should win. Yeah, black will probably go king f7, bc, b3, but this should not be enough. Yeah, this pawn is actually not going anywhere. But hang on, knight f7, bishop e1, knight d8, bishop d2. Knight c6. Ah, no, bc and then cb. Black, there is a uh, back rank is no, issue. There is no luft. Yeah. There is no luft. Uh, how can you play without luft? You need luft. luft yeah, you need luft. I mean, everything's device. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we all know the champion's chess tour is is sponsored and backed by Ertings devices and you see why we need it. Yeah, the, the king is in trouble. Wow, that's it. Then then Duda is taking the lead again and Prague will need to bounce back. All right, so all intrigue right now in the Magnus Carlsen versus Liam Le match. Liam goes look the eight immediately the same idea. But in a worse version because now I can take queen f6. 
Bishop and you F3. are forced to take with a bishop, yeah? Bishop f3, yeah, and you're forced to go like rook b8, although maybe this is not the end of the world because rook b8 and then boom, boom, you push. But yeah, I mean, the, but rook d7, rook b7, and puts an end to the boom, boom, no? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is, that is true. Yeah, so what we are talking about is bishop f3. Now, if black trades the rooks, then, then okay, the b pawn is nothing. So rook b8 would be logical, and then rook d7, b5, rook b7 is forcing the trade of rooks. And then it should be an elemental though again. So let's take a look. Magnus, all eyes on Magnus. He needs to save this game and then go for the fourth game with a tight score. And we might be in for an incredible match. Yeah, it, it might also get to playoffs. Anything is possible here. I mean, the, the most dangerous thing for Magnus is losing this one now, yeah, with his one minute and and a exactly. bit shaky, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of shaky. Yeah, okay. Takes takes bishop f3. This this line will be blitzed out. Yeah, rook d7, and, and it's a draw, yeah. Yeah, very important. As mm -hmm. as you said, if, if boom boom comes, then, then it's too late. Yeah, then, then it will be a lot of suffering. But yeah, rook d7 just in time to get away. Wow, actually, yeah, Magnus will be, I think, happy that he he relatively effortlessly saved it because it looked dangerous yeah yeah now he, he basically uh, he was saved by the bell uh, basically yeah i don't even think that black really believes that he can try anything yeah it's uh, king e2 or maybe f okay wh whatever i mean you just can't make a mistake here yeah this one is a is a dead draw uh, and they both know uh, they just King e5, bishop e4. Yeah, Magnus is setting up the, the blockade on the b1 square. He says, okay, no matter, you can push b3, b2, but I'm going to go king e2, keep the bishop on the diagonal, and you have no way of ever breaking this construction. Ah, he even walks with the king to b1. Thank you very much. Cement. That is true. That's, that's true, yeah. Wow, okay. Very important save for Magnus. We should be also very happy because this match promises to be a spectacle. And uh, let's jump over to do the against Prague. Well, this did not change. I mean, Prague will need to bounce back in the in the fourth game. Duda. Impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah Duda, that is... Um... It's very rare that you have somebody who is so good, so dangerous, but also so resilient in lost positions and with zero time. I mean, he seems like uh, like a really gifted player. Yeah, in this, I think uh, this this tour 2022 is uh, is incredibly impressive. I mean, he has won uh, many events, but also his the, the overall picture. Yeah, it's uh, that that he's making giant steps forward. That, that's yeah. That, that's what is impressive the most. He had bad candidates, but he also he played a role. Yeah, I mean, he was the one who somehow finished Fabio off. Uh, in that yes, Italian. and he 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 had yeah because Fabio yeah that's it uh, plug designed. Uh, Fabio was in a very aggressive mood in that game. Yeah, he he really mm -hmm. put everything into that game, and then Duda was able to punish him. It showed uh, really high class there as well. That's it. Yeah, Prague is trying to figure out what happened. We can also maybe just very quickly take a look because they already played the second game in this line. Yeah, it's a, it's a big theoretical debate in the Catalan with c6, knight e5, bishop b4, check. And this fashionable line, e3, b5. The point being that knight takes c6, knight c6, bishop takes c6, bishop d7, takes, takes, is a very dangerous compensation. Yeah, we actually, we'll probably have a bunch of interviews coming. Yeah, we'll probably need to... Ah, okay, okay. To Let's keep an this. eye on the interviews. I think so, yeah. There, there is a lot of movement. Yeah, there is a, a tremendous amount of movement. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, so far we have only seen the, the playing hall, but uh, now suddenly we also see some other areas. Yeah, maybe, maybe not yet, yeah. 
Not yet. All right. When, when we have, we will jump right there. And in the meantime, yes. Yeah, so basically, this is considered to be dangerous. Black gets quite uh, good counterplay. So white opt Duda opted for the positional approach with a4. When black gives up the pawn on b4, knight takes c no castles, not knight takes c4 castles, castles, queen c2, and Duda claims that the pawn is not running away. Yes, yeah? so why should I take immediately the knight on e5? Oops, <laughs> this wasn't the wasn't the idea. The knight on e5 dominates black's development. Yeah, the black can't develop the knight because of knight takes c6. So he plays bishop b7, rook c1, and white gets ready for this typical bishop e1, knight d2, and then trying to recapture with the other knight. a5, bishop e1, queen c7, queen takes c4. Yeah, because already black was threatening probably to break with c5. Wow, some very nice fine play by Duda. Yeah, no, he seems ridiculously well prepared in this Catalan. Not for the first time in this tournament. Yeah, he did some, some good job. Yeah, takes... Well, unfortunately, we missed out on the first game. Yeah, we have even have, have time. We have to compare what happened in the previous game. But yeah, DC, Rook, C8, Queen, B5, Queen, C7, Knight, D3. And it already feels like White should be somewhat better here, for sure. Knight, D7, Knight, D2. Maybe black would get more chances if he would just play for a pawn sacrifice. Play knight c6 instead of knight d7 and just play rook b8, rook d8 and just play for the compensation. But anyway, okay, the knight is heading to b3, yeah? Yeah, but I'm not so afraid of this knight. Mm -hmm. Because your other knight is, is not great, no? Okay, it stops knight e5 at least. Yeah, okay, I'll play rook d7, rook d8. I'm not so afraid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand your point. Yeah, Rook BDA, this is also very much your style. Yeah, you always want dynamics. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the bishop on e1 is a dead piece. Maybe yeah, this was more in the spirit. Maybe this was because, because what happened in the game, he lost without any fight. No, he just kind of. Yeah, basically, after knight d2, Rook B8, Queen c4, takes, takes. Yeah, this is kind of capitulation. Yeah, knight c4 and. The a5 pawn is falling. He did not have the chance to play rook a8 because of the tactics knight takes mm -hmm. a5. Yeah, maybe from distance th something was missed by, by Prague, yeah? Yeah, this is yeah, this is remarkably deadly, right? Black cannot even get Put up a fight, back. yeah. Uh, I mean, after rook a8, we can, of course, take the... Yeah, we, we take the bishop. I wanted to ally that takes, takes b home, but then bishop goes back to f8. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, white just takes the, the bishop on c5. So he takes the bishop with the rook, right? And black doesn't even get the pawn on a4. Yeah, yeah and it's it's game over. Yeah, so basically, maybe already before something happened, but here this was clearly a decisive moment that the, this endgame was hopeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so somehow Prague lost con control. And this gives us a chance to maybe let me get that first game to compare because they played exactly the same line. Mm -hmm. I want to see who deviated first. So far, everything the same. Aha, so Prague deviated with bishop b7 now in the second game. But let's see, maybe it's transposition. Ah, a5, rook d1, it was slightly different. And rook a7, e4. Oops. Ah, you don't you have the same feeling, yeah? The dude is just really remarkably well prepared. Well, from judging from these games, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, and, and this is like uh, also in this main line of... Uh, uh, how is the main line in Catalan? Just very quickly to, to show everyone, because this is very important, that if you know the spirit of the Catalan, this, this helps you navigate the positions. Yes, yeah? so for example, this D takes C4, Queen C2, B5, A4, B4... Knight fd2, and I think that after c6, knight takes c4, queen takes d4. It was the game Grishchuk against Nakamura when Grishchuk somehow proved very nicely that the, the, this pawn up position is no fun for black. Yeah, and then if you compare this structure to the structure that we have seen here, it's very similar. 
Yeah, it's a very similar picture and the same assessment, I guess. Yeah, not so much fun for black. Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. always a very the, the c4 square and also b3 square for for the other knight. Yeah, both knights have their own squares. This uh, definitely helps white a lot. So actually, can we just go back to the to the last game for for one second because I had a question which maybe mm -hmm. some of our other viewers also had. Yes, um, when he took. A uh, queen takes c5 on move 21. So basically here, yeah, knight takes yeah. c5 takes. Could he take with the bishop? Well, I mean, in hindsight, everything was better than what happened in the game. Ah, okay. But still, even with knight on b3, this should be some torture. Bishop b6? Bishop b6. And then, okay, we, we trade everything, or should I? But I, I prefer to trade, yeah? Okay, rook c7. Rook c7, okay, I will take this as well, play take, rook c1. Take. Bishop b6. And okay, I torture you here. I don't believe so. You don't believe in this monster bishop? This is a dead bishop. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a monster bishop. I mean, you might be very happy for the moment, but I'm going to play king f1, king e2, f3, e4, and, and this bishop comes to life. Uh, if you if you will make all these moves, yes. But... Yeah, no, it's still a suffering. I mean, look at this gorgeous knight on b3. Oh, your knight is gorgeous. Your, your bishop less so. <laughs> it's not yet <laughs> impressive, but it has some potential. Do you agree? Well, it has some potential, yes. yes. Okay, that, that's why I wanted to formulate like this so that I we, we can agree. But uh, yeah, it's it's never fun with this structure. Yeah, it's this Catalan stuff. Yeah, Kramnik would be super happy and Ulf Anderson would be happy. Yes. Everybody would be still happy with white. But of course, it was much better from black. Uh, by the way, Tadias was highlighting some computer solution. Let me read it again before I tell something wrong. But, okay, this is something like you have to have 3,500 rating points, at least. And, uh, I mean, after knight b3, compute have plays the move queen a7, giving the bishop just like that. And after knight takes c5, you know what? I should have placed my queen to e7. <laughs> okay, <laughs> give us a break. It's just impossible. What is this? Yeah, I guess this is just impossible. But also, you see that I'm not cheating, right? Yes. No, I know that you you I mean if I if I if I said Queen A7, Knight C5, Queen E7, you would start checking me for devices. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even. I would know already. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's it. I know that you are good, but this is impossible. Yeah, it's not about being good, it's just impossible. Yeah, nobody thinks like this. Yeah, nobody yes. thinks like this. Queen A7, Queen E7 is just not possible. No, I mean, okay, this is from other planet, and then apparently there is no way of holding on to this knight. Yeah, slowly I even don't know. Is it Rook c7, rook bc8, or is it knight d7? Yeah, why cannot unpin? Because queen d4, e5 forces you back into the spin. Yeah, it's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is absolutely insane. But it also shows that, yeah, computer chess and human chess is a two completely different uh, thing. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, you know, because of course, every chess player, every top player works with super engines. Yeah, you often have opening repertoires which are based on incredible deep moves and that's why it's so difficult to remember them yeah because every single line that you go very deep with the supercomputer never ends yeah and then okay you have millions of files millions of lines which are so complicated if you haven't repeated before the game good luck uh being able to re uh, to remember all these uh, incredible things that you actually worked out already you might have worked out not necessarily but it's it's a case. Wow, this is this is stunning. Yeah, this is difficult stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so maybe should we have a quick break? Yeah, we have. Yeah, of been... course. Yeah, I think we we sort of exhausted. Uh, yeah, I I also this... feel that it helps us a lot. Yeah, yes. because we are recharging them. We are full of energy and uh, for for the decisive fourth game. Because don't go anywhere. Uh, Magnus Carlsen against Liam is a very tough fight. And uh, Prague has already bounced back one second. Do that today. Uh, he might be doing it again. Stay with us. See you.
just went wrong. <laughs> uh, tough match. What what went wrong? Uh, everything, but um, to mention a few things. Well, in the first game, I was kind of slow, though that was justified. I mean, in the end, uh, I don't know. I had many um, ways to uh, to defend, and uh, I thought what I did is also okay. But it was like I should have defended with a bigger margin. What I did was like very dubious, and finally I, I lost. In the second game, I uh, uh, I mixed up some opening uh, prep, or somehow got nothing, and then I got slightly worse and didn't want to defend either. And then third game, I didn't get uh, anything going. It was just not not really working out for me. Uh, Anish, do you think you're struggling to find your rhythm here a little bit? Oh yeah, well I had the rhythm at the start, so I kind of lost it. Uh, but I think it's good that today we have um, some basketball games, so it's a good moment, opportunity to reset. I don't necessarily have uh, ma major ambitions in terms of uh, results, but I do want to improve my play in the last two rounds for sure. I got some rest, and we hope you finish on a high. Thanks, Anish. Wesley, what a match that was 3-0 against Shark. What clicked today? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, as Shark, I mean, I was just trying to play my best chess. You know, I, I, I guess try to play your, the secret is try to play your best chess, not to think about the result too much. And hopefully things go your way, and that's exactly what happened. It felt like every game you got your kind of position while Shark, you know, he likes a mess on the board. You made sure you shut down all that counterplay. Yeah, I think also, I mean, Shark is a great player, but he's also like snowballing because he's lost his third match in a row today. And it seems like he's uh, losing his form. I mean, also, fortunately, he wasn't able to put that much pressure out the opening. Like, I was getting very playable positions. And... Uh, Okay, he shouldn't have lost the first game, but he made some. He captured the wrong pawn. He should take on a2, but he took on e4 in the first game. That led to his defeat. In the second game, he played rook c4 too quickly, and in the third game, things almost didn't go my way. But I think d5, like d6, d5, what he played was a mistake. But after I could see no losing chances for myself, uh, I think Shaq was just making. Um, playing moves too quickly in critical decisions, but I mean, who am I to decide? <laughs> but I'm very pleased to win, of course, and, you know, very grateful to also, I also want to take the time to thank the organizers for hosting such a wonderful event. As I said earlier, I mean, it's, uh, uh, they really treated the players very well here, and that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to play in this last event and not online. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. Wesley, you're always really kind. And I want to ask you, you mentioned about being here. Uh, is it more fun for you to play such an event, a hybrid eSport chess event on site? Or do you like to play it from the comfort of your home? I don't like playing from home. Because then <laughs> you're just wearing your pajamas and uh, you just barely woke up. You know, your family members are there and, <laughs> and they don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's very lonely playing playing at home because I'm just by in uh, in the room all by myself for the next four or five hours. I, I think it's much better. Also online, you can't be a thousand percent sure about uh, anti-cheating stuff. Like you can't see your opponent. And uh, as we all know, there's a cheating scandal recently. Huh? <laughs> but I, I think over the ball is much preferable because, I mean, in person, because it's much more serious. You feel like you're actually going to work. But I think Chess 24 and the Meltwater have done a great job, uh, you know, we're hosting this event. With everything that happened, as you mentioned, with the cheating scandal, do you think that's always at the back of the mind uh, when you're playing these events, even if you don't want it to be? Well, I think over the board, it's very, very difficult to prevent. I mean, to cheat. I, I mean, over the board, it's super easy to prevent cheaters. You just need uh, to implement the, a few minutes delay. Uh, you need maybe some scanners. You need random check, checking of shoes, of belts. So it's very easy. But I think on online, I don't see how it's possible to be a thousand percent uh, sure. There's always ways. Like, I can think of three different ways how to cheat on this online event. So we don't want to give any ideas. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is that 
you know, uh, but being being good in chess takes many years. So, I mean, well, if you wanna you wanna cheat, it's so much easier. But, yeah. You mentioned that you really enjoy being on site as well because it builds an atmosphere. So, are you enjoying it here uh, with this stunning view? Yeah, certainly. And now uh, winning three matches in a row, things couldn't even be better. And uh, we're staying at this fantastic hotel, and as I'm sure you know, uh, it gives it gives uh, discounts to all the local restaurants nearby. So we've tried. Li My mom and I have tried literally every single restaurant, and we're having a good time. And you know, I'm not over preparing. I'm just relaxing at night. So it's been pleasurable. And uh, you know, we're playing in one of the most fantastic buildings I've ever played in. So it's uh, and you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, I guess, nearby. I, I, I'm a, it's only my third time in third or fourth time in California. I'm not really very familiar. I live in I live in the Midwest, so <laughs> it feels like being in California is a totally different country to me. But uh, you know, I, I love it here. I have had great experience. Um, the people are very friendly. So uh, you know, my, I can understand why Bobby Fisher moved to California. It's so nice to hear, Vasi, that you're having a great time here and enjoying chess, and especially it was a slow start with three big back-to-back -back match wins. Yes, uh, sure. It's yeah. good to see you back on track. Yeah, one thing I must say also is that the format this year is very different. Like in the minors, you have three points for a win, and you get prizes based on how many wins you get. Uh, here also, I guess it doesn't really matter whether you finish second or eighth, as long as you win matches. So, I mean, it's a very interesting form. I wouldn't have thought of this kind of form. It's the first time I've played this, so it's interesting. We're so happy to hear that you're enjoying the format and the place. Uh, Wesley, good luck for the remaining games. Yeah, Thank you. you. Magnus, that one seemed pretty even from the start. Didn't get anything much with White? Yeah, I uh, didn't really get anything. Uh, if anything, I think I got off maybe a little bit easier than I should have. Uh, he was definitely pressing. A decisive game four coming up. You haven't been in this match situation this whole tournament. How are you feeling? Well, I mean, I had a uh, black game uh, against Wesley where it was where I was up by one. But um, yeah, certainly it's um, it's a tough situation and uh, one I have to deal with. Big fight. We love it. All the best. And we are back after these interviews. Uh, yeah, Magnus felt I think relieved. Yeah, because as he said, yeah, this third game was was a bit shaky. Uh, and he's happy that uh, he managed to hold it without much trouble. He will face Nalian with the black pieces in the fourth game. But I think he's he's so much relieved that I don't think that he, he really thinks about... I mean, he just wants to play a good game. Nothing is on his mind. He has already forgotten about the second game defeat. The big question about opening. Do you think that he might try again this Slav Triangle business? Or will he play something uh, more solid like the Nimzo Ragozin? Uh, he'll play something very solid. We've seen this uh, often before. Once the match enters the decisive phases, he got goes into like full solidity mode. Because I don't think he believes he can lose in a blitz playoff. Uh, so basically, he thinks that like a draw is completely fine now. Yeah, I also think that he has no reason to take extreme risk from black side. Just be solid. Look at your opponent. Wait for your opponent how he will approach. Because also Liam might try something which give them Magnus some counter chances. Uh, on the other hand, I also don't feel like Liam wants to burn bridges. After all, uh, getting to a blitz playoff against Magnus, it's already a big achievement by itself. Yeah, usually the fourth game, both uh, parties are very careful. Yeah, yeah you, usually that's how you should do. I mean, I got my lesson after losing all my fourth game in the Legends tournament. I mean, you know, I, I think that it's so much why I was the only one who was really going crazy with, uh, with, with White in the fourth game. I should have uh, paid attention to the format and, and played much more careful, get to the Blitz playoff and then, okay, let's, let's battle. Uh, no, we had the Armageddon immediately and let's battle it out there. <clears throat> now we see this incredible playing hole that Wesley has mentioned in the in, in his interview that he has never been in, uh, never been playing chess in such a fantastic building like this Shack 15. However, he fell for the trap. It's not the Golden Gate Bridge; it's the Bay Bridge. And uh, of course, if you think about San Francisco, Golden Gate is is the is the first thing that comes to your mind. We already have liftoff. 
and we see that Magnus goes for the Bogo Indian. Do you agree? Do you approve okay, this? So it's, a, it's a very solid choice. Yeah, he's just going full oof Anderson style. Bishop b4, bishop d2 check. This is like you cannot be more solid than this. Yeah, this d5. Yeah, this is uh, Magnus's trademark. I think he has played it for the first time against Levon Aronian in the candidates, London candidates 2013, and made quite an effortless draw somehow. But yeah. that wasn't featured with B. I think he played Queen E7 or something. I think B6 is not the Ulf Anderson way. Ulf Anderson way is Queen E7, Rook D8, or C6, yes. Knight BD7. B6 is uh, a sort of mixing it up, mixing different ideas up. Maybe he wants to go Bishop A6. Maybe he wants to go DC, Bishop A6. So. And for example, if White takes CD5, then how do you recapture? I mean, normally it was a knight, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you have to take with a knight. And I don't know, after that, maybe even with a queen. Yeah, knight d5, queen d5. This is the, the this is the modern spirit, yeah. Uh, this is also the, the, the QGD experience, yeah? If possible, you don't recapture with a pawn on d5. Yeah, then you suffer, yeah. This, this structure suffer, is yeah. endless <clears throat> suffering. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, b6 played. Wow, but the problem for... Why it is that if you just play a so-called empty move, a simple move, rook c1, then black plays bishop b7, and it looks like a very healthy, easy position? Or am I missing something? Well, I mean, like cd, knight d5, bishop d3, it's still possible to, to make some but, moves. But now it transposes to some Queen's Indian territory, yeah, I feel. Now it's your territory again. Exactly, yeah. But of, co of course, uh, it's a bit tricky, yeah, because usually there is the dark square bishop on the board. Yeah, it's somewhere like white has a bishop on d2, black has a bishop on e7, which clearly favors black. Uh, rook c1 played. And Magnus has to make up because bishop b7 or bishop a6, yeah, there are two options. Yeah, also bishop b7, for instance, in the line we had, I can take everything and play bishop c4. And then we could be in this Lasker territory, right? All sorts of possibilities. Yeah, Liam actually goes for simple bishop e2. Also maybe possible, he, yeah. Maybe he didn't want to leave the, the knight on f3 hanging, yeah? just in case. Yeah, just to be as solid as possible, he wants to castle, get rook to d1. And after all, yeah, Magnus is the one who has to prove that he will be able to get some knight d7 c5 in, and at the same time, the, the d and c files won't be opening up for white. He he might need to, yeah, he, he needs to be precise, knight d7. Maybe he'll play knight d7 castles and knight 5 f6, yeah? Sometimes. The professional move, yes, exactly. The, this is the move, and then you might try to... No, he goes c5 immediately. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean, I wanted to highlight, yeah, knight 5, f6, then a6, and then get ready for c5. It's very typical. But Magnus goes c5, rook fd1. Yeah, this is tiny, a little bit risky for black, yeah? That now the rooks are on open files. On the other hand, I believe that if Magnus goes for it, it means that he is prepared, yeah? And if you are prepared and you know that those rooks don't do anything, then, then of course, there is no reason to be worried. Yeah, queen e7 played, and I mean, there is very little uh, territory for white to, to find ideas. Yeah, Magnus is probably asking himself why he didn't play like this in game two. Well, because he always likes to provoke, yeah? Yeah, but once he's leading, yeah, he no longer needs to provoke. But maybe winning eight games in a row gets into your head. Yeah, but this is exactly why I said that he needs to be punished. Because in my feeling, it it looks like that, you know, he's trying to make the event as more as interesting as possible. Yeah. So uh, I remember last year, for example, when he won the first game, he was very cynical and he just wanted to shut down the games. Yeah. And he was mm -hmm. very effortlessly doing it, and he was. Uh, basically just sealing his match victory. And now, this year, after winning the first game, he goes for these adventures. Yeah, like against Anish, he gave the chance. Mm -hmm. uh, and today, he also went for this unbalanced position, like to, to try to create as much tension as possible. And I'm very happy that Liam was able to use his chance because now we are in for a, probably a very interesting blitz playoff if this game ends in a draw. And he got your justice. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah, so Queen E7. Uh, do you see some idea, or uh, maybe we should move to the Prague's game because I think Prague the other move. game looks so much yes. more interesting. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's uh, I I think this is heavy theory. Look at this, Duda with 17 minutes on his clock. Yeah, going for these wide complications. I do believe that for the very first time when we were commenting the tour, yeah, 2020, then uh, Wesley's course, uh, Chessable course has just appeared. And he was analyzing it. And then everybody was deferring that, ah, okay, all this co complex stuff. And also young Gustafsson, I think, also had been doing uh, some incredible work on all this uh, stuff. Uh, if if somebody is very interested, can check check it out. Yeah, but maybe already everybody knows it. Who By the knows? way, where is Gusti? Where is uh, he Gusti? hiding? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I I haven't seen him in like forever. I know he went to Bangkok. Yeah, he played in uh, Thailand. I mean, that's that's his favorite. Uh... Uh, he played in Thailand. Didn't play uh, his best chess, from what I read. My figured. Uh, but he probably enjoyed his journey. Apparently, he's streaming in German from his own channel. I miss yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody misses him. I mean, he's uh, such a, such an incredible fellow and uh, brilliant commentator. He has this incredible sense of humor that almost by saying nothing, he says so much. No, it's uh, just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. No, we 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 kind of we did really good work together. Back then, when we had a German channel, um, yeah. And what about this position? Because uh, Jan is not here, I can't ask him, so I have to ask you. Uh, I believe that you have worked on this. Let's let's take it from the beginning, just to understand where all this come from. It's it's this modern Italian main line, which got completely out of control at some point. C3 castles, bishop e3, bishop g4. It used to be considered the forced draw, yeah? But then they found one way of playing, yeah? Well, the draw was not quite forced. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. This bishop a5 line, yeah, this, this is the beginning of this uh, long force procedure. Bishop f3, gf, knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4, queen g5, check. h1 takes... Takes queen f5, this being the point. Targeting the hc pawn, targeting the queen on c2. Look, fc1 is forced, otherwise it's a direct perpetual. Yeah, for example, f takes c4, queen hc check, king g1, queen g4 check, and black keeps on checking. So look, fc1 played. That's the theoretical debate. Check, king g1, knight g5. Bishop e2 has to retreat. You have to cover the fc square, otherwise you get checkmated. Queen h6, a key move. Yeah, I remember that everybody was saying that, yeah, this is the key move because it's so, contra I mean, if, if you don't know it, it's so hard to even guess this move. Seemingly, Black has sacrificed the piece. He wants to uh, force a perpetual or deliver a checkmate. And all of a sudden, the key move on the line is to retreat with the queen to h6, opening up probably some knight hc, knight f4 ideas. So white goes bishop d2. Rook a8 on the board and queen d3 played after some hesitation. Rustam, tell me how much you know about this. Well, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning basically <laughs> from, from you. Um, no, no, I, I didn't reveal any secrets. I was just telling you what I learned during the commentary. Yeah, because there was Vikansy 2021. I believe there was some uh, toddy game against Grandilio, so I, I don't remember already exactly. And there Jan was telling me all these things because I was saying like, come on, what is going on? And he said, no, Peter, just chill. I have covered it. Queen h6 is coming here. And that's when I learned all this. But, that I, but I was there in Waikansai. I don't remember. Okay, you were busy with, with other things, yeah? I was probably busy with other things. Although what these things were is... Uh... It's beyond me. Well, looking at chess, yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. <laughs> this was also this prep for the candidates, yeah, second part. Yes. Dark ages in my life. Yeah, of course. Okay, that that, that one year break, I think, had a tremendous impact on, on everyone. I mean, uh, this was the longest ever, and with all this tension culminating 
I mean, I don't think that I I still recovered from from those those one and a half years. Yeah, this is a strange period. Can we go C six and then take things slowly? Just C six, yeah. Just stabilizing the structure, yeah. I mean, for the the good point is that after Queen D C, it's the first time that Duda is thinking. Does it mean that he's out of book or he's trying to remember the 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 lines? I mean, queen d3 could also be a dubious move, right? Yeah, well, actually, did I start the engine because it's show? Yeah, I think I started, but it stands on zero zero. This always irritates me because uh, I don't know if it's working or not, especially in such crazy position. I mean, I have nothing to add. What, what can I say? Everything is hanging. Okay, let's try. Yeah, so rook takes e5. Let's try rook e5 first. Yeah. Yes, it's the most natural move. What do you do now? Yeah. Well, my first question would be f4. Can I play f4? Knight h3 check. And then queen takes h3. Can I play like this? Queen takes h3. And then f takes e5. Uh, did, did we get closer to clarity, or is it just the being of a total mess? Um, queen f5. I don't think you can play like this with white. Yeah, queen f5 is a problem. I think don't, you would... don't be so harsh. I just sacrificed my queen. Well, I mean, it sounds to me like you did, you did a damn stupid thing, yeah? Should yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, I, I just showed it for, for the public, but uh, I was hoping that maybe you will like the idea. But no. you disappoint. <laughs> But hang on, is, is it so clear? I have rook and two bishops, rook c3, queen takes e5, for example, bishop moves somewhere, bishop f1 or bishop f3, and I'm coming rook e1, maybe even bishop f1, or bishop f3. Okay, bishop I can f3. play c6, rook e1, queen f6. And you think the, the pawns are too, too many, yeah? I think it has too many pawns. Your king is also not 100%. Yeah. I mean, he has four pawns. Yeah. All right, I agree with you, with, with heavy heart, but... But, but I agree. So let's take a look. What are the other options? So rook takes e5. Well, you can go f4 and then move the king. Yeah, like and this is maybe his point. f4, knight h3, king f1. King f1, yeah, not king g2, king f1. Yeah, is the point. Knight takes f4 mm -hmm. and queen f3. Queen f3, yeah. And uh, maybe he thinks, you know, the pins and the uh, bishops. Yes. Yeah, this this is clever. Yeah, this is smart. Yeah, I don't see the follow up. Yeah, Bishop F four is coming. If Black allows it, otherwise, okay. Rook F five. We don't don't want to play. It's it's empty. Um, maybe this is the, he plays Queen H four. Queen yeah? H four. And our bar is alive. Yeah, our bar says hello. I'm here. Don't worry for me. Queen H4, another mysterious move, yeah? Apparently, our line was better than this. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I mean, luckily, the players don't know what, what is best. And we also have no idea. Yeah, very interesting lines. Uh, just a very quick update on the Magnus's game so that everybody understands that why we are focused on uh, on this game. Black has solved all his problems. Actually, Black has nothing to worry about in, in the Magnus' game. The computer even gets slightly excited for Black, yeah, in a symmetrical position, but I still believe that this, this should end in a draw. Maybe e5? Yeah, e5 is the is e5 is the question. E5, knight f5, queen f6, and maybe this is tactically interesting. I wonder that why did Liam allow all these things? Well, you know, life is difficult. Yeah, it's it's strange. And Magnus is, of course, so incredibly good in these structures. Yeah, just, I mean, he makes so-called natural stabilizing moves. And then suddenly it turns out from symmetrical stuff, he gets chances with black. Wow. But yeah, I, I still believe that we, we should go back to the other game because it looks very interesting. Yeah, the other game looks very sharp, yeah. Yeah, queen h4. I mean, what is this queen h4 compared to the other line? Yeah, for example, now f4, knight h3, check, king g2. 
Well, one thing is you cannot go king f1. Yeah, there's already big difference. Yes. Yes, that's a big difference. By the way, Magnus has opted for e5. Can we get the camera uh, quickly on, on Liam? I just want to see his body language. Do, do we have this chance? Because, I mean, after e5, yeah, there is Liam. Is he getting nervous? He Maybe. Looks, he looks slightly nervous, yes. Yes, exactly. I mean, e5, knight f5. So we are expecting uh, we move. The, the good point is that the complications in Prague and uh, do the game won't run away. Mm. That, that but but here we have direct action. So your intuition was queen f6, right? Yeah, because you... I thought uh, we need to keep the d8 to exactly. defend it. Yeah, so. yeah, very important. And like this, you are the one who is putting the pressure on the mm -hmm. on the file. And the big question, for example, can I liquidate with rook d1 or not? But probably not. With rook d1, I win a pawn, right? Queen f5. Yes, four, and then you will G6. have e4 at the end. Yeah. Queen g6, for instance, ed, e4. Exactly, yeah. This is the problem, yeah. This this, this what I disturbs me. Queen g5. Queen g5 yeah. Yeah. Okay, very similar idea. He wants to make sure that he will have g6 at all costs, yeah? But it, it is different, right? Because white could now make other moves like g4, for instance. Wow, no. g4 in a, in a decisive game when... So much at stake. There's so much at stake. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, the, the players are fighting for seven and a half thousand dollars plus the plus the owner. I mean, Liam has the chance to stop Magnus. He already stopped him from, from his winning streak, but there is even a chance to win a mini match against Magnus. I mean, I think that uh, automatically you get excited. For instance, after queen f6, knight g3 would not be possible, I think. Because after queen f6, knight g3, black has um, knight f4. And then knight takes h3 is coming yeah. and there is no e takes f4. Yeah, yeah with well, the queen on g5, knight f4 fails to... e f4. e f4. Yes. I mean, okay, e f4, maybe one can still continue the line with e takes f4, but... One might, yes. In fact, it doesn't even look that stupid. Yeah, it's... Uh, but, but, I mean, a bit strange. Clearly a bit strange. I mean, white also has some h4 moves. I mean, there is so much to, to calculate. H4, queen h4, knight f5, queen g5. Yeah, it just gets out of control. Then white will be able to take on d8, take on b7. I don't know what is it. No, it's difficult to imagine Black actually going for this. Yeah, yeah but Magnus goes for it. We, we will be entertained. Yes. Magnus goes for it, and, and he's four minutes behind on the clock. So basically, the move knight f4 is a very ambitious move. He, he counts on this move that it might give him chances. Interesting, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's very very daring, yeah, because he has to be completely sure that his tactics are well calculated. And look at finally, Liam also showing some emotions. Usually he is so calm, so relaxed, but uh, he also knows the tension is growing. Things are out of control. Finally, what a game for! Interesting, yeah. It never looked like it will get sharp. Yeah, from this opening, yeah, it looked like, okay, Magnus solves all problems, shake hands, uh, I mean, uh, liquidate everything, and the blitz playoff is coming, and now I'm not sure at all that white is so comfortable. Yeah, now we need to calculate. So queen d8, queen d8, bishop b7 is probably not it, yeah, because black will go queen d7. I think white will lose a piece. Yeah, to highlight that fg3 would be a mistake because of rook c8, but yeah, this this was the problem, that black has queen d7. Hitting the bishop. Yes, it's so hard. I, I don't see how white can save yes. his, his Yeah, this doesn't, doesn't work. So that's why the idea came that maybe with h4 we can destruct and then get the knight to f5 and then try similar things. We, we did not have the chance to finish it, so let's just Go through this h4 takes knight f5, queen, queen retreats to g5. Still, 
all our pieces are hanging. Yeah, I don't see how to keep material. Of course, we can go knight takes h6. Mm -hmm. Knight h6, g8, queen e2. And yeah? queen e2, yeah, and, and then try to defend, yeah. But I don't know if this is a, if this is a draw or if this is suffering. H4 played, and we might be seeing it because after all, this would be more or less safe for white, yeah, in a, in a, in a game which is so important for the match. This would be basically a good bailout of all these complications. And the other one that I mentioned is Queen Sacrifice. Uh, I think it's good for black. I don't like it for white, but just to highlight yeah, that takes, takes, bishop takes b7 is a possibility, but uh, still this knight on f5 is a bit strange. I yes, was worried. Um, queen d2, yeah. Black yes. probably will create a lot of problems for white. Exactly. I mean, rook c8 check is one check, king h7, and now we can't even play bishop e4 due to queen e1 check. Mm -hmm. But anyway, also g6 is coming, and this knight is, is somewhat trapped. Yeah, so I believe, yeah, queen takes h4 played that Liam will have to go for this knight takes h6 operation. And he also has uh, queen b4 didn't work, right? B4 because um, bishop f3 and queen g5, yeah. And then queen g5, yeah, just, just to highlight this, yeah, that this pin on the fourth rank, very interesting defense, but unfortunately it fails to take stakes queen g5 and there is the pin. So, yeah, knight f5, queen in g5 and the moment of truth... Everyone hold on to their seats. Now it's the question. Will White be able to hold on to this position or he gets into trouble? Rustam called out knight h6 and I support his, his discovery. Yeah, I mean, normally it should be enough for, for White, right? This... Uh... Uh, the, the slightly vulnerable black king should uh, should make the difference. Yeah, we are using the moment that the, the queen is defending the rook. So the, the queen can't recapture the knight, then we, we can take the rook. So black has to capture with the pawn. And then we move queen e2, protecting the bishop. And we have a good structure. I mean, hard to believe. On the other hand, the h-pawn is missing, so... We, we, we have to pay attention, but it should be fine. Yeah, I thought maybe like bishop c8 now and then bishop e6. Keeping the tension. Keeping keeping the pieces, keeping the tension, keeping the pawn. Yeah, bishop on e6 is, is, is of course a nice bishop because uh, the, the pawns are, might be vulnerable on the queen side. I mean, not yet, but, but in long terms. Yeah, even some end game could be, could turn out to be dangerous for white. I don't see why computer is saying that it's uh, zero zero. Yeah, it's uh, it looks like there is some pressure on why. I mean, computer does live in its own world. Yeah, as we have established. That's that's for that's for sure. And yeah, Liam is taking his time. It's uh, so much at stake, and uh, of course, he wants to get some stability. Yeah, he's he's regretting his ambitious play. Or I don't know if it was ambitious or not. I mean, or or maybe careless. Maybe it was, yeah, knight h6 played, g takes h6, and we might be seeing queen e2. I don't believe that you want to go, no, queen c3, you, you can't. Queen c3, rook c8, you probably don't yes. want to. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, then already you have to sacrifice the queen, but this is not. Queen e2 and bishop d5 blitzed out by Magnus. What a move. Bishop takes d5, runs into f3, or... Oh, that's too much. F3, bishop takes F7. And then king G7 or something. Queen F1. Yeah, maybe this, no, maybe this isn't the idea. I think the idea is just bishop D5, queen D5 and centralize. Ah, but then queen G4, check. I mean, okay, probably also confusing your opponent, yeah? Because, okay, after bishop D5, Good luck calculating all these bishop takes d5 fc lines. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
<clears throat> even my voice disappeared yeah there is there is tension well of all people you should not be tense you're not playing yeah but i mean okay i i know exactly that uh, okay it's uh, the fourth game i i hit uh, you know i i know how much it hurted me to to lose stupidly all these fourth games and i mean i don't wish anyone this feeling wow we are also getting the message that prague stabilized his advantage let let's go back here quickly so after queen d3 queen h4 Tade has already mentioned us that this wasn't the the best move according to computer and prague apparently has find the way to navigate the jungle bishop f1 rook e5 rook takes e7 fearless absolutely fearless knight h3 check takes takes queen f1 yeah this bishop on d2 protecting the g5 square queen f3 queen g2 queen h5 rook takes b7 because everything is under control let's collect some pawns and the rook might also come back uh, via b3 to g3 if black tries to go rook e6 rook g6 yeah it's probably also necessary right rook e6 or rook e4 white will need this rook b3 yes to swing back and then suddenly already black only has two pawns yeah rook e6 on the board rook g3 will be blitzed out i believe there is also bishop f4 bishop g3 idea but somehow i would really love to get that rook back yeah, I think after bishop f4, rook g6, bishop g3, this f5 is in the area. Probably white will not want that. Yeah, or maybe even queen h5 and then h5, h4. I mean, in, in any case, yeah, we don't want to be pinned. This is maybe suddenly, it's premature, but this is our feeling, yeah? This is suddenly martial territory, yeah? This, uh, yeah. yeah, rook b3 is much, much safer. Wow, queen e2 blitzed out by Duda and... Computer screams that there is some tactics here. I would prefer a world in which at least computers don't scream. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the evaluation. Jumped. It jumped heavily. Wow. I mean, if Plug wins this, then we guaranteed one tie break because I'm not sure if the other game is uh, for sure a draw. I mean, we want to see as much action as possible. Apparently, queen takes d5 is the best move. Wow, but this is this is not an easy move. Then I also understand why uh, Duda has tried queen e2, because hitting the bishop, disbalancing this bishop, and queen takes d5. You even need to find it as a candidate move. I think the new generation finds it easier. Yeah, they find it easier. I mean, and also we know that uh, Prax uh, coach Ramesh is an expert in all this calculation uh, um, trainings and so on. And we have seen in Prax games, yeah, that he's very impressive in all this uh, dynamic calculation craziness. He navigates navigates them very easily and effectively. But still, Queen D five. I mean, certainly it wasn't on my mind. But that doesn't mean anything. And okay, just while we are waiting for Prague to decide what is the take on this end game, I mean this end game is looking now very scary for for Liam. Yeah, Black King is coming. He might be even forcing then the trade of the bishops. Yeah, after Bishop d5, this Bishop d5 had the tremendous effect. Yeah, that this Bishop takes d5, f3. Who knows what is it? Liam tried to. Play the lazy approach with rook d1, and lazy approach does not work against Magnus. Magnus grab the chance with bishop a2, takes, takes, queen a6, bishop e6 back, queen takes a7, queen d4. Look at this dominating queen. And then Liam opted for, for trading. Ah, queen in, ah, queen d2. He playing, yeah. He's threatening already queen e1, queen f2. And then queen c3 takes, takes, king g7. I'm, I'm worried that this is lost for white. Yeah, I would never go for a bishop endgame with white. I would go for rook endgame, the queen endgame, the combination of both, but never the bishop endgame. Yeah. I think this and one just, is... a, just a very quick update. Breaking news, or not breaking at all for Rustam. 
Prague did find Queen takes d5, it's on the board. Yeah. I think a more breaking news is that Liam is actually probably just losing, right? Yeah, probably he's I mean, he losing. He should have yeah. never lost this this opening. I mean, this the cemento that he had and yeah, basically also Magnus was was indicating that just as you said, yeah, that he mm -hmm. wants to be as solid as possible. And uh, but yeah, I mean, basically when I see Prague in these complications, it's it feels like the new board order, yeah. That I mean, uh, why am I worried for these kids? Don't don't worry. I already know that for Magnus there is no need to worry because he always finds something. But also this young generation is just very impressive in complications. Oh, that's what they do best, yes. Yeah. Yeah, look, look, G3. I mean, if this bishop lands on C3, it will be game over automatically. I think we're already in the territory where white has a piece and an attack. Because black doesn't have rook G6 because of rook E1, so it's basically just game over. It's game over, yeah, which, which is incredible, yeah, that Duda... With with strategic with incredible strategic skills, beat uh, Prague twice in this Catalan very impressively, mm -hmm. and uh, do and uh, and Prague bouncing back against Duda on demand twice. I mean, sensational stuff. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, if we if we call it that this is already kind of a win, and Duda is down to two minutes less than yeah, two we, minutes, he doesn't believe. We need to get back to the other game. I think yeah, this one is exactly. done. Exactly. Is, is there a chance for white to set up a fortress? Yeah, that's the very big question. I mean, basically, if, if bishop d5, we, we clearly we retreat the bishop to d3. But, I mean, it's so scary with this weakness on no, g4. No, no, you have to go bishop c4, I think. Not bishop d5. Mm -hmm. to, to fix the weakness, yeah? To fix, to fix white's pieces and then go h5, h4. And uh, and then get the king d6 b c5 b5. At some point, white will white will die of tuktuang, I think, somewhere there. Yeah, bishop c2 will have we'll to be played, and then d1, and then after bishop d1 with the king somewhere on b5, I'll go bishop d3. You'll go bishop b3. I'll go f6. You'll go king. E. Yeah, this looks. I mean, so somewhere scary. Somewhere that there is tuktuang, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, with bishop on c2, I will try to play only king e on king f2. Keep keep the bishop on mm -hmm. c2 as long as I can. But then but... I can I can threaten king c4, right? Like I go bishop d5. Exactly. You will go, yeah, with king on b5, you go bishop d5, threaten king c4. And if bishop dc, then king a4, yeah? It's yeah. Uh, two empty squares are available. Yeah, I have a feeling black will slowly, but surely black will infiltrate. Yeah, why tops for bishop c6? So he gets to this diagonal, but it does not change anything. Uh, because Magnus played bishop f5. He does not even want to give, give this diagonal. So Liam is forced to leave. Okay, now bishop e6, c4 will probably get to the end game that we were talking about. Yes. But he, he kept his pawn on h6 for now. I mean, I think it's interesting because just in case in some pawn and game, you still have these extra moves. Extra temp is not that probably it does not matter, but still mm -hmm. it, it might be important at some moment. No, it shows some, some well, generally good school of chess. I believe uh, Magnus is known to do that, yeah. What about this bishop c4? Is there any chance that the the pawn end game does it offer I, I don't trust the pawn end game but yeah bishop c4 played we at least had to mention that before you trade the bishops you have to make sure that the pawn end game is winning yeah i was not 100 percent sure but uh but liam played bishop d1 absolutely instantly so we didn't get the chance to to, to look at this yes Six, i mean eight. i believe everybody would play bishop because this bishop takes c4 is such a strange stuff, yeah. That uh, okay, king d2, you at least you have this king c2, king d2 business, but it does feel that you will be tsuk swung. Probably king, king, king d3, king d3, b5, b5, and then king d4, king c2, and that's it, yeah. And c4, b4, c5, b3, c6, b2, c7, no ha. 
C4 BC, King C4. I King mean, I B4, thought King that G2. I can maybe take BC, yeah, also, and then come to the G2 pawn. King D2, King D4, King E2, King E4, King F2. Yes, you're right. Yes. Yeah, but also, I mean, but it, we, it we is could very then, close. Yeah, King G4. We, we could then argue that maybe first get the pawn to H4. It was not necessary to play, but it should be the winning method. Yeah. Yeah, King G4, King F2. It's still winning, right? King F2, F4, King E3, and slowly but surely Black will... Yeah, we, we keep on following this, mm -hmm. this colleague yeah, on F4. Yeah, so basically we are back to this position that we arrowed, and Magnus, I arrowed Bishop D5, Magnus goes Bishop E6, it's the same idea, King C4, but then there is King E1, King D2 defense. Okay, uh, hang on, but then your setup with Bishop D5, pawn on H4, could actually break with H3, with, with Bishop on D5. It's not clear whether this would be winning, yeah, because GH bishop f3 suddenly white would also have passed pawn and ch chances. Yeah, very tricky. I mean, but, but I, I I believe that the likeliness that black will win this game is is higher than white saving it. I mean, it's just so tough to defend something like this because the. Like you mentioned, yeah, look at games, we all automatically know how to how to deal with yeah in most of the cases, but 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 here it's so so this is so special. Yeah, the bishop endings are usually just losing for the for the defensive defensive side, yeah, or just difficult. Yeah, bishop f5, keeping the pressure now. Bishop this is a is a terrible threat. Bishop e to check had to be played. Now Magnus has the chance to enter to b3 with his king. Enter the void. Yeah, enters. Yeah, bishop d1 check. So king b2 will be played. And normally bishop e2 back. Huh? Bishop e2 back, yeah. And now is the big question that how to proceed. After all, the king on b2 doesn't do that much, yeah? In fact, the king on b2 just doesn't do anything. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe time to go to back, back, yeah. <laughs> yes. But in fact, he, he, he took the square h4 from himself, yeah? But the, the king on h4 also doesn't do anything, right? After king f2. Yeah, exactly. I mean, king h4 always is met by king f2, so... Maybe, in fact, this is less tragic for white than we initially assumed. I mean, this was a game changer that I can saw a plan with king b5, bishop e6. There was king e1, king d2. Yeah, this was very important defense. Yeah, Magnus walks back. And Pragna uh, under one, so we have at least one tiebreak guaranteed to us in 10 minutes. Yes, in 10 minutes, Prague is taking on Duda in the Blitz playoff. What a sensational comeback twice by, by Prague. Amazing. I mean, just uh, showing character, tremendous fighting spirit. Also, that hitting that spot, yeah, he, he twice won in this variation. He, he somehow felt that this might be Duda's uh, weak spot. At the same time, also, Kudos to Duda for finding the weak spot in uh, in Prague's uh, Catalan um, defenses. Yeah, so it's a very big strategical fight. I mean, yeah, of course, strategical too. opening fight. Pardon me. But also to come back twice against Duda on demand is uh, is very very impressive. Huh? Yeah, super impressive. And now Magnus is trying every single square with his king. Yeah, he's triangling right now. It doesn't do anything, but uh, he just wants to. Uh, comfort Liam, yeah, because this is also often the case that you you think that you are in trouble, then you put up great defense. It seems like ah, okay, now I got the the drawish setup, and then your opponent has the luxury of just fooling around for like some 10, 20 moves without doing anything. Then you get the comfort that aha, okay, everything is easy, and then a new question appears, and then you crack. Yeah, this is this is a typical way of of losing positions like this. What is your take on this grinding, doing nothing for, for as long as, as it takes and then uh, try to disbalance it open with new questions? I mean, I have this, uh, um, I mean, I have a different stylistic approach when I'm better. When I'm better, I just sort of go for it or try to. Uh, but the thing is, when I'm worse, this is usually how I lose my games. My opponents at some point, they give me a drawn position. And when I no longer have any problems, I think, then there comes the last final problem and that last final problem I'm just unable to solve. I think this moment where you think, oh, okay, I saved it is the moment that costs you a lot of energy. Exactly. Yeah, this is the this is the point. Yeah, that uh, you suddenly 
forget about the position a little bit. Yeah, you are carried away, you you relax. Yeah, that ah okay, it's achieved. Yeah, this this big task is achieved, mm -hmm. and it's never achieved till the game is over. Yeah, this this this, this momentary relaxation uh, cost me a lot of games. Yeah, I also know that whenever you know in this rapid uh, and blitz world championship, when I felt like. Okay, now I cannot lose even if I want. I already lost it exactly at that moment. Yeah, it happened at least three, four times. Yeah, yeah, now this happens yeah, sometimes in weirdest manners. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, here, yes, White is defending very nicely with Bishop D C C three, pawn King E one, King F two. Yeah, paying attention that after Bishop C four, uh, he can always move the Bishop away and the F one square is controlled. So that's why the King. Can't stay on d2 when the bishop can go to c4. And now Magnus is telling you, you know what? You see, I blocked you on the king side. You you can't do anything here. Your king is locked. I have this bishop c4 idea. So, so I will walk back to b2. <laughs> it yeah, but then you have to realize that the pawn end game is a draw. Yeah. If you is it so you you start walking back, yeah, just to illustrate, for Engage example, time. what we are. Talking about that, something like this. And after bishop c4, the big question can we take and then play king b2 and we, we close down this? And if black goes to the other side, then we can also walk to the other side. No, they can also go king a3, king a4. Yes, we already have king a3, but just to highlight that even there we have there we have defenses. So maybe Liam is holding, which would be great news for us. Then we are thrilled into two incredible blitz playoffs. King d2, yeah, everything on track. And the problem of my, for Magnus is that he can't play king a4, king c1, king a3, then the b5 pawn is hanging. And look at this, Magnus visibly upset, yeah, that he is not able to, to get the job done. I mean, knowing Magnus a bit, I think he had assumed that the bishop ending must have been winning for him. Yes. It's the same assumption I also made. And um, and uh, he also, he cannot know, yeah? Was it a draw or was it that he misplayed it? And of course, he doesn't like to misplay winning bishop endings. Exactly. I mean, honestly, I also felt like, and I also stated, yeah, during the broadcast, that I believe that it's much more likely that it's lost than it's a draw. But it's not finished yet. Yeah, Magnus is not trying to go bishop c6, protecting the pawn on b5 and go king a4 and then somehow try something, yeah? Well, at some point, there will be a new set of questions because at some point, we have to ask uh, h3, yeah? Does it ever create something? Yeah? h3, gh, bishop f3 will be a new, a whole new structure, right? Yes. This and will then, be a different... h5, bishop g6, yeah, it's a, just a different, different animal altogether. Yeah. All right, so Liam sticks to king c1. Yeah, we will deal with the hd structure because it's very complex. As, as Usta mentioned, yeah, after hd takes, bishop takes fc, there is this plan of going bishop h5, bishop g6, and uh, millions of new questions might appear there. Let's, uh, let's stick with the game for the moment. King c1 played. I mean, hd will come at any moment, but probably Magnus wants to postpone it as, as long as it... As it's possible. H3 is a high responsibility decision. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I mean, maybe he wants to bring his king back to c5 for that. Yeah, that's the big question. Yeah, that do you know? Magnus says no, I'm I'm still trying something here. Or he, maybe he wants to to lock the king to b2 as far away from the f pawn as possible. And then king b2 h3 might even work tactically, but uh... yeah, but on the other hand, because the pawn on b5 is hanging, there is no need to panic for something. Mm -hmm. King c2 played just in case closer to the f pawn. Yeah, the sacrifice on f3 is asked in the chat. Yeah, probably never works. Yeah, bishop f3, gf h3. Yeah, then bishop, bishop f1, f1, h2, bishop g2, but it is close, yeah, king a3. Yeah, but I mean, white has this bishop h1, bishop g2, yeah, so you can never put me in Tsuksuang. I just forever draw, yeah, I can never yes. win this, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, also question, the, yeah. the pawn end game, yeah, it's very tricky. If black could play king a3, bishop c4, two moves set once, then it's it's a win, but mm -hmm. uh, with, with king b2 in 
available for white, it's a draw. Bishop e6, waiting. Mm -hmm. Bishop e6, waiting, yeah. All right, now since the bishop left the fc pawn, we, we could give an argument that king b2 is possible. Yeah, it's played. Yeah, I guess h3 will never create winning chances. Yeah, Yeah, I was wondering that, is there any chance that then there is more? And Magnus goes b4. All right, what is this? This is uh, also a change of structure. Well, b4 is a good move positionally, right? But he will never be able to get with his king to e3. I mean, does he believe that the pawn endgame gives him chances? I think C4. the pawn endgame does give him chances. It yeah, just, but bishop c4, white probably goes. Bishop okay, king d2. He can play first king d2, no? King d2, king c5. I mean, and then this bishop f5, bishop h3. Yeah, you need yeah? bishop f5, bishop h3, basically, and then king e1, kick that bishop. Yeah, bishop c4 played, but still, this is. The, the, these are a new set of questions because bishop on h3 could eventually be met by some bishop e6 yeah and then this bishop on h3 is trapped yeah now you have to you have to keep your eyes open yeah very much yeah king d2 played and in one c5, minute the blitz playoff will start king c5 king c3 yeah important very important yeah that that this pawn end game is a is a draw you just wait with king c3 Mm -hmm. I'm guessing, yeah. And then, yeah, we already discussed you. You can't, you can't really go there because then f4 pawn is vulnerable. It is wow. like very impressive that despite this being almost a pawn ending, that Liam still has four minutes on the clock. Yeah, super impressive. And at the same time, look at Magnus's frustration. Yeah, like what is this? Who is my opponent? Yeah, how does he <laughs> react everywhere? The most precise ways. And quite quickly, confidently. Because basically this uh, method that I was mentioning that you, you fool around for 20, 30 moves, it's based on the fact that you play quickly and your opponent is always burning clock. And then you will ask him the, the real questions when he already is very low on the, uh, low on the clock. But Liam doesn't give this chance. King c5. And now King C3 is very important. King C3 played. I mean, I'm very much rooting now for Liam to hold this game as quickly as possible then and so that we will be able to jump immediately to, to Prague's tie break. Duda, by the way, opted for the black color in the first Blitz game. I thought it was Prague who opted for black? I do the just black. Yeah. Prague won, do the just black. Yes. Which is kind of interesting, yeah, because Duda has lost two games with the black pieces, uh, which means that he probably doesn't mind. Uh, he probably believes that he has just mixed up something in the opening, but he knows what to do because if he would still be under pressure in this line, yeah, not being able to know what to do, then picking black would be very strange. And the game started. Uh, Plug has opted also play for a different opening, yeah, which he yeah. does, yeah. Yeah, the Duda plays the French. D takes E4, Rubinstein, French. Just very quickly, we're gonna jump there because in Magnus's game right now, there isn't much progress. This is uh, the Cyravan French. Yes, exactly. I mean, this is a lo lot of suffering for Black. Uh, G6 is the Jabava line, yeah. Wow, all this age for Blitz now. By the way. Very quick update on the Magnus's game. Magnus is absolute sportman. He understand, he understands that uh, the blitz playoff has started. The position is a draw. He he gives up on his chances. We will be seeing another blitz playoff. Wow. That's it. All right. So draw. All eyes on Prague versus Duda, and really we appreciate Magnus's gesture. I'm pretty sure that uh, he, he gave up on time because of this. He cares about us. No, he does not. <laughs> no, he does. He does. Believe me. I mean, there was just no reason for him not to try a little bit more. But he saw that the, the guys just appeared and uh, he, he called it a day. 
Look at this. It's seemingly a very natural position for black here yeah, that you got everything that you wanted and computer is claiming that white is so much better than how should Kamsky play? Yeah, he always goes for these structures. No, maybe white has some direct attack, maybe knight g5 was possible or something. Yeah, and it might still be possible. Yeah, this pawn on h5, yeah, all this the potential sacrifice is hanging in the air. I'm not sure his bishop on f4 is helpful for that, but knight g5 followed by a g or h6, there was a lot of tempting, juicy tactics there. Yeah, but uh, now that black got c5 in, at least uh, all these things will require a very serious calculation, which in blitz... also the bishop on f4 will be hanging in all lines. Yeah. yeah? Mm. Not so simple now. I mean, I was thinking that already if Prague has opted for bishop f4, he might want to go rook d1, but I mean, uh, you already even have to consider some bishop takes f3, queen f3, c takes d4 moves. Yeah, no, I thought now maybe c3 or h6, c3, just to consolidate, because I think white is probably still better. So C3 okay, he played C3, but for example, after CD, does it mean that you want to take CD? Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Okay. 100%. But I mean, okay, this heavily improved Black's position, yeah? It's like an um, isolated pawn. Yeah, but this knight on D7 is an unhappy horsey. Yeah, okay. Something has to be unhappy, because if it would be on C6 and I go knight E7, I would play for advantage, yeah? Knight D5. So bishop g5, bishop f6, knight e4, knight e4, you are ready to trade, yeah? Bishop g5, knight g5, knight f4, probably not, no? Bishop f6, I, I need to do something smarter. Yeah, maybe you just retreat to d2 or you go bishop h6, maybe bishop d2, yeah. Bishop, bishop d2, d2, yeah, bishop d2. And then now you're going to do your stuff, knight e4 hitting the bishop and maybe also mm -hmm. then going back to g5 after bishop g7. No, nah, this should this should be a, a, a truly horrible position for black. Wow. Okay. It's uh, to me it looks surprising that it's so bad, but I also see the evolution bar, and usually I so much enjoy playing against the the isolated pawn and the Nimso structures from the Karpov system. Black, of course, gets a much better version. Yeah. No. I, we we all remember your game against Gata and everything, but uh, but this is different. This is different. Yeah. I saw that you will tell that uh, you remember my game against Ivan Sokolov because that was the biggest model game from Vikanzi 2013. Oh, that that too we remember, yes. Yes. But because against Kamsky it was in uh, in Tashkent, yeah, that's why it we was remember. in Tashkent and it was very, very impressive. Yeah? We thought like, what the hell, no? God <laughs> yeah. doesn't usually yeah. lose like this. So just... <laughs> Yeah, but of course, Duda also should not forget that it's a blitz game. Yeah, he's playing it, he's taking it slow. On the other hand, it's a five plus three, five minutes plus three seconds uh, blitz. It, it has a different dynamics than the usual three plus two. Little bit, yeah. Yes. I think at the end, it doesn't make so much difference when you, whether you have three seconds increment or two, but uh, five and three is, is a slightly different story. Yeah, and I have noticed that there were players at the beginning, yeah, play, playing in the spirit that I have to play as quickly as possible. And that strategy heavily backfired. Mm -hmm. And now people have slowed down, yeah, the, to, to, to be as objectively correct as, as possible. And yeah, now maybe just A3 to, to stop that the jump, no? Okay, knight E4 first. Knight E4 is very be. natural. Should be normal, yeah. The, the bishop is forced back. And white is trying... I mean, this is a very aggressive move. Knight I think bishop, bishop g5 was more natural. And we get the message that in six minutes' time, in, at the hour, the, the blitz play of between Magnus Carson and Liam Levy will start. Magnus chose white. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, here Duda chose black. Magnus chooses the white pieces. Hmm. I thought bishop g5 could maybe provoke f6. a3 was very, very tempting also. Yeah, a3 is super tempting to take away this this, this only vulnerable square. But okay, knight e4, g5 is... Uh, I mean, Prague is a very direct player. He probably forces all these tactical shots with knight x, h7 or something. Yeah, but for instance, knight df6 now. 
I mean, pardon me, knight d5, d5 f6, to f6 or d5 f6. d5 f6, okay? Yeah, I want to keep e5 under control. Yes. But you claim that the knight on d7 is a horrible piece, but yeah, you but I, I don't want to. I don't want to allow a g a g knight e5. You see, I just don't want to allow that. Yeah, I understand you. Wow, knight e4 to g5, forcing Duda to burn the clock, and he's done to two minutes. Very scary situation. Rook f8. Look at what the computer thinks about it. Black wants to go knight f8, maybe to rook f8 is absolutely psychotic. Yeah, where are you going? I mean, asking for all this okay. knight x7 knight business. Knight x7 yeah? is so kind of not difficult. Yeah, and the yeah, knight it's f8 g bishop g6 is just so not difficult. It's it's the it's the tempting move. Yeah, I, I mentioned that. This is hanging in the air. Duda says, please take it. Mate me. Uh, Rook F D A is, is remarkably careless. I mean, especially because with knight e4 to g5 and knight x h7 played, of course, by Prague. This is like a routine sacrifice for, for Prague. And yeah, Duda very unhappy. Yeah, king h7, okay, knight g5 is coming, g6, everything is falling apart. Yeah, but how can you play rook f to d8, no? Moving away the defender. Yeah, so... I mean, basically the the body language and the way how Duda is shaking his head, he, he exactly signaled this, how could I miss this? Mm -hmm. How on earth could I miss this? Okay, knight f8 now should be played, no? Add the fate and give the queen, yes. Yes, yes. I mean, I would be even quite happy if I'm allowed to give the queen. I'm worried that even this won't happen. But okay, let's go knight f8. Still not over. Queen h5, knight f... No, queen h5, knight g6. Yeah, queen h5. Seven, and knight x6 is pretty much over. Huh? This is a problem, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe even Queen G6 finishes the game because also Knight E6. I don't it seems to me that everything wins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's stay on the live board. Do the done to fifty five seconds. Knight five F6 played finally, stopping Queen H5 at least. But yeah, do the very angry with himself. Does Bishop B4 work? Wow, that's that's such a dream move to play, yeah. And then smother mate is coming, yeah. Bishop b4 is stunning, yeah. Queen b4, queen e6, check. King h8, knight f7, check. King g8, knight h6, check. King h8, queen g8, check. And then mm. knight f7, checkmate. That that would be it. But plug goes bishop f7. I'm actually very proud of my tactics i do tactics all day long and i think it it, it tells yeah of course it tells <laughs> but so i mean you have nothing else to do or how is your life yeah no but this is uh, this is only tact only kind of chess training which i still do for myself uh -huh. so i no longer look at openings for myself i no longer look at endings for myself i just saw some tactics so. okay yeah B bishop f7 king h8 queen dc also does the job white is Aiming at queen h3. I mean, any check on the h5 is quite deadly. So knight f8 and then trying to block on h7 is the only way, but it does but not then help. Bishop g6 will probably exactly. Be White is not even anything down. Yeah, not really. It just um... yeah, basically, it just looks like a completely winning position. Not not like we have sacrificed much. Mm -hmm. I think I feel that the, the players also showing here tremendous sportsmanship because just at the time when the Magnus game will start, uh, this game will be over. Yeah. But I have a feeling uh, that Prague's game would be more elegant if he had found bishop b4. Yeah, it would be... Yes. I mean, okay, bishop, bishop b4 was, was just too nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prague taking his time. He's going for queen hd check. Of course, he's double, triple checking mm -hmm. knight f6 to h7. Yeah, no, no, normal to take rook e6 now. Yeah, rook e6, very tempting. Rook e6, queen d7. And 
all the pieces are overloaded, but black can just ignore. Yeah, not not to take, of course, just sidestep with the queen. And maybe then bishop b4 and bishop f8, but a bit dirty, yeah, not not as good. it's a bit dirty, yeah. It's not not, not exactly ideal. the simple way as you wanted. Mm -hmm. Ah, rook e6, bishop c8. What is it? But this is just the piece, yeah. Rook e7 and knight takes h3. Yeah, it's yeah this is just two pawns done and the lost mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So basically, there is no way Prague won't win this. Wow, I mean, I've seen all sorts of things happen in Blitz games. Yeah, but I mean, he's 20 seconds up on the clock. And uh, still, the look on E7 is a monster as well. The Knights are not really moving. I mean, of course, it's, it's completely winning. Rook D7, but it is, it is more than do the deserves yeah, from what he had. He did not get checkmated, at least. Yeah, rook takes a7, and now white will have this beastly square for his, for this bishop. Yeah, it will be the protected bishop. And wow, the Magnus game has already started. We see some razor-sharp uh, Ragos in. He plays the, the Caruana line, yeah? The Mamediar of Caruana. Yes, exactly. But for the moment, we, we of course, stay here till the end. Knight 7 f6 okay the knights are getting closer but two pawns are two pawns the technical win for prague knight d5 trading the knights yeah he's playing in a very dry fashion yeah just exchanging and very methodical yeah put the bishop on beastly play f3 king f2 and okay he goes bishop f3 you exactly the opposite <laughs> what I advocated, but it's good enough. That's good enough, yeah. Yes. Then now he will go rook b1 probably, yes, rook b1. The bishop dominates the knight. And okay, then, then ah, no, rook b2, I was saying, okay, then rook b6 and let's go for it. I like the bishop on b3 better. Yeah, it looked more natural, and then the rook invades on the e-file and so on, but okay, it do does not change anything. Yeah, g3, finally the king gets to g2. Do the down to 8 seconds, the bishop finally reaches b3, and then it should be game over. Yeah, I think it's most, most strategically correct for us to stay with the Magnus game because we will miss the, the, the juicy... Yeah, exactly. I mean, okay, here we already believe that Prague will win and it's a very complex uh, strategic fight here. We, we do see the evolution by claiming that white is better, but it's not a given. It's like a Petrov structure, yeah? It's uh... it's a very good Petrov, yeah? He can take and play Queen H5 or he can play Queen H5 first. Yes, I mean, this, this setup, eventually this knight often lands on easily, putting terrible pressure on the d5 pawn. And yeah, with, with queen h5 included, all these things are possible. I think queen h5 now is like borderline decided. Why not queen h5 immediately? Okay, g6. But then bishop d6, because now queen h5, I can play h6, right? Why give me this chance? Okay, it, it wasn't obvious if h6 is a move and then pluck has already won no no surprise there so for the first time today it is now up to duda to bounce back In incredible Prague is is fighting and, and you I move h6 on the board yeah no because if i play queen h5 directly then h6 bishop takes h6 is maybe possible yeah so it's yes yes no that, that but i mean i i believe that magnus likes this knight f1 knight is and maybe thinks that you know what this h6 might give me some f5 square or something no i understand but i could still play g6 i mean he didn't gain anything by playing queen h5 that's like true they, they just gave but it's a blitz it. game yeah it is a blitz game, yes. It's a blitz game, and they already have played four tough games. Yeah, this we should also not forget. Yeah, that the the players are of course exhausted. It's not like they start the blitz game. Yeah, it's after four hours of 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 rapid chess and and playing four games, 
I mean, every game is like a new new life is beginning. Yeah, with new hope, new problems, what whatever. So, not not easy to adjust. New hope. Was there a Star Wars movie called New Hope? It sounded familiar. There was something with the New Hope, no? Okay, everybody looks for new hope, but uh, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not a Star Wars. Uh, I'm not a Star ah, Wars. no, guy. Star Wars. I'm also not 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 a big expert. I mean, Zoltan Almash is the big Star Wars specialist. I mean, he knows everything about Star Wars. I thought he was a big like sub specialist. Yes, <laughs> that's in any case. Yeah, car specialist, everything. Yeah, but. Uh... Yeah, Queen E5, Rook E5. The big question is, how does Black hold on to his D5 pawn? A6 played. Okay, this is horrible. A6 this... is not great. I thought he had to find a way to give this pawn like Knight, uh, maybe Knight G6 or Knight C6, Rook D5, and then B6, find some way to do this, yeah? But not like this. I mean, A6 doesn't even help him. Yeah, and the knight gets to c5. The bishop can't be developed from c8. This is a hopelessly lost position, strategically speaking. He's completely boxed in, yeah? Apparently, the very first Star Wars film was the new hope, yes. Star Wars, the new hope. But, uh, I mean, yeah, this whole Star Wars uh, trick is that the, 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 very first film is like the last episode yeah it's something uh, like this Zoltan was the, I remember that as a child I I have seen of course uh, all the old uh, Star Wars with Darth Vader and every time you know, of course this, this is I see the first the first movie movie to air was uh, Star Wars 4 uh -huh. the Star Wars 5 aired Star Wars 6 and then they made prequels Star Wars 1 2 to 3 and after that, we had like seven, we had it like a disconnected Star Wars movie, which was not in this lineup, and then eight, nine, ten, and then at some point, kind of, uh, yours truly at least lost the interest. Yeah, well, the, the, the trick is that Magnus' position is so dominant, and Black's position is so hopeless that, I mean, we would love to suggest something for Black, but uh, there, there is just no hope here. I mean, it's, uh, he should have never played A6, yeah, this is like borderline humiliating. Yeah, no, no, nothing works, nothing moves. Look, look at White's gorgeous pieces. Everything is perfectly placed. Maybe not just F3, King F2 or something, yeah? Or if, even just King F1, yeah? If you don't see a direct win, okay, you just improve the position. Well, I mean, but this is this is Magnus' specialty. Yeah, it looks like it's a tough match, everything, and then he takes control. Yeah, already in the previous game, <clears throat> from from seemingly nothing, he got uh, almost a winning end game. Now here he just effortlessly gets a great position. How does he do it? Yeah, but also I have a feeling that uh, maybe Liam did not understand this opening, because well, can he just go to like move seven? I mean, you think that we we can move move yeah, now? Yeah, we or... can definitely move. Yeah, just we can. Yeah, because it's such a hopeless situation. Yeah. yeah? Because after Queen e7, Knight d2, Knight c3 takes takes five is ID. It was Bishop a3, Rook b1, and I think didn't he go like g5, f5, or was it not here? Uh, he played castles, and he after castles, e3 yeah. he played g5. And after Bishop g3, he played f5. Yeah, I mean, it's a very direct idea. It's, yeah? it's, it's you, you a very direct play. idea. Yeah, You cannot just kind of go bishop a3 and then just play this position. Yeah, because you burned already strategically all the yes. bridges. Yeah, Ev yes. everything is long. So it was a very, I mean, queen e7 was not a setup. It was a very concrete idea, which Liam just kind of imitated, but without the concrete bit. Yes. Yeah, and, and now king f1, rook d8, okay, slowly getting ready to kick the, that rook from e5, but I mean, who will kick the rook on b6 and who will solve the problem with the b7 pawn? Uh, nobody. Yeah. But still, I don't like king f1. I, I wanted f3, king f2, g4, king g3, h4. I mean, I'm, I'm a maximalist. And Magnus finally goes f3. Knight c6. I don't think anything 
can change here. Yeah, no, no, no nothing can change. By the way, the other game already started. Mm -hmm. But of course, we have to stay here. Yeah, this is now Magnus fighting against Liam. Even it's painful to watch Black's position. The only slight concern for Magnus that he burned quite some time. Yeah, he's done to 1 minute 23. Rook e8. They are trying to trade because that would be if, if Magnus would make the mistake of trading and not winning on the spot, then he can go king d8, king c7. Mm -hmm. But of course, Magnus keeps the rooks, puts the terrible pressure, and eventually also somewhere bishop takes a6 might be a problem. I mean, nobody is really defending against bishop takes a6. Yeah, bishop a6, he'll he'll go knight d4, I think. Yeah, on the board, yeah, bishop a6. Knight takes d4 and maybe just bishop b7. Well, or c takes d4. I mean, I, I don't know. This monster knight on c5. And cd4, ba, are uh, you winning by force? Yeah, I, I can't believe I'm not winning by force. Okay, Magnus goes look d6. King e8, rook b8, rook c7. And then, okay, I can take on a65. I mean, I'm pawn up and much better, yeah? I am the pawn and I'm the attacker. Yeah? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the famous quote. Rook d6. Yeah, chess players have good memories, yeah? Everything that is uh, special, we, we remember forever. We remember, yes. It's unfortunate. Yes. Rook e c7? Yeah, maybe this, this move has to be played. It's a very sad move, of course. Look, e7 to c7, trying to create the option of going king e7. Mm. So clock situation equaled out. One minute, three seconds for each player. Look, e7 to c7. Looks like the best. And after look, e2, you... Bishop you... d7. Ah, bishop d7, like this, yeah? Mm. But, ah, hang on. d5 pawn is hanging. I thought, I mean, it was hanging for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just realized because I thought that, yeah, we are collecting already the bishop, but if you protect the pin, then we can take this pawn. And then the d-pawn will decide the game. Uh, I mean, I don't... Uh, yeah, I don't contest that Black has a bad position. Yeah. yeah, even trying to go a5, boxing things in. Even more, I mean, Black is already boxed. Okay. Black should go a5 and just pray for the best now. Yeah, e5, okay. He goes for other activity, tries to enter with the rook, but it's just to check. Then king f2, rook on b2 protects everything. Liam down to 33 seconds. But Why is Magnus not taking the d5 pawn? Uh, I just want to say that Liam is, is resisting this one very, very well. Yeah, this is incredible. I mean, he had a hopelessly lost position, and he, he, he still, still managed had a hopelessly to lost position. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The game is still on. Yes. Look, the one and the game is afoot. Yes, yeah, some small questions are there. I mean, especially because with white you go crazy. Why I haven't won this game yet? That's the biggest problem. H four G six creating the famous luft. And Magnus down to 18 seconds. I'm not liking this. Yeah, it's uh, this is getting more tense than, than it should have. King e7. Okay, still, it's a monster knight, of course, and white is pawn up. Yeah. No reason I, I to I panic. I like but... e7 very much. Yeah, it felt like it's getting into tactics. Now I have yeah, you have to start going back, yeah? No. Yeah. We are also down to 12 seconds. No, nah, king e7 was just wrong, yeah. Yeah, now nah, rook b8, yeah? It's uh, mm -hmm. it's time to, yeah, because now nah, the pawn on a6 will fall. And take, take and... g4, yeah? Uh -huh. Magnus, even king e3. <laughs> Cruel, protecting the pawn on d4. g4 is a threat, rook a6 is a threat, yeah, now nah, it's, nah, it's over. And also there are no more, no mm -hmm. more obstacles for Magnus, yeah? He can just blitz out all his moves. H5, yeah, I mean, the man is merciless. Yeah? He wants all your pawns. 
everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you fools. But okay, at least Black managed to keep his A pawn. But okay, now A G, and then he'll lose that pawn too. Yeah. And Magnus goes for the look and game. Yeah, two pawns are more than enough. Thank you very much. It's hopeless, yeah. King e two, yeah. He will take all your pawns. And even still keeps the the pressure in the pawn on h five. He did not even release the tension. Yeah, I'm trying to resist, but now he's losing the g6 pawn. And okay, these are connected pass pawns. Rook d6 check first. Yeah, the king is forced back. Mm -hmm. And okay, now it's over. And rook a4, king f2, yeah, just to be to be extra solid. Or king e3 first, and then king. Yeah, e3. I mean it's it's up to you already to mm -hmm. decide. So basically, Magnus. Wins the first game, yeah, seals the the first game and gets the gets the lead. Well, again, and Liam will need to strike back. I mean, okay, if Magnus would be down to two three seconds, it's another thing. But I mean, like this, it's just an elemental win, yeah. It's a bit strange to bring a rook to e4, though, yeah. Yeah, rook e5 check, rook moves g5, king g4 f. I mean, mm -hmm. okay, Magnus knows it. He was just... What is he trying to do? He's just trying to gain some seconds, but he's strange, yeah. Yeah, it's strange. No, I'm now a little bit upset. Uh, maybe, I... maybe king f2, rook e3, king g3, but also that is not necessary. I mean, I want to move to the other game already, and I'm expecting think... Magnus to win. I think you can move to the other game. But okay, I, I can't exactly at this moment. What is Magnus doing? Well, I, I told you he wants to go rook e3 and then king g3. Uh, that is his point, yeah. But okay, I mean, I just didn't see any chances for black to. I mean, this is not the blockade that people know that you can block it. Yeah, he's playing strange way. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah very strange. Yeah. I mean, he needs to watch out not to run into some three for the repetition. I mean, for example, rook e5, yeah, finally g5, because rook e5 check king f6 would be three mm -hmm. for the repetition. Yeah, Magnus got g5, king h4. Slightly shaky at the end, but we will forgive him. Yes. Rook, rook f8 check, yeah, king g6. Rook f6 check, f4, and that's it. King h5. King h5, then bring the rook to a6, that on the check. If you check, then king g4, king f5 comes. <laughs> yeah, incredible that this game. L luckily, in the other game, there is a big strategical battle going on, a lot of maneuvering, so we will still have all the action ahead of us. Yeah, Magnus goes g6, look g6, look e7, check. Then forcing the pawn end game. And okay, like this now with f5, it's game over. So Liam, yeah. Yeah, Liam, Liam resigns. Designed. And needs so, to, to win on demand yeah, in the next game. He needs to win on demand. The same applies to Jan Shishtov Duda. He needs to win on demand. And he got a playable position. A very nice position. And he's also way up on the clock. So all the chances to, to bounce back. But how do you break? It's, it looks wonderful, but sometimes it's not so easy when, when you have everything immediately. Yeah, I, I wonder whether... I, mean, I wonder whether c5 is so stupid yeah, to, to open the d file for the rooks. But of course, it's a very high responsibility move. Yes, yeah, c5 also my first question, but I was not sure if d6, queen c5, b6. Do I, do I enjoy this? Opening up of, of the queen side. Well, maybe b6, queen a3, maybe black just creates weaknesses. But, but yeah, g4 maybe. Also, but... g4, knight f5 is very controlled. You think white wants to go knight f5? I maybe, maybe, yeah, but... maybe he does, yeah. And then ef, and then this bishop, yeah, and then 
Bishop Samuel and C5 and I slowly. Yeah, but, but you said that C5 was a very committer move. I mean, I also feel like this G4 knight F5 is a committer decision. But you are absolutely right. That's what Duda wants to do. Knight G6, knight F5 takes G takes F5. And next one is C5, yeah. And then... Yeah, he combines H for C5, breaking up everything, yeah. But first, like Bishop E3, yeah, just to make sure that he can take on F4 after D5. I mean, C5, D5, E, D, Queen, F5 is probably good for white, but why bother, yeah? Wow, he even includes Bishop A7, uh -huh. so Bishop E3 will be played. It's very classy. Yeah, very nice. Yes. With a complete overview, yeah, he still has the one minute advantage. Wow, this is the, this is the match of comebacks, maybe. Okay, Duda still needs to win, but there is very much in the air. Queen before hitting the b7 pawn. Now, rook b8 can be met by bishop a7. Yeah, no, the, the, the bishop, yeah, this bishop is a monster. It's a close position, but the bishop is a monster. Yeah, usually this knight on f4 would be a monster if white's king would be on each each one somewhere on the king's side. But yeah, plug needs to, to trade this powerful, but okay, a, b, the structure collapses. Yeah, like queen a4, yeah, black also doesn't get counterplay. And anything wins, yeah, but queen a4 doesn't even allow black to sort of to hop. Yeah, not to give any queen a3, a4, and then who knows, yeah? A queen a4 is sort of denial of all hope. Yeah? It's just, it's queen okay, Duda goes queen b5. He says, okay, give me that pawn as well, yeah? Well, a4, b4 also, yeah? Yeah. Rook a b8, queen c6, entering, yeah, forcing cb6, after which rook takes d6, decides the game. Yeah, this is really uh, remarkably dominant performance. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, basically, both. Yeah, that's it. Duda wins. Both players managed to win quite smoothly with the white pieces. Yeah, black never got a chance. In none of these games. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, all of these games, just a complete bloodbath. And it guarantees us the first Armageddon of the of the of the finals. We never had an Armageddon before. I mean, uh, no, we only had two blitz playoff games. Yeah, which uh, Anish played twice, but uh, we haven't and had then, an Armageddon yet. Won, yeah, without without Armageddon. Exactly. Armageddon. We will be in for an incredible thrill, but before that, and I do hope that the organizers will make sure that this Armageddon will be only played when the other match finishes, yeah, because otherwise we would be losing out on. And Duda chooses again. That's the big, big question, yeah. What does he choose? I mean, he won three games with white, he lost three games with black, yeah. Choosing white would be he has to choose the white pieces, definitely be more logical, yeah. Something tells me he will choose black though. No, no, never. After I, I think you always check the the dynamic of the match, yeah. And well, uh, I mean, it feels crazy to choose black, and yet, nevertheless, that's what most people do somehow. Yeah, but really, in in this tournament, I mean, in this match, yeah, so far, black was unable to. Yeah, black didn't even put up much of a fight, yeah, yeah. and yet I would not be surprised if he chooses black. Yeah, let's let's wait for the confirmation. And also give the players a little bit of time, yeah, because okay, they just finished the blitz playoff. They have to adjust to the new situation to Armageddon and let Magnus, yeah, Magnus appearing. It's kind of funny, yeah, playing this blitz playoff and you are coming and uh, there is no opponent opposite to you, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of uh, tricky. Magnus with the black pieces, Liam needs to win on demand to stay in the match. D4. By the way, when they played esports in Oslo, was it also with the monitors or they played over the board? I think uh, they they played also on, on monitors, of course. All, all mm -hmm. these events. Mm -hmm. So even when they were all of them in the same room, yeah, they still played with the monitors. Yes. And we are seeing the same line and we, we, we were discussing this, that Ah, and knight takes d5, bishop d5, bishop c4, rustam treatment. 
No, takes, takes, bishop, d3. Ah, this is a combination of both ideas, yeah? Bishop, d3 right away and takes, yeah? Yeah, you, you mentioned bishop, d3, and mm -hmm. you mentioned knight, d5, bishop, d5, bishop, c4. Ah, do they chose white? Do I chose, of course. And yeah. it will start, oh no, this is long. This this should be changed, yeah? They apparently start in at 29, yeah? So in four minutes. Oh my God, then uh, we'll Liam to... and Magnus need to speed up. I will have to cover both games simultaneously. There are two of us, there are two games. <laughs> yes, but I mean, we can only talk about one, one board position at a time. Uh, we can, we can try. We will try. Yeah, of course. No, it's, uh, we, we will manage somehow, but uh, the, the big question is, I mean, Liam came now armed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he has seconds working for him. Uh, because oh, otherwise, he... during this very short break, you you just don't have time to to I check mean, he, all the finesses. He, not all the finesses, but you have the time to run the computer and ask for the first line, right? You think it's not so easy because you are in this uh, Zoom call, yeah? Everything, all these security measures, every so you have to have a other computer outside somewhere, yeah, as well. It's not so simple. Bishop D H six feels a bit slow, but maybe necessary. Yeah, spending also way too much time. I mean, over a minute for H six. Signals that Magnus is high responsibility yeah? because Queen C three. You need to protect the pawn on C seven. Queen C two, the same idea. Oh, Queen C three felt better because after Queen C three C five D C, I am eyeing this pawn on G seven. I don't know; it might be useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's kind of a very tough question in in blitz game. Yeah, to decide. Yeah, queen c two, queen c two. They look very similar, but there might be some. Yeah, but also for c five, d c, b c. Yeah, the queen is obviously better on c three, right? Preventing queen a five check and. Yeah, you are you are right. Yeah, because the only point behind queen c two is eventually that when you are castled, you will have some bishop h seven check and then bishop e four. But that's too mysterious. But DC5, Magnus goes now. So after BC5, Queen takes C5 would have no, then the bishop was hanging. Yeah, I don't, don't understand he, this. He wants to go C6, Knight C5. Yeah, he doesn't want to. But E4 sort of maybe wins a bishop, sort of. Wow, when? How? E4 I thought now? now e4, but okay, maybe e4, bishop b7, yeah, c6, rook c8, and just sort of hang in there. Yeah, very sharp. Ah, but e4, bishop b7, c6, rook c8, queen a4. Yeah, I think it's too too complicated for our audience to. I mean, even for me, it's not so easy. Yeah, e4 on the board, so now we can already speculate about this. That where to, where to put this bishop? I mean, there is even some idea of taking on a2 and bishop then trying to, but it's, it's crazy, shouldn't work. Yeah, d4 looks like you will lose this bishop. Yeah? Yes, no, I, I will lose it for sure. Yeah, so the bishop needs to retreat, but yeah, bishop b7 probably has to be played. Yeah. Should be seven c six, I think, is important. Rook c eight and then queen a four. The point uh, is that knight c five runs into rook takes c five. Rook c five b c c b. But hang on, rook c five. I have queen takes d three. I told you that. Ah, but then no, rook queen d three. It's complicated. It is this complicated. Is, yeah, this is complicated. No, no. I mean, bishop b seven. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Bishop b seven is the move. And okay, after c6, rook c8, there are so many. Maybe when you can push c, but c7, you don't want to push, but maybe when this is possible. Bishop b5, maybe also. I mean, yeah, it looks very promising for white. Magnus down to two minutes. And by the way, Duda has started with e4 against Prague, which is logical. Yeah, he and we, we see a Sicilian. Wow, we will see this old air classico, yeah, that, that I played so many games with. This anti-Sveshnikov with yes. knights is the e5. Just a very quick 
update so that we know that this is the opening. This is long maneuvering. Yeah, knight f1, bishop g3, f3, bishop e6. Mm -hmm. A lot of finesse is here. Also having uh, having a minute more in such a maneuvering position is very nice, right? You, you get to keep this minute for a long time, hopefully. For a very long time, yeah. You are guaranteed a long game. But also Prax seems to me that he's very, very prepared. Yeah, he plays this knight d7, knight b6 plan instantly, yeah, signaling that he knows all the ideas. The bishop goes to g5. But for the moment, all lies on Magnus. He did go bishop c6. And after c takes b6, goes rook c8 with but 1 minute no, 10 seconds. No time left, yeah? No time to, to speak of. No, not at all. And look at this, yeah. Magnus is not... Not happy, not thrilled. I mean, bishop a6 runs into what? Into bishop b7. Yeah, yeah bishop b7, and then this all this queen takes c8. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, because no, b6 is hanging. Uh -huh. Yeah, so let's just show this that bishop a6 would have run into oops, bishop b7, and suddenly there is a pin, and none of the sacrifices on c8 works. So Liam actually just keeps on taking his up three pawns, but and three Black, minutes. Yeah, but Black has some some play. I mean, this this construction with e4. Yeah, Magnus collects the a7 pawn, queen a5 check. The, this is never trivial. I mean, this e4 e6 structure with this knight d7 bishop c6 construction gives kind of some compensation for Black, even for the two pawns. Yeah, queen d2 normally, right? Yeah, queen d2, queen takes a7. And castles. Or hang on, is there any craziness like taking on a2, but it's it's too much. I, I want to take on a7 first. Queen c3 played queen a7 on the board. He'll play something odd, yeah, like queen a3. No, queen a3 doesn't work. Yeah? It's strange that he went queen c3 a bit into... Trouble. Yeah, castles knight f6. I mean, okay, Magnus very much alive. I mean, I I wouldn't rule out that he survives this game. This this structure has potential. No, that's true. Yeah, this is never easy. And also, this this is like some banker gambit. Yeah, that you have this a b files open, pawns are hanging. It's only problem the the clock situation. A three. I thought White had like knight e5, for instance. He probably blundered this, yeah? Queen takes c8, bishop d3. I'm sure he blundered this. No, he goes oh, like this. this, yeah? Wow, okay. This is uh, stunning stuff. Well, Two he, looks. He, he believes the queen, yeah? He 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 looked at Nepo's game. He believes the queen. And that he will be able to put up some great counterplay with, with f5, g5 after bishop e4, knight e4. I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure he needs this. counterplay. Maybe he, maybe it's more rook d1 is such a shaky move. Very shaky. Why not take and play rook c2, rook fc1? Yeah, what is rook d1? Oh my god, it's so shaky. Like takes rook a6, queen a4, so many things that can go wrong. Yeah? Queen a6 and then knight d5. Yeah, this is uh, becoming interesting. Just a very quick update on uh, Duda versus Prague. Prague actually has a very solid position. Uh, and he has still 2 minutes 16 seconds, but there yeah. is no increment here yet. So this will be big, big blitz battle. Yeah, Queen, Queen B7, B7 on the board. No, I'm, I'm really a bit stunned yeah, by this development. Rook C2, E5. Yeah, Knight E5 runs into Queen E4 with, with tremendous pressure on all the pieces. Yeah, no, but Black's position is also a bit easier to play, I think. Yeah, with this looks, you are trying to find some harmony at the moment. Well, he had harmony, but he just went rook d1, yeah, and killed his harmony. Yeah, he did not want to let this knight to e4 and then uh, counterplay, but Black anyway got counterplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight g4, and okay, this is becoming a mess. Where do you put this look? Rook e2, no? Yeah, and then, okay, all these e4s. Yeah, as you say, practically speaking, it's somehow easier to be black now. 
you know the the queen is uh, is massively annoying yeah. knight d2 they'll probably just go f5 yeah no I, i'm not even sure why it is better at all objectively no i don't think so no yeah this is counterplay Wow, what a turn of events. Yeah, Liam was so much up on the clock. Looked like the position is perfectly under control. And, and now look at this. Yeah, no, he, he blundered. Bishop takes e4, I think, was Bishop takes d3. And, uh, and after that, it didn't really work out. Yeah, now he has to burn the, burn the clock. Yeah, knight c4, black will never trade the knights. Yeah, knight d3, it's a monster knight. Yeah, now B4, but the, these pawns are not really going anywhere. Queen A6. Also, eyeing maybe switching to, to Queen G6, Knight F4, eventually maybe at some moment. Yeah, but also holding white back, yeah? The, the pawns do not advance. Do not advance at all. Nothing really moves. Yeah, this is, this is really like Gandalf territory. Yeah, I, I think uh, Liam was already too happy that he got a great position and Magnus was so low on the clock yeah, and, and he lost focus at some point. He got careless. Mm -hmm. Magnus, however, down to 13 seconds. He needs to move. He pushes F4. Knight B2 trying to break this construction. Queen takes a sleep. Blunder. According and then Ruby to now. White got the cement. Now the cement and no time for black, yeah? Yes. Now that's it. We're going to see an Armageddon. Oh my God. Magnus will be very upset with himself. Yeah, absolutely trying to break something. But Just, just B5, yeah? Or GF first, yeah? Yeah, now apparently again, FG, King, G2, Queen, A8, check. Will, will he start all these checks? Now he has million checks, yeah. Yeah, but on the other hand, F3 is coming, yeah? And, and D6, the rooks yeah? on the second. Or King, F3 now, yeah? Get out of checks. King, F3 or, or just B6? Or Rook, D3, yeah? As we're informed by our... Ah, uh, wow. I mean, but why is computer thinking that, ah, Queen, G6, check, but when are the checks? No, one second or a few seconds on the clock, it's impossible. Uh, King, King F1, F1. And King G2. Now that's over. That's it. Uh, B8, Queen F3, King G1. Yeah, this will that's be... it. Yeah, Magnus designs. Wow, what an adventure. Immediately back to, to do the Vazos. Another Armageddon. Because... Yeah, and another Armageddon. Another Armageddon. And here we have 30 seconds versus 37. Is there a way to break? I mean, yeah, this is, yeah, that's it, draw. Probably threefold oh. repetition, yeah? Automatic draw. Automatic draw, but okay, yeah. This or is a 50 move just... rule, yeah? So basically he tried to flag him, he did not succeed. You you think it was 50? Ah, yes, because F5 check. Yeah, yeah, at some point automatically the 50 move rule uh, kicked Applied, in. yeah, kicked in. Wow. Let's hear it from Plug. Yeah, I think we will have an interview. Here from Prague. Prague, you won. What a match this was. Went down to the wire. Joy, relief. What are you feeling? No, finally, I'm happy that Black survived in this game. Because, okay, White was just winning uh, all the six games. Okay, this game, he was trying to flag me at the end, but I, I think I was, I was fast at least, okay? I couldn't like move with the pieces. Maybe you should try F6 and try to flag me, but uh, it would have been a time scramble there, like uh, like like a bullet. But fortunately for me, it was just a, like he didn't try F6 and I just could wait uh, normally. Were you a bit nervous that he might actually try to flag you in this absolutely equal position? Yeah, I think he was trying uh, at the last position, but. I was happy to see that I got to like, we, we were both around like five second margin. So I thought it's possible that I can flag him. I knew he's also an online player. So it, it might have been a, a fun for the audience, but not for us. Uh, but okay, for me, fortunately it was just a draw. 
Wow, you really kept your control over your nerves in that one. You mentioned that White was so decisive throughout the match. All the wins were with white pieces. Prague, before you went into the Armageddon choosing the colours, was that a thought in your mind that maybe I should pick White? No, I didn't pick. So, like, he was uh, second in the two standing, so he, he has to pick every, every time. Um, but actually, I, I didn't uh, rate my chances I, in the... <laughs> In the in the Armageddon because White was crashing all the games. Like White is getting much better position out of the opening, and also I'm down by a minute. And every time one of us was getting low on time, so it didn't. And also there's no increment, additionally. So I didn't think that I would make it this game, but okay, I managed to somehow exchange trade everything and uh, get to this rookie name. Do you feel like if you had to pick the colors, you might have chosen White, considering there were no draws in the entire match? Yeah, definitely I would have picked, picked White. Yeah. Right, and uh, beating Duda, you've definitely had uh, some history there, lots of fighting chess. How does it feel to finally emerge uh, victorious? I'm also very happy to win a match finally. Um, because, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just i just having a tough tournament, uh, this one. But I felt like my game quality wasn't too bad. Uh, but okay, today I don't think I played uh, well uh, at all. Like, I, I was playing decent. Um, but yeah, he just gave me chances in the uh, with the white pieces, so I just took it. In the rapid portion, Prague, you had to play catch up uh, the entire match. I want to ask you when there is a little break going on, and we know Ramesh is here. Give us a little sneak peek into what happens. How do you keep control and your nerves for the game coming up? No, we just try to see what to play for the next game, and um, that's the main thing because to put pressure with the white is important. And uh, yeah. Uh, and I was just like at, at some point I think for the fourth game I had like 20 minutes gap but I was just not in a mood to prepare too much so I just looked at it for five minutes and then started to look at the other games and yeah just try to relax and that's that's the thing I think and finally will you go to the basketball game tonight to celebrate a bit no not to celebrate just to relax <laughs> um, but I don't think it's the ideal opponent tomorrow uh, <laughs> to have the basketball match today but I think I'm going to watch the match. Play Magnus tomorrow. Yeah. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun, uh, as always, and hope to play some good chess tomorrow. So. You're always excited about that matchup. Enjoy the evening and good luck for tomorrow, Prague. Thank you. Wow, we just heard it from Prague, and we only have, I think, like a couple of seconds before uh, Magnus Kars and Liam Le Armageddon game. It's not anymore the Blitz playoff, it's the Armageddon judgment time. Magnus, just Magnus, Magnus has picked the white color. That's that's it. Well, he has a minute more. He's very fast. And... Yeah, Magnus not there yet. Yeah, that's that's true. But it's already official. Yeah, Magnus will no longer have a perfect score. That's for that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, already reaching the blitz playoff. Yeah, I guaranteed it. But mm -hmm. I was so amused by listening to Prague. Yeah, he mentioned that he was afraid that uh, Duda will flag him or whatever. But at the final position, he had like thirty seconds. Yeah, he he was so incredibly fast. Yeah, usually you you tend to worry about getting flagged when you are down to ten seconds. But he, he was just super fast. No 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 chance for Duda to to flag. Can't flag him. Is yeah. the unpluggable. Yeah, and Magnus arrived. I think the game starts in a second. D4 or E4? D4, yeah? Liam came back twice, yeah, against Magnus. Yeah, incredible fight. Absolutely I mean, fantastic, yeah. I mean, there were ups and downs in the previous game, but finally, all it matters the result, and he bounced back. Let's see how Magnus will handle the pressure now. And E4. E4, E5. Wow. So will we see another? No, I, I yeah, which which open Spanish will or will he go 5D3? No, open Spanish. A very risky choice for White in Armageddon, no? Yeah, very strange. Also knowing that Liam was so well prepared. Ah, so the deal world gambit. All right, let's see. Yeah, I never learned to take this line seriously. From which side? No, it's like every time I see it, Black gets a good position, Black always loses. Yeah, that's true. But it's so <laughs> mysterious. I mean, that's the trick. Yeah, that it's 
not like when you look at you sacrifice the the rook i mean you you have these two pieces versus rook and black has this powerful pawn chain but pawn center but it's not so simple yeah white has so much activity <clears throat> yeah bishop e3 bishop f5 bishop b3 rook a d8 but also like liam he took more than half a minute to get here yeah and like he doesn't know it too well it seems no i think that he doesn't have enough experience yeah he haven't played enough games but mm -hmm. i think he he knows what he's doing yeah knight a5 knight b7 this maneuver you don't do if you don't know mm -hmm. clearly covering the c5 square and then getting ready for some c5 c4 business i don't be business like usual yeah he'll get a good position he'll lose could easily be. I mean, also white can uh, include this rook d1 moves and mm -hmm. uh, maybe pushing the c pawn will be a big. No, Magnus goes rook e1. So basically, it gives the chance for black to push c5. This also happened to Karana and the candidates, right? The game that uh, that really proved decisive at the end that he chose this line with black against Nakamura. And nothing good came out of this, no? Yeah, but actually, I think Nakamura mixed up something, and that yeah, was no, the Nakamura trick. mixed up, and uh, Karana mixed immediately back, yeah? And yes. then... Um... As often it happens, I mean, and you see Black makes a natural move, King H8, yeah? Sidestepping from all these diagonals, and Computer gets already excited for white. I think I've already seen this, yeah? Like Bishop G5 and Rook takes E5, I think is maybe an option. It might be hanging and hanging in the air. Yeah, I think it was maybe already there. Yeah, look, look, d8 to e8, move the way. Magnus goes systematic with bishop f2, trying to reshuffle. Also, get ready for some knight e3. Eventually, is bishop eyeing to go to g3, and he keeps the time. Yeah? I just don't understand people that go for this line with black. Like, how many games black should lose so that you know you learn the lesson? Yeah, because computer always finds a way and always says that it's kind of fine. Yeah, it's playable, but in the practical terms, it's so difficult. Yeah. Bishop e4. Even rook e4, knight g5, I would be tempted. <laughs> yeah, we would be tempted. We don't know how good it is, but we would be tempted. Yeah, it just white gets such nice pieces. Mm -hmm. But okay, probably it won't happen. But on the other hand, what do you do? One one knight, I mean knight f1 to d2, or what exactly? Yeah, normally knight f1 to d2, and then knight bishop takes f3, knight f3, e4, and queen d6, knight d6. So I know rook e4 is tempting. Knight g5 is also sort of tempting. Yeah, yeah and Magnus has slowed down. Yeah, now he has to make up. I mean, he's going, is... He took like 40 seconds. Yeah, this is a lot of time for an Armageddon game. Yeah, because as, as Prague also said, yeah, there are no increment here. So you can get flagged at the end. It's brutal stuff. And there is no justice in Armageddon. It just you have to you have to fight till the end and see what comes out of it. Already a minute or more. Yeah, 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 he's really asleep at the wheel. Well, will he take that rookie four? I mean, after spending so much time, you are often tempted to to take, but then you are blaming yourself. Why didn't I take immediately? Yeah, no, he goes knight f1 to d2. He really could play this in one second, yeah? Bishop fc, knight fc, yeah. He is, he's going for it, but look at this computer again. Believes that white is so much better here, but is it so easy also for white? I mean, as an ID2, Black should have played knight c5. This move was not on our radar at all. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, also not on the player's radars, yeah? yeah. Uh, knight d4 knight played. Knight d4 lost c5, yeah? I mean, shouldn't he have played like knight somewhere else, yeah? Knight d2 or so knight. Knight c4. Black somehow, I mean, when, when he played knight e5, knight b7, I claim that Black wants to go c5. Find this pawn <laughs> never, never moved anywhere, yeah, from c7. Takes takes. How should Magnus block this? B4? B4 is normal um, to go CB knight B3, but also allows a lot of exchanges, right? Yes. Black is opening up something. Clock situation. Okay, I think uh, the situation for black dramatically improved, but of course, if white gets B4 knight B3, then, then it's no, cemented. Black, black should go C5 and somehow make it work. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even at, at the cost of sacrificing some pawn, you need to yeah, break yeah. this. Or um, but I could also consider a5, yeah, with an idea to go c5. And... Yes. Yeah, those are the moves, but every second is so valuable. Yeah, a5 played. But hang on now, knight c6 is an option. Um, yeah, knight c6 is an option, yes. Yeah, it's uh, that th that's why somehow c5 and then d4 or something. I mean, just break up everything in the center because now the bishop will block the pawns. Yeah, now it's really dangerous. Yeah, now black could go down without a fight. Yeah, and rook a8, maybe even rook a1. Yeah, because already the e pawn is not, not moving. Magnus will put the bishop on e3. Clockwise, everything works for Magnus. Yeah, I mean, black was already so close, yeah, somehow, but uh, doesn't look so good anymore. Yeah, no, no, it's, and also it's so difficult to find the move. How do you continue? A4, I think, is the only way to, to try. You want to at least break the structure? Yeah, rook a4, rook a4, rook a8, and then bring the king to e6. But I might be taking with the pawn. A4 on the board. I thought like I maybe would prefer to take with the pawn if I can. Or I can't do that. Rook A6, knight before rook A5. Yeah, you you A rook F6, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, if you keep control there. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, tough, tough choice for Magnus as well. Now maybe B4 followed by knight A5. Is that a move? B4 and, and and keep the cement. No, Magnus takes on A4. E3 bleeds out, so bishop is the rook, but then bishop f2, rook e2. That's the idea, yeah? And maybe somehow rook f4 is winning for white, yeah? Yeah, rook f4 is winning, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. It's on the board. Liam clearly missed it. Yeah, uh, yeah, tough, as Armageddon's are tough. Yeah, Armageddon's are brutally tough, especially like this, that... It was a theoretical debate with a very mm -hmm. mysterious position. Yeah, it finally we understand why Magnus opted for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. first it looked like a very strange choice to go for this uh, forced complicated stuff, but yeah, Bishop takes e7. Even there was a fork. I mean, Black's only chance is flagging, but the, he is behind on the clock. Yeah, it's last time. Rook e6 doesn't work. Knight d8 check, and it's thirty yeah. seconds different. Yeah, knight before Bishop d4. And that's it. Everything protects everything. Even knight d5 works, yeah? Knight b6 and bishop d4. Yeah. But I called it. Black will get a good position. Black will lose, yeah? I mean, it happens every single time in this line. Yeah, and Liam resigns. But did he get a good position? Where was the good position? Well, at some point, it was around equal, no? When white played knight. Yeah, but okay. It was uh, only for one moment, yeah? And then immediately it, uh, it mm -hmm. jumped, yeah? So yeah. Magnus so just, does it. Just not, not a great line. Uh, an amazing day with two Armageddons with incredibly close matches. Yeah, and now we will be hearing Magnus. I think the interview is coming. Get ready, guys. From the leader of the tour finals. Magnus, your fifth match win in a row. This one went down to the wire. Were you ever in doubt of today's match win? Um, no, I mean, it was uh, the blitz was really poor. So, um, but uh, I felt in the. Um, in the Armageddon game that uh, I, I'm not so sure about his choice of opening because I feel like generally it's be, uh, it's easier to have the uh, minor pieces there in Blitz. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't play it perfectly. Like also I, I spent like one and a half minutes at one point calculating a line when I went 92, if it goes 95, and then he just took an F3 immediately, which is nice. Which sort of sort of shocked me, but um, so that rattled me for like a little bit. But felt even after the, even after that, position is easier to play for me, and he couldn't really uh, change gears in in time. But has this match been playing with Liam, your first Armageddon of this uh, event so far? Overall, just summarize it for us. Yeah, it was clearly a lot tougher than uh, some of the other matches. So. Um, yeah, it was a combination of him playing good match and me not really finding my rhythm after the first game. So I gotta gotta do better in the last two matches. Is it fair to say that it's a race for second place now? Well, I'm I can clinch it with a win tomorrow. That's nice, um, but uh, no, not yet. Not yet. One more question. You've already won the tour 
one event to spare. Um, how big a motivation is it to win this last event as well and finish with a bang? Well, I wanted to go perfect, so I can't do that anymore. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'll, um, I really want to really wanna win the tournament. And are you going for the basketball game tonight? Yes, I am. Uh, who will you be rooting for, the Knicks or the Golden State Warrior? I'll be rooting for uh, the uh, the Warriors, uh, but either way, hoping for um, for an exciting uh, game. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun to to see. I mean, the Warriors have been terrible, but a lot better at home than uh, away. So hopefully, they can put up a good fight. And tomorrow you're playing against Prague. That's always a matchup that we're always looking forward to. Your thoughts on that one? Uh, yeah, they're in, the matches usually end up being really fighting and chaotic, so I'll, um, you know, try to deal with that. Enjoy the evening. Thank Thanks. Yeah, we just heard Magnus. Uh, yeah, it was a very messy up and down match. Uh, finally ended well for Magnus, I think also. Big congratulations goes to Liam for bouncing back twice against Magnus. Okay. Uh, this is this is already some uh, fantastic achievement. Rustam, do you remember this? This was the moment when uh, Magnus spent the one minute thirty seconds, and then he also said that after one night, I mean one night F one to D two, he all the time calculated the move knight C five, and then opponent took on mm -hmm. F C, and he was completely shocked that why did he spend then all this time? What what is your take on this? Situation. Yeah, we, we also saw knight c5 later. I think maybe also Liam maybe was looking at rook takes e4 in the meantime. So it is possible that somehow some line just got ignored. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, this knight c5 was the move Magnus said that he he was expecting and he calculated for one and a half minutes. In any case, finally it worked to perfection. There was one more moment when after c takes bc, a takes bc instead of a5. C5, apparently, we, we talked about it, that maybe this is the move. Somehow you have to break the construction, but of course, with very little time on the clock, it was very difficult decision for Liam. However, after A5, do Knight C6, probably White is uh, again winning. Yeah, no, I mean, at the end, uh, it seemed to me also Magnus got a bit luckier because C5 could have happened automatically and then maybe he would be not able to keep control you know? but that, as it is he got he got lucky he he won that was an amazing match uh and also the other one yeah Pragna and the Duda was an amazing match what a day right yeah what a day we, we were spoiled by two Armageddons let's also take a look at first of all the results yeah so uh Liam Levesus Magnus Carlsen went all the way to Armageddon with a lot of ups and downs for both players Liam bouncing back twice the same applies to the match Duda versus Plagnanda because there basically Black has not scored a single point until the Armageddon game, which Prague managed to hold with the Black pieces. A stunning victory for him, but what a match. And uh, by the way, I have already forgotten about the other matches. They, they were so far away. They, they seem, I mean, Arjun Erigaishi crushed Anish Giri, so Anish continues to suffer. Uh, quite easily with two and a half half score. And uh, Mamed Yadov didn't really got a chance against Wesley. We have also heard Wesley in the interview. He was very happy. Uh, what about the basketball? Or the, the, hang on, we have to take, uh, before we go to basketball, we have to check out our standings. Yeah, Magnus dropping a point. What, what do you think about Magnus' statement that he wanted to go perfect all the way? Is it possible at all in such a field to, to do perfect? Well, I think he was close. He was close to going perfect, but um, well, he was not to be. Yeah? Let's see if he can go perfect in the last two two days. Yes, of course, it's uh, super tough in this uh, in this field. Let's also take a look at the scores. Well, Magnus Carlsen is leading with fourteen points. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's sensational, yeah. It's mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he has won all the matches before. Now he wins in the Blitz playoff, so he takes two points. Uh, Liam Le also gets one point for this incredible fight. The same applies to Jan Shishtov Duda, that uh, Jan Shishtov got one point uh, for losing in the Blitz playoff, so he has to have 10 points. Vesli so keeps on winning match after match now, three consecutive matches. 
So he's up there with nine points. Liam Le, after putting this incredible fight against Magnus, gets one extra point. So he's with eight points in the first position. And then Plagnanda and Arjun Arigaishi. Arjun is coming back, yeah, after losing the first three matches. He's already there, up with six points, sharing fifth place with Plagnanda. Anish Giri in a lot of trouble. He's stuck with four points. He has also lost now three consecutive matches. Mm -hmm. And Shakri Amamadyarov lost four matches in a row, stuck one, three points on last place. Wow, what a tournament. Yeah, no, it's really tough once you start losing matches. It gets really tough. Yeah, that's that that's the trick. Now Arjun has broken this spell. He started winning, and uh, who knows where the journey ends. We also have Pragnanda facing Magnus Carlsen tomorrow. What is your take on that big match? Um, well, I mean, Pragnanda shows some some problems with black. So it will all come down to the opening. Yeah, it seems to me if he can survive the opening, maybe he'll get some chances. But his openings, they look a bit shaky. His Catalans, they look shaky. Yeah, Magnus might target them, of course. Uh, and one final question. Are you a big NBA fan? Are you following the events there? Not at all. Yeah. All right. Well, I only know a little about it. So I, I won't be bombing you with questions. We did hear that uh, Magnus is rooting for the Warriors. There is some special uh, match today in San Francisco. And all the players are looking forward to it to have some rest because, okay, we, we see that, okay, it's uh, it's crazy amount of tension on, on everyone. Also on us, I guess uh, our audience, dear audience, probably also had enough fun and enough adventures tonight. And probably that's it, yeah? Yeah, no, it was a great day. So yeah, stay with us, guys. Tomorrow, it will it will only get better. Wow, I mean, okay, with with Prague facing Magnus Carlsen, the day can't be any better. Yeah, definitely, a lot of action coming up. Don't miss our stream and be back. We always try eight forty five Central European time. We never managed, but I think it was we, we were quite close today. So good night, good day. Uh, Everything, who, wherever you are, we will be back tomorrow. So stay tuned tomorrow. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India.